What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Sean Parker, and this is Dawson. I'm broadcast coming to you live uh, you said from you sunny yeah. California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. It is 67 degrees and sunny here in Los Angeles, California, folks. I'm live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a wonderful time as well. That shirt glasses combo is literally so elite. Thank you. Thank you. This is probably the best thing that uh, Ludwig has ever gotten me. Uh, anyway, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in the world of Hassan Hasanabi Piker. That's right. This is where I tell you about what happened in between the time period where I pressed the stop streaming button and pressed the start streaming button. And boy, oh boy, yesterday was Kaya's birthday. For those of you who did not experience that phenomenal experience. Why is hair so wet? It's because I just got out of the shower. For those of you who did not experience Kaya Sito's little baby birthday party, it was a lot of fun. It was very cute. And I hope everyone who enjoyed it, who attended, uh, enjoyed the process. Hopefully you guys appreciated it. Hope you got some enjoyment out of it. You know, sometimes we have to have a little bit of fun when the world's a very dark place. Dogs do that, you know? That's the Colorado douchebag drip. This is best stream of the year. I don't care. Thank you. Um, you're looking six out of 10 wet today, King. Oh, dude, don't use freaking uh, our this is against cutie against me. Uh, where'd you get that shirt? I don't know. Uh, Ludwig got it. Anyway, um, folks, 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 folks. End of the broadcast yesterday after a short one, short but sweet one, you know, I, I, I wanted to I wanted to not use and abuse my guests as much. I feel a little reluctant to do such things. 
I have a whole bunch of guests, specifically when those guests are very famous dogs. Okay. I feel like uh I feel like there's enough content that we got out of them, so I ended it at like three hours. And then afterwards, I had ordered a shit ton of Mendocino Farms uh, that uh, was originally canceled. And then uh, I ordered Sun and Dung because the Mendocino Farm was canceled. But then I reordered the Mendocino Farms. And then I ordered Sun and Dung as well. And uh, turns out both of them came. Both of them were very much not canceled this time around. And both of them came. And and you guys know that's a, that's a big problem for me because... Boy, do I love both of those foods, and I personally can't control my urges. New Fear and was wild. Oh, you guys liked it? I thought it was pretty good. I feel like Fear and every week, week after week, just keeps getting better and better. Like, we just keep improving. The dynamic gets better. The drama gets better. The grievances get better. I just like Austin makes it so easy for me to make content because like he is just like a walking grievance machine, right? So he's just like constantly slighting me. And it makes it so perfect. It makes it so perfect and so easy because of his consistent slighting. Bomb Labs, this is the greatest thing that you've ever done. This is the greatest artwork you've ever done. Being gay is the new meta man. The Japanese love one of your favorite movies, RRR. That's awesome. I love that. It's understandable. Uh, the Japanese are, are like-minded individuals with people like myself. They know phenomenal shit when they see it. Uh, Maya dunked today, lol. <laughs> hey, do a pull Diddy. up. Diddy, it's not do funny. Do a backflip. <laughs> Diddy? I got there, I got there. Holy fuck. <laughs> Dude, wait, is that fucking Eram? Is that Electronic Roberto? Diddy. Hey, do a pull Diddy. up. Diddy, it's not do funny. Do <laughs> Bro. Diddy? I got there, I got there. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck is Eric Andre? Dude. Can I just say something? I mean, I can't tell from here. I don't know what's going on with the with the edges, but like Electronic Roberto is popping off, dude. Did you react to NMP Law's weight loss? Yes. Both NMP Law and El Roberto have like turned it around dramatically. You see Curtis's latest post, Le Mafe Ow. Uh, yes, I did. He just spawns in the locations at random. Honestly, when are you having Eric Andre on stream? I don't know. I should have Eric Andre on stream. Anyway, hold up. Let's get to the fucking personal news. End of the broadcast. Uh, spent the rest of the day uh, with the with the homies that didn't leave and we had some food I'm very proud of myself because I took all of the I'm very proud of myself because I took all the food that I had ordered and I gave it to them I gave it to the people that were there instead of like keeping any of it I was like please take it please take it please take it. I forced it upon them so I think that's personally good <laughs> Because it's a, it's a big move for me. Because normally I would have just stayed. Um, normally I would have just ate that shit. Like I would have tanked all the food. And uh, so yeah, I ended up having uh, I just ended up having a bunch of protein shit. I ended up slamming a bunch of prots at night. Uh, to you know maintain a a, a level of. Uh, like get a decent amount of protein. Bondi Beach IRL when you go to Australia. Yeah, uh, the boy is, uh, according to the fucking scale, that definitely isn't correct, by the way. The boy's a 15.9%, which is basically like 10%. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, I gave, uh, I gave 
all of the all of the rest of the food to my brother who showed up late unfortunately with fiona and um so 15.9 percent equals 20 percent no that shirt is eight million dollars so yeah very proud of myself for maintaining the diet and doing well, all things considered. This summer is going to be slutty summer. That's what many people are saying. It's going to be slutty boy summer. And I just want to get you guys on board with that. I just want to make sure that you're ready. Your body is ready. I want to make sure that you're mentally ready for this. I want to make sure that you're mentally prepared for slutty boy summer. Because I'm just going to be walking around in my underwear everywhere I go. So, are you zinning and chewing? No. What? No hate and no slight. Are you and your streamer homies on Ozempic? Brother, I was 285 pounds in July 1st, 2021. It has taken me literally three fucking years, basically, to drop... 45 pounds and engage in recomp and like build muscle mass again. Does it stream? Does it, or does it feel like I am on Ozempic? The entire reason why I haven't taken Ozempic is because I don't want to lose muscle mass. I want to put on muscle mass. Ozempic makes that very hard. Anyway, for those of you who didn't this make it Kaya. to the Here. birthday, don't worry. We filmed it, and we streamed it, and we uploaded it pretty fucking fast. Birthday girl. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Wait. She's oh, she's oh, she's cooking. Yeah, already lost 20 pounds since mid-December. Anyway, proud of you, dude. Took me five years to drop from 270 to 175. Are you killing it? Yeah, I mean, I had done this before. The heaviest I've ever been was like... Two, oh, not two, sorry, 320. And the skinniest I've ever been in my adult life is around 220. So that's the goal. I'm trying to get back down there. Anyway, uh, worked out this morning, hit the 405 on the deadlifts once again. Your boy is fucking yacked. It's not even a big deal. It's nothing to me. Do you understand? This shit ain't anything to me. 405, four plates on the deadlift. I'm hitting those okay conventionals no trap bar regular conventional deadlifts it's nothing this shit comes easy to me do you understand and i hope you guys are also excited and also on your own fitness journeys you ever just wish you were a little guy every day someone said not natty that is the nicest thing you can actually tell me thank you so much for the compliment Thinking that I'm on steroids is so funny. I do not look like I'm on steroids. I wish I looked like I was on steroids. So, anyway. Um, yeah. That's it. You're on trend. I know I've seen you shoot it up. I fucking... I would be a very different demon on trend. First of all, I'd be a very angry person, I think. Have you seen the trend twins? Do you know what I would look like and what I would sound like and what I would act like? The vibes would be fucked up on trend. All natural, baby. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, for the record. There is there is nothing wrong with uh, in my opinion, doing steroids. I think steroids are dope. <laughs> Um, are you trying to say you aren't angry? Dude, if you think I'm... Over the course of many, many years, you guys have seen me become less angry as a person, I think. If you've been here, if you've been here for long enough, you've seen me be a very angry boy, and I've turned into, like, a less angry man. I'm still angry from time to time, but much, much uh, less frequently. Um, if you compare like how angry I used to get, yeah, how did it, 
you feel hitting 405 for the first <clears throat> how did it feel hitting 405 for the first time i've never had a kid i doubt it'd be still more proud of hitting the 405 for the first time it's an intimidating mental block to get over i mean i've i've hit it years ago so for the first time ever so i don't bro your reaction to that guy during the kick pedo breakdown was so mature lol what i don't even know what the fuck you're saying um but anyway, no, I I've been I've been hitting 405s for almost 10 years now at this point. I'm just finally back at it. Steroids lead to serious heart issues over time. Uh if taken without a professional supervision, so no, it's not dope law. How to stop being lazy and fat? You just got to keep you just got to get out there and do it. You just got to get out there and do it. Hassan is not 35. I'm 35 and I don't know I'm older. I think he's 32. I am 32. Um, I just want to say one more time, Cutie Cinderella is the goat. She is the goat and the giraffe. She is my queen. What a phenomenal, what a phenomenal event she put together for Kaya. Uh, also, I did a mask uh, last night. I don't even know what kind of fucking mask it is, but I, I'm doing, I'm tub, ma I'm tub maxing and I'm mask maxing as well. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, I'm about to finish Yakuza 8 finally. I've played, I put 50 hours into that bad boy. Uh, more than 50 hours at this point. And she is a god at event planning. Yeah, I know. She whipped that shit up like for, like it was nobody's business. Anyway, um, but yeah, let's, bl uh, let's blast off Trump's uh, most unhinged. hinged uh moments from the weekend why are you catching strays on tiktok wait what i'm not catching strays on tiktok people are probably searching it because i reacted to it uh and and a lot of people enjoyed my reaction to it i actually saw this tiktok on my for you page and i looked through the comments and people were talking about how fucking fun it was watching it with me But yeah, no, I don't catch, I don't catch that many, you catch trades on every platform, man, shut up, chat, you guys are my biggest fucking haters, I swear to God, no, TikTok has been actually much, much better, TikTok has been much, much better to me than all of the other platforms, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, Ease of the best stream of the year, and you cook a lot on the trash talk a little too hard, that was great. Okay, I didn't even actually. Charges dismissed. Trump finally wins. Wait, what? Court. Well, not so fast. Yes, obviously, I am not in my normal Legal Eagle office. Uh, I'm actually in Southern Utah because I'm participating in the off-road games uh, that I'm definitely going to lose because I'm the only one that doesn't have off-road experience. That's crazy. He does off-road games. Um, do Kaya enjoy her party yesterday? She, look, look at her. What do you think? What do you think? She definitely fucking loved it. She's so cooked. And this morning I took her to the gym and she also played in the gym for hours today as well. Anyway, Trump's most unhinged moments from the weekend. Putin wins election. Totally fair. Um, Don Lamont. Don Lamont v. Elon. And more news get in now. Okay. Let's do it. I'm a, I'm chilling. I still can't believe she cheated right in front of her man. She's cold blooded. Yeah, she she cooked. Listen, I told you she is my thought daughter. Okay. I chose the thought daughter over the gay son. And that's what's going on. The king is dead. What do you mean?
I didn't know Kai had a boyfriend. Yeah, she does. And and she was hanging out with her. Uh, she was hanging out with her uh, with him today. This morning, like nothing happened. You know what I mean? They were still kissing, making out. Anyway, here it is. Um, dude, how good, how well trained is, uh, for those of you who are watching, how well trained is fucking Huxley and Finley, though? Like, they're crazy. They're so good. I'm going to try to get Kaya to that level eventually. Playlist for later. Thank you, Thamasius, for the fat playlist, as always. The silent commands went crazy. Yeah, Finn is the most well-trained, for sure. Who made that picture? Bomb Levs did. See? The watermark is right there. Kaya still doesn't even do fetch, so... Is there going to be a virgin dog ball for Kaya and her friends? What does that mean? Promise my life on this video, the kids who hacked the CIA. Bro, that's crazy that you're sending me some fucking react videos like this early in the day. Debutante ball. I don't know what any of those words mean, man. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that is. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's watch this. It's guaranteed. What is Northern Did you Lines? And now it sounds like you're a certified freak. I don't think so. I think I'm mostly like a normal guy. Certainly I wouldn't be a, a certified freak seven days a week. I think at, at some point you would just consider that, to be honest, to be kind of like exhausting. There's times you just want to like go. This fucking guy, bro. He's just calling me out again. He's calling all of us. Northern Lions saying he's not a certified freak seven days a week hurts. It hurts. It hurts to hear from the bald, okay? It really does. It hits different. You say, are you a lazy parent? First of all, my dog is one years old, okay? And she's already, like, better than, better trained than, like, 90% of dogs you've ever encountered. So, no. I'm actually a very good parent, and I'm fucking real aggro. Not as aggro as, as Michael is. Oh, 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 that was crazy. Who trained her? I did. What the? It's a Belgian Malinois. Lay down. Do the, do the dead thing. Walk back. Walk back. Uh, uh, come. <laughs> Walk back. Walk back. Oh my God. Okay. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Do the, do this. Oh, you want to see him attack me? Okay, Huxley, walk back. Walk back, walk back. This part is crazy. <laughs> oh, release. Boy, release. So, um, so there's something, there's something about it. I don't, we don't know why. We don't know why he's like that. You have to train Maligators or they will be out of control. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maligator. That's funny. Uh, we don't know what it is. But this dog is fucking terrified of blow darts. And we don't know what the fuck, how the fuck this happened. Like, because he's had this dog since, like, basically birth, right? So we have no idea why the blow dart thing freaks him out. Those are police dogs, right? I, these are police use these dogs, yes. It's the frequency of the sound it makes. No, man. I think it's an epigenetic memory or something. Where the fuck are people using darts on Belgian Malinois, you know? How did you guys even find that out? I don't remember. But he died in Nam on his past life. 
No, the police don't because the police can't train him. Okay, first of all, the police do have to train them. I, like, you can't... Here's the thing. You can't just have a dog be trained and then, you know, it's for, uh, it, the dog is forever trained. You have to literally keep training a dog. Make no mistake. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. That's why, like, a lot of, like, uh, old ladies and whatever, like, rich ladies will, like, go to the same trainer that... Uh, that I took Kaya to that, you know, Huxley uh, also got trained at, okay? And they think that, like, they think that, like, all right, they went to a trainer, and then that's it. Uh, and then you don't ever have to reinforce that training. No, you have to train every day. I train Kaya every day. Anyway, they do train him to sniff out imaginary drugs, that's for sure. No, I'm talking about, like, other other uh, forms of training for the canine units. I'm sure they do a lot. Um, why did you clickbait with Foosley in the thumbnail on Fear End? We were doing a meme. I don't know if you guys figured it out or not. Sam with my boys, but instead of fear, they think it's time to play when I do the fast exhale. Okay, anyway. Having a hard day at work? Yeah. Real tough, dude. You don't know how bad it is. You know what I mean? You don't know how bad it is. <sighs> Count your lucky stars. You get to work at the at the dick sucking factory every day. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shadows will be like, I just got off a 35 hour shift sucking cock at the dick sucking factory. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, okay? Shit is hard, okay? My jaw is busted. Without me, society would not run, though. So i do it. i do it anyway. Uh, Bill Burr, Hassan Abihead. And he's like, George W. Bush. He goes, we had a $20 trillion surplus, and this guy started two non-ending wars and gave all the money to his friends and bankrupted us. You know, that's fucking way worse. But they all. These guys are so interesting. That's all I'm going to say. do their shit. Obama drone bombing weddings. Mm -hmm. Clinton was the guy who did that shit with the bank that made some jerk off, <laughs> you know, working at a subway qualified to get a loan <laughs> for a $400,000 house, which created that whole thing in 2008. You just keep going back. I think the only, like, the only, like, uh, like truly like good person like human being i feel that's been president in my lifetime is jimmy carter i mean he's also bad policy still, wise too you know building houses for the homeless he's out there swinging a hammer like everybody else just goes off and buys land that sits on an aquifer because they're like you know like i guess betting on global warming I guess, <laughs> is that what you do as a world leader um and this guy's actually out there trying to help people and um it's funny i remember when i was a kid he was considered weak um, that was the thing um, because he didn't, st you know, start a war with Iran. I remember that because of the <laughs> hostage thing. And he was able. Yeah, Carter was a piece of shit, too. But like, I think. I think he's not wrong as far as like saying that he's like a good person, IRL. Like, I do legitimately believe Jimmy Carter. I do legitimately believe that Jimmy, Ta Jimmy Carter in spite of like all the awful shit that he did in office, just like every other goddamn American president, is still very much like, I think, like a good person in real life. Not that it fucking matters. Like, I think Obama is bad dude. I, I think Obama is bad dude through and through. You know what I mean? Careerist, doesn't care about anything, in it for the clout, wants to make fucking podcasts, wants to be loved. Trump obviously is Trump. I'm not even going to get into that, right? George W. Bush, monster, piece of shit, awful. Jimmy Carter did monstrous shit, but think about what he does after his presidency. Like, you don't do that your whole life. You're not fucking building houses for homeless people your whole life. If you, just just for the the clout, I guess. Maybe he's just scared of the afterlife. 
and he's like worried about all of the sins that he committed when he was president. You know what I mean? Like all the top of the hour ad breaks that I serve at the top of the hour and then tell you if you no longer want to see those ads, like that's going to come catching up to me by the time, by the time I'm 99, if I make it out that, you know, if I make it alive that long, like all of that shit's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Now, obviously you don't want it to haunt you right now. So you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, right? He's trying to carve an asset for his crimes. Berry balls. Thank you for the five community to give this subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. If you're, you know, you could get lucky with a gifted sub to chatters. Here's the three minute ad break now. How often do you think of the Roman Empire? Not that often. Not at all, actually. Anyway, it's like you say, the system will continue to churn despite what cogs fit which gears. Carter may be a genuinely nice or good person, but the role he occupied necessitates doing evil acts. Yes. Me Cannon has done it again. Uh, what about, uh, oh yeah, I, I, the Kazo one. Yeah, we'll watch this. Um, Jesus Christ, 2.3 million views in one day. That's crazy. How often do you think about the American Empire? Every goddamn day of my life. <laughs> Yo, she got hops, dude. Maya's got hops. Go to sleep. Seven days a week, you gotta unionize. That's true, that's hard work, man. It's not that hard, <laughs> I guess, but... I mean, there's worse jobs, don't get me wrong, but like... You know, sometimes you might be like, I'm actually sleepy. Oh, you're right. The shortcut. The sh wow, dude. Talking about fucking unionizing my fan base. This guy's out of control, dude. Someone's got to put an end to this. Me can he use clips of you on his new Papa Meat video, too? Wait, really? What did he do a video on? Um. Yeah, no union for the chat. Don't even fucking think about it. I will strike break, okay? You were an angry liberal, Lamau. Wait, what? What did he do? What? He made me a liberal? Fuck this guy, bro. I'm done with him. I'm unemployed. How do I unionize my favorite, uh, my, my fellow lazy millennials? Good luck. Help! My cousin got a Malinois puppy recently and they live in a motherfucking small studio and they got a baby on the way and they're first time dog owners. What do you mean, bro? What is that? Like, what, what can I possibly do? You, you typed it out. You typed it out and I, and I legitimately want to understand what happened in your mind. Like, what can I possibly do? Do you want me to buy your cousin's child? Do you want me to get the puppy out of their hands? Like, what, what can I do? Do I buy them a house? Like, what, what is this? What do you want? I'm buying the child. Fuck it, dude. That's right. That's right, dude. Sorry. Sorry to your cousin. I bought the nephew. You are nephewless. Okay? You fucked up. You fucked up. I bought the kid. Teach the dog how to sit. <laughs> nope. Nope. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have wrote that in the chat, dude. Real monkey's paw situation. The monkey's paw curls. Now, I bought your nephew. Okay? <laughs> Kaya needs a new chew toy? What? that watch this show if they've learned anything it's probably how to respect and how to have a long-term healthy relationship with a woman that you can call your wife and have a family with how do you get a wife ethan because my thing is like you're bro this is so funny this question coming from them is funny because like i think he legitimately is asking 
Okay. It's not even a joke. When he says, like, how do you get a wife, Ethan? I don't think he's, like, saying that as, like, a diss or owning him or anything. I think deep down inside, he literally is like, I don't know. Please tell me. Maybe I can find out. You're like, just, you're talking about the finish line. What about the race? Yeah. yeah. You understand? Like, you have to get Are to either of you married? Where you can even identify a female that's worthy of marriage, of having a family with, etc. And unfortunately, in today's day and age, it's not that simple anymore. So we live in a very complex world where it's difficult to identify women that are marriage material. And most aren't simply, that's just what it is. So you guys are, uh, if you guys' that? method is so good, why aren't you married? Again, because men are the ones that decide if they want to get married. Choice. So, so you choose not to be married. Yeah, it's because men are You're... the one. We're the gatekeepers to marriage and commitment. Women are the gatekeepers to sex. Right. And um, you're 34, right, Myron? Yes. And um, do you plan on getting married someday? Do you think it's important? Eventually, the nuclear family is the backbone to any thriving society. Oh, thank you for saying that about me. Good job, but a lot of guys don't have that ability to find a woman that's worthy. You don't have that ability. I don't have that ability. You're not married. That's by choice. Oh, but you, but no, the ability to find a woman, you clearly don't have that ability. So you use the sugar daddy websites as dating sites. Yes. Yeah, so we did a whole episode. And, and on then this. you complain about women being shallow. I never complain about women being you shallow. Say, you say it's hard to find a good woman because they're, they're motivated by material things and stuff. And yet you're seeking women specifically, a certain type of woman, obviously, that would be on a sugar daddy website. So it seems like you are confirming your biases by even going there to find women. What? Okay, so you Sorry, said- Sorry, Walter, I'll, I'll say it. Do you want me to say it again slower? The thing is, like, the thing is like, you can go on a sugar daddy like website or whatever and like women who do that right can still objectively be phenomenal partners the thing is they're not going to be a phenomenal partner to you if you're looking for like a, a you know a real partnership because sorry you're the one who is setting the motherfucking precedent that it is transactional that's it that's their job they're at work that's it. Like, I, and I say this as someone who literally, I say this as someone who has dated sex workers, right? Like, as you guys know, sex workers, phenomenal partners. It's just, I didn't pay for it. You know what I mean? If you pay for it, then you set the expectation that like, this is going to be a transactional relationship. That's the job. So, like, I'm sure there are plenty of wonderful people out there that would be phenomenal partners. It's just you're not going to find it in that way. You're not going to find a, a partner, like a lifelong partner, by paying them. Um, what is this? Did you watch the majority report today? report today? It was very Hassan heavy today, both in tone and tenure. No, I did not watch it. Streaming fucked up Roseanne. The big people. I talked to some important people. Yeah. And yeah, bro. People say, honestly, people say streaming is not a hard job. Look at Roseanne, dude. She streamed one time. Look at her. No. Do I? I, I think I overlined my lip. Yeah, who did your, I mean, we're going to get back to the yeah, but who did your makeup today specifically? I did, but. How many, how much did you drink before you did your makeup? <laughs> Here's the important thing to remember, Ma. Freedom Chat is an encrypted chat. They glaze you up big time. Nice. Um, no shot. Putin won. I bet my entire life savings into a bet online opposition candidate. I'm sorry, dude. GGS. Um, Sam Cedar called you a fundraising juggernaut. Holy shit, that's awesome. This community is the best, though. We are the goats. Uh, we are the goats, not just at fundraising, but just in, and we're the goats at many things. Okay. Fundraising being one of them. God, I love this community. Kai is literally fucking snoring so goddamn hard. Like actually, let me, wait, hold on. Maybe you can hear it. I'm going to.
Okay. That's uh I it she's like you could probably hear it a little bit. I I saw um a little bit. Uh Interviews about how shitty copyright and fair use is brought to mind React Gate. Wait, what is this? I don't know what that is. Her social batteries out from streaming and also hanging out with other pubs. Anyway, um Welcome to the Yeah, we'll talk about Putin in a little bit. We were story developing about mysterious death of Boeing whistleblower. Boeing whistleblower John Barnett was planning to drive home to Louisiana after his deposition on Friday, 3.30, before leaving. Before Boeing lawyers asked him to stay one more day to finish his testimony. His body was found on the morning of 3.9. That's crazy. All right. If you're retracted the four hours of news politics limit, please tell me now. Yeah, uh, I will. I, uh, I, oh, this morning, by the way, I spent, I spent the morning planning Australia, okay, first Sydney, then Melbourne, gonna go on a couple of fucking podcasts, yeah, hopefully, gonna do a little bit of fucking IRL content, yeah, trying to do a fucking desktop stream, right, from 6am Australia time, to fucking, to fucking 10am Australia time, and then fucking moving away from the desktop streams to doing RL streams, right? In both Sydney and fucking uh and in Melbourne, right? Doing going out fucking real bogan style, right? Going fucking crazy with a couple of VB long necks, yeah. Cracking back a couple of VB long necks, yeah, gonna be doing kangaroo fighting, gonna be touching a bunch of kangaroos, right? Petting them. Petting the fucking sick cunts, right? Fighting them. Gonna go fucking give the old one two to the fucking emus, right? Fucking hell. It's so fortunate you don't talk like that. Yeah, a little bit of padding, a little bit of punching. Gonna be on your Xenogene shit. Yeah, gonna be on my fucking Xenogene sheet. My Xenogene sheet. All right. Uh, hope he goes on cold one and ball pig leak. No. Don't forget to stop by the CIA gift shop. Honestly, just go there and express your condolences since their princess is missing. Um, so the Robert Irwin thing we're working on, we don't know because he lives in like bumfuck nowhere. <laughs> apparently, apparently to get to him is a 10 hour journey. Okay. Because Australia is pretty fucking large, right? It's like an entire continent. For those of you who don't know, Australia is a fucking continent, mate. Right? So it turns out, not a lot of fucking high-speed rail and nothing. Big places where a lot of people live. And then a whole bunch of nothing in the outback, right? Not much in the fucking middle. Turns out, if you live in bumfuck nowhere, right? 10 hours, gonna take... Quite a fucking long time to get there. So I might not do it, but we'll see. I said I'd fly him out. Said I'd fly him out, put him in a nice fucking hotel, right? And then on top of that, showed him that we raise a lot of money for the fucking conservation efforts. Yeah, for Alveus, right? So we'll see if we could just fucking wine and dine him. Grease his fucking wheels a little bit. Give him some fucking money for the fucking conservations, right? Yeah. Yeah. Austria is landlocked and small, though. Talking about fucking Stryer, mate. Not Str Austria, mate. Stryer. Australia is not a continent. It's a lie made up by Australians that make you think it's not just an island because being on a continent sounds cooler than living on an island. It's definitely an it's definitely it's definitely an island. Okay. Um VB Longneck for breakfast. Yes, yes. 
fucking. If you're a fucking fair dinkum, fucking full grown Aussie, this is what you'd have for breakfast, you fucking dog cunts. Yeah, I'm a fucking fair dinkum, full brown Aussie, mate. Fucking hell. That's why I fucking slam the fucking tall boys for a brekkie. Please don't stick to the four. Dude, sheltered rosebud. Oh my God. Take a fucking hour off. You are so goddamn annoying. How are you this annoying? You're literally triggering yourself ahead of time. This. Mm, oh, every fucking day. Every fucking day with this fucking sick gun. You ready? You fucking mind, mate. You ready? You fucking mind. Why are you fucking like this? I'm turning into a Bill Burr. Australian Bill Burr. Oh my God, I'm effing. Fuck me, mate. What the fuck is going on, mate? Fucking ruin my stream, mate. There, I mean, it's it's fucking hilarious that she or he or they, I don't know, literally comes in here and is like, "Are you actually gonna only do politics for four hours?" And then I'm like, "Yes, I'm gonna only do politics for four hours." And then she goes, "Please don't do politics only for four hours." I love politics. And it's like, dude, are you fucking serious? Like, that's crazy. It's like you just ask the question specifically so you could create chaos in your own mind. Anyway, your accent is making the AWS switch to Aussie servers. <sighs> All right, let's, let's fucking start with, uh, Putin. Let's start with Putin addressing Moscow crowds after claiming landslide Russian election victory. That's right. Surprising for absolutely no one. But a fair and balanced election nonetheless. Today is verified live. We start in Russia. Vladimir Putin has addressed thousands of people in Moscow's Red Square after claiming a landslide election win. The rally was held to mark the 10th anniversary of Russia's illegal annexation. See, he seems so happy. Chat, he seems so happy. Very obviously, very obviously he's, uh, you know, this was unexpected for him. You know what I mean? ...station of Crimea was standing alongside three loyalist candidates who were allowed to run against him. President Putin said that hand in hand, Russians will move forward. Western countries have condemned the election as neither free nor fair. The US has just called it incredibly undemocratic. President Putin described the Donbass and other parts of Ukraine occupied by Russian forces as part of a new Russia. Let's have a listen. As for Novorossiya, Donbass, People, the people living there in those days of the Russian spring declared their desire to return to their native family. Their path back to homeland was much more difficult and tragic. But we did it. And that too was a great event in the history of our state. Now we are developing, we are marching together, we feel the fellowship. Just this morning. Why does Putin's skin look so good though? Bro, he's got, yo, leak your fucking routine, King. Come on. Come on. Leak it. It's bullshit. You're actually not wrong. Leak the fucking skincare routine. The girlies need to know, okay? The girlies that want to liberate Donbass need to know what your fucking skincare is, okay? Vampire facials? I was told that the railway... He's also in 
unimaginably wealthy. So I, I think that probably helps. From Rostov to Donetsk and Mariupol and Berdyansk has been restored. We will continue this work and soon railway carriages will move all the way to Sevastopol, offering another alternative road to uh, an Dude, I can't pay attention. God damn it. You guys are so fucking annoying with the fucking skincare thing. Now I can't even hear what he's saying. I'm literally looking at how he only has brow lines at this fucking age. He's like 72 years old. It's really messed up. You broke me. Now I can't even listen to him talk about why it's totally sick that like he's annexed uh, Ukrainian land. <laughs> I can't even fucking pay attention now. I'm locked in on the skincare shit. How did he do it? It's... I guess makeup, right? I watched a Mariupol documentary last night. It was really good and very insightful. Alternative to the Crimean bridge. So together, arm in arm, we will go forward and this, this action, not words, that is what makes us really stronger. I doubt he does surgery. For people saying surgery, no shot that man fucking... He is a freak, dude. You're out of your mind if you think he's, like, going under anesthesia just to get a fucking facelift or whatever. No shot. He doesn't trust nobody. No way. Maybe Botox, but even then, I don't think... Micro-Botox is kind of obvious. Probably micro-Botox. I don't really know. He, he did, um... What do they call it? A preventative Botox. <laughs> Bro's aging like a millennial? Yeah. Russian cosmetic injectables are next level. Have you seen Russian women? Um, He trains doctors from the crib with his money to make sure they're 100% loyal. I could see that. Maybe he's just got untapped adrenochrome, dude. Like Russian baby adrenochrome is like way different. You know what I mean? Well, that was Vladimir Putin in the last hour. Now, Ben Noble is an associate fellow for the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. He told me why this election was so important for Vladimir Putin. <laughs> the Kremlin. I thought I thought he was going to say Putin said it. Putin was like, this is most important election of lifetime. <laughs> I know I say that last election, but this election most important election of lifetime okay we cannot let the other guys win <laughs> please vote for me i am lesser evil <laughs> i don't know who would be more evil in that situation but uh, he'll just say it anyway we'll definitely point to the official result as proof that putin is actively and enthusiastically supported by the vast majority of the population but the picture is much more complex than that. Yes, there are some people who are ardent supporters of Putin, but there are also those that detest him. And more importantly, there's a large group in the middle with ambivalent feelings towards Putin. And the Kremlin has made sure that it presents to that large middle group. Putin is the leader without alternative. So many people will have gone to the polls because of that. If not Putin, then who else? But also, we shouldn't forget the extraordinary propaganda in the country. And as I say, the Kremlin will demonstrate that Putin is... Like, I think it's... Putin's situation is very similar to Turkey, but even worse. And it, this is like... Because Turkey is a NATO nation, Americans don't cover it in the same way. Whereas, like, Russia is a foreign adversary, so Americans do cover it very aggressively. But the reality is, like... He's popular. Okay? That's it. Like... And, and obviously, he's very unpopular for certain demographics, right? And it's perfectly understandable. But I would go so far as to say Putin's probably more popular than fucking Erdogan is in Turkey. And Erdogan has always got that 51% locked in, okay? Now, Russian elections are a little different because there is no real alternative, right? Like, because <laughs> you will get thrown out of a building or die under mysterious circumstances which he actually mentioned which i think is crazy right um you know you just die 
Whereas in Turkey, you don't just die. You get ritualistically humiliated. You have no access to the media. You can barely fucking put together a coalition um, and, and, you know, eke out like 48% of the vote. But um, overall, like, it's cope to say that he's not popular. You know what I mean? It's it's a sad reality for a lot of these places. There's a lot of fucking, there's a lot of old people, and there's a lot of reactionary people in Russia that fucking love his shit. Just like there's a lot of old people and a lot of reactionary people in Turkey that love Recep Tayyip Erdogan. And we always, like, every election cycle, we just, like, fucking lose our minds, and we're like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? How is this possible? Like, how, how did this motherfucker win 51% again and again and again? Now, that's different, though. That's different. It is type of one's different because Turkish elections are free. They're not fair. Russian elections are neither free nor fair. Does that make sense? Putin is not 87% popular, but I'd go so far as to say he's probably like, you know, 60 to 70% popular, like with the country among the voters like that's not that big of a stretch in my opinion <clears throat> a lot of hogs fellas ladies dempers a lot of hogs they respond to the strong leader shit they do shit ton of hogs hogs are universal for those of you who don't understand, hogs are universal. Who knows what the real number is? You aren't allowed to criticize at all. Are you are you making a um a fucking uh a joke about the <laughs> Mr. Bonarelli? Now, it doesn't really matter because there's no real opposition. It, because like I mentioned, real opposition gets pee pee poofed, okay? Which is, you know, real aggro. Run a Putin popularity poll in the chat. Come to Brazil. We are literally about to jail our shitty former president like a real country. I know. Brazil is so sick, dude. It's so awesome. Oh, God. Lula is ki Lula is killing it, dude. Um. Anyway. What will happen after Putin dies? Bedlam. Chaos. Real bad. Um. So... Putin's victory matches the independent third-party approval ratings. If Putin, which absolutely is not democratic, is more popular than Biden, what does that say about our democracy? I don't think you understand. I think that says more about, like, that is more of a problem with capitalism and democracy being completely incompatible concepts in general. A real, a real question should be fucking the Chinese Communist Party and their consistent approval ratings by Western polling in comparison to like the American government's approval ratings. One is a democracy. The other is like a single party structure where there is localized democracy, but most of the, uh, most of the dictation comes from top down. The reality of the matter is that if you have, if you have theoretical democracy, but it's a capitalist one, it's just not going to fucking, it's just not going to be a real democracy at all. Um, comparing a single party structure to a two party structure. Well, the Chinese government is a single party structure. The American government is a two party structure that creates, which is the most American, most capitalist thing uh, ever. The fallacy of like the false notion of choice. That's the that's the major difference. Because ultimately it is still uniparty. It's still uniparty in the sense that, like, uh, you know, look at the uh Democratic Party pushing for incredibly right wing immigration policies right now. Right? My statement is, my belief is we should have. 
we should have a parliamentary structure and we should have real democracy, but you cannot have a real democracy under capitalism. And what a lot of people start rec uh, reckoning with, and they will recognize this more and more, especially with Chinese global uh, economic intervention, is that you can't really outcompete China because they command their entire economy. Real democracy is completely incompatible with capitalism. So we will arrive at the same exact fucking issue that we did 100 years ago, which is, what do we prefer? How do we manage this? How do we, how do we uh, continue the capitalism, but also simultaneously organize so that we can like compete against the, uh, uh, you know, Chinese intervention, for example? Well, we know how. History has shown us how called fascism and uh, we're at that proto-fascist stage right now i believe most people don't want democracy they just want to be in charge so they hide behind democracy while it's convenient <sighs> maybe i agree i use democracy in quotes when every workplace is a dictatorship it's definitely hard to say we live in a democracy like, there are definitely marginal differences, right? There are definitely marginal differences between uh, the, the democratic process uh, or marginal differences between the two parties in the United States of America. But a lot of those, um, a lot of those differences bear themselves out uh, in, I, I, a lot of those, like, marginal differences don't even have to fucking exist. It's, like, perfectly manufactured and in an effort to make it seem like there are major differences. What is this? Chinese guy absolutely destroys a reporter from the UK. Sir, are you an ally? Are you a th are you a threat? How would you regard your relationship with Britain? First of all, between China and Britain, from the Ch <laughs> Chinese guy, that's crazy. Isn't this guy literally like uh like the fucking foreign minister or some shit? <laughs> this is not just some Chinese guy, bro. That's so funny. Oh, that's hilarious. It's just some guy. <laughs> just some random Chinese guy in a suit. Just sitting there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Chinese perspective. Britain is not a rival. It's not a competitor. It is not an enemy. It's not an adversary. Britain is just an important country to get along with in peace and in friendship and for mutual benefit. Now, how Britain looks at China, it's up to the British government and people to decide. But I think it will be completely misguided for Britain to view China as an enemy or adversary or a competitor. What do China and Britain compete with? China is the largest manufacturer of automobiles competing. Yeah, he said, he said, he said, you blew a 13 colony lead. You're fucking washed. Okay, take the L. China on top, China number one, Britain not even number two, maybe number 10, okay? Your empire too small. Your bitches are not bad. You literally eat mushy peas. What the fuck is that? Chinese food infinitely better. Permanent first world genocide. <laughs> Fuck you. With Britain? No. China is the largest exporter of EV cars and will lead the whole world in EV production. Is Britain a competitor? No. China will be the biggest and most important producer and R&D in terms of semiconductor in no time. Does that mean that China competes with Britain? No. China will be the leading nation in AI revolution. Is Britain a competitor? No. So I think British government should not overestimate its impact on the global scene and view Britain as a rival of China. China is not. China is a fact. China is a mega trend for Britain to live with and get along with. Let's make peace rather than agitate him for war. Goddamn.
He really fucking cooked his ass, dude. China, a tiger, two survives. Yeah, except the difference is like when when Indian Twitter goes, India, a lion, two, sir. When talking about like, you know, uh, uh, the the Israeli genocide of Palestinians, it's funny. When China is like, no, actually, like, here is what is actually going on in the global economy. It's just a factually accurate statement. That's the difference. It's a, it, it's a, it's an objective assessment of facts. Scary stuff. Yeah, dude, I know. Uh, Chinese electric vehicles flooding the market is fucking terrifying. Okay. I am so scared, dude. That's why, <laughs> like, what do you mean scary? Like people that have been purchasing Chinese manufactured products their entire lives, like from birth to death, you have only, you have the overwhelming majority of, of products that you have consumed have in some way, shape or form touched the Chinese factory floor. And now you're fucking terrified of it. Like, what do you mean? Like, what do you, you are talking to me either on your fucking iPhone or either on your computer. Where the fuck do you think the parts were manufactured on either of those things? It's not scary. It, you've been conditioned into thinking it is scary. Okay? I love you, chatters. Please open up your mind a little bit. You have been conditioned into thinking this is a scary concept. Except, why is it scary? It's been happening your whole fucking life. Huh. Like, it wasn't scary in the 90s because China not a lion, okay? It's scary now because turns out we can't just, like, enslave the Chinese. Turns out they also are human beings. Turns out they have a pretty fucking big-ass blossoming economy with, uh, you know, and they have autonomy. That's what's scary. And the reality is, if you think, like, it's any different in Indonesia or any number of different, like, places that we exploit regularly... In the global north, you're wrong. The real reason why it's scary is because, well, the slaves now own the factories, okay? That's the fucking reason why it's scary. And they have a whole ass country. It's a actually good take too, by the way, with the with respect to like banning EVs and stuff, because we're gonna talk about Donald Trump talking about that over the weekend as well. He's like one hundred percent tariffs, one hundred percent tariffs on Chinese EVs, uh, is what he was talking about. So we'll do that. Ford sees colossal competitive threat in low-cost Chinese EVs. Yeah, I mean, it is real. This is a real issue. This is a real issue for Ford. It's a real issue for the UAW. Like, that part, that aspect of it is 100% correct. Anyway, um, we'll get to that in a little bit, though. Let's uh, finish this Russia shit is still at the center of politics and therefore is going to be around for many years to come. So what do you expect over the next six years? I think we're going to see an even more emboldened Putin. This Who do I support? UAW versus cheap uh, Chinese EV? Uh, UAW, 100%. Dude, guys, I am in favor of letting China do its own fucking thing. Leave it alone. I'm also in favor of American labor. Do you understand? I literally do not utilize Chinese factories when doing my own merchandise, which is coming out this week, by the way. Be on the lookout. The next line is coming out. Okay? What do I do? I use American labor union shops for my merchandise. Why do I do it? Because I put my money where my motherfucking mouth is. Okay? I am a supporter of 
unionized labor in the United States of America. As far as our foreign policy goes, yeah, I don't think we should try to fuck their bag up. I don't think we should try to destroy them. I don't think we should be interfering consistently in their affairs, right? This motherfucker never gives us a heads up, I swear to God. I just gave you the heads up. What the fuck do you need a heads up for? Uh, money, probably. People want to make sure that they have enough saved up so they can buy the merch. This is a man who will now have six more years in power. And then because of change, especially because it sells out. That's why I don't usually give a heads up because it sells out so quick. That like, I feel like if I give a heads up, then it's going to sell out even faster. You know what I mean? that he introduced to the constitution in 2020 he can run again in 2030 to stay in power until 2036 at which stage he will be 83. i think we're likely to see more domestic repression more use of coercion the kremlin taking unpopular decisions that it didn't want to in the lead up to the election where it wanted to present a russia that was confident and rosy in the state providing support to people so it's going to be an even uglier russia domestically but also emboldened when it comes to the ongoing war against Ukraine. You talk about making unpopular decisions. I mean, there have been huge losses in this war for Russia, upwards of 300,000 people. Uh, given uh, he has uh, said what he said about uh, the war and what lies ahead, does it give him scope also to implement full mobilization there in Russia? That is certainly the question that many people are grappling with. But I think it's not certain that Putin will, now that he has been re-elected, call a full mobilization. And the reason is because when they called the partial mobilization in September 2022, it was so deeply unpopular, Putin's own approval ratings took a hit that the Kremlin just probably won't want to do that. Of course, it's difficult to predict at this stage, but I think it's more likely that the Kremlin will find uh, steps, it will take steps in order to find new manpower to feed the voracious appetite of the war machine in Russia through things that go under the radar. So recruiting people in different ways without the big policy announcement that could be deeply unpopular of a full mobilization. Putin calls US undemocratic and addresses Navalny death after a Russian election win. This is what I was talking about earlier where he's just fucking flexing. He's flexing on his haters and he's smoking on the uh, Navalny pack by openly recognizing it, talking about it, and being like, oh, it just life happens. Some people just die in prison, you know? It's crazy. Uh, very sad that we were in the process of deal and, uh, you know, life happened. It's like death happened. <laughs> he didn't kill him? Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Muslim world needs a Putin. He didn't kill him. Heart Putin. You're so dumb, bro. <laughs> yeah, the Muslim world needs a Putin. Yeah, remember last time the Muslim world had a Putin? As in Putin in Chechnya? <laughs> yeah, that went really well. He did really well there to the Muslims. He did really well by the Mus uh, Muslims there. So fucking dumb. My person with the vote yesterday, everyone, and I stayed for an hour and watched people vote. Almost 70% voted against fucking Putin as well as everyone said they voted for Dovanko of his hope he wins. And after election, this motherfucker said Putin should continue the Ukraine war. <laughs> yeah, because they're all fucking fake. The one dude that wasn't even a good dude that at least was like, okay, the 99% Hitler to Vladimir Putin's 100% Hitler was killed, okay? Like, literally. Every other guy is his guy. What the fuck? You know my opinion regarding whether our elections are democratic or not. I believe they are democratic. democratic. <laughs> and on the contrary, in some... 
Пару в некоторых странах, ну, например, в вашей стране, разве можно считать демократичным использование административного ресурса для того, чтобы нападать на одного из президентов? Пригожин was on a Boeing 737, buddy, but keep spreading that Zell Disney as of Ganda, as of Aganda. Okay, no one who's pushing Z is that creative, okay? I know you're, I know you're uh, memeing M-Hud as, as like a Z pusher, but literally not a single Z pusher I've ever encountered is like this funny to be able to come up with a, with a statement like that. Hassan, really clueless how dog shit Russia is with Putin. Navalny would be a million percent better. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Brother. Russia is so goddamn close in like... It, Russia is such a perfect analog for Turkey, both in the authoritarian strongmen leading. I know. I didn't love the coalition against Recep Tayyip Erdogan, but I certainly was advocating for him. I get it. Okay, that's why I said Navalny would be the 99% Hitler to Putin's 100% Hitler. Putler. I didn't say Putin is good. I did say Navalny would be better than Putin. Anyway, why, why you don't speak about the genocide Israel's doing in the support of U.S.? Putin is not the problema. Yes, famously, I never talk about genocide Israel's doing. Number one defender of Israel here. Hello. Kak Dilla, Kak de Bezavut, what's up? My name is Hassan. It's a fake Muslim name I'd use to throw you off because I love Israel. That's because they're all like that has guy. Dude can't even remember which race he claims to be. <laughs> That's just normal Balkan behavior, though. Um, Navalny, the neo-Nazi better. Are you kidding me? Oh, God, this is the worst liberal take you got. Dude, come on, 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 come on. I know. I know he was a, he was a neo-Nazi. Okay? I know. It is ridiculous to act like Vladimir Putin is doing anything good. Like, there is no... It's it just... It's so fucking stupid. <sighs> What's better, Neo or Nazi? Yeah, it's just like... No... By the way, not a single person is, like, voting for Navalny because they're like... I, I mean, I'm sure there was some neo-Nazis or whatever... But, like, I hope you guys understand. This is a, if there was a race between Navalny and fucking Vladimir Putin, it would be a race between two CIA-adjacent people, okay? Two capitalist, incredibly right-wing, ultra-nationalist, CIA-adjacent motherfuckers duking it out with one another. What are you talking about? Like, how do you think Putin came to power? It's so stupid. This argument is so dumb. Navalny would have broken up Russia and there'd be a civil war and millions dead Russia due to his racism. So you're wrong on that. Voting for Navalny is voting against Putin. That's all. Exactly. It's one of those things where it's like, People know that it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Nobody, ain't nobody's like thinking that Navalny's going to win. It's more so to be like, this is the only thing. This is the only thing I can vote against. Stop saying you dislike Putin and say that you really mean you hate multipolarity. Yes, I hate multipolarity. That's why everyone always says I'm sucking Xi Jinping's cock. Famously. And, and say that I'm an asset for the state of China. Because I... Yeah, Navalny is the Gulen of Russia. Yeah, I, I think that's a relatively fair assessment. I don't think that's, like, wrong. 
That's why I said Vladimir Putin is still popular as a figure, ultimately. I do not think Vladimir Putin is a good guy. Just like I don't think Recep Tayyip Erdogan is a good guy. The people of Russia deserve better leadership. They do not have better leadership. So at the moment, what they had was a protest vote against Vladimir Putin. That protest vote against Vladimir Putin was killed. These are all, in my opinion, I mean, some of this is obviously assessments that I'm making that uh, we don't know the full uh, reality of, but I think it's a relatively educated take to, you know, assume that he was killed. Oh. A protest vote that was a fucking CIA puppet, Lamau. I don't think you understand. Vladimir, what do you think Vladimir Putin's background is? Like, I don't know where this, where, where this notion comes from that, like, you think Vladimir Putin is somehow, like, not a capitalist and, and also not, like, uh, an intelligence asset from the jump. The only difference is he is positioned against the United States. That's it. On certain issues. The U.S. supported a coup in Ukraine that threw out the Democratic... Oh, my God. Okay. To attack one presidential. We have no preference for any of the candidates for the president of the United States of America. We will work with anyone who voters, the voters trust. But the use of administrative resources of the judicial system, well, it is simply become disgrace to the whole world for the United States. I have every reason to believe that today we do not observe any democracy in your country, at least during the election processes. In some Western countries, including the USA. Putin is a former KGB who compares him to the fucking Peter the Great. Can Chappie Rational not act like he's some hero just because the U.S. West isn't a fan of him? I don't know if there's anyone who's, like, unironically pushing Z. I feel like I make fun of them so much that, like, I mean, maybe there are some people who, like, think he's, like, secretly a, a communist. No, my favorite is when people say that, like, the real leadership, the real communism is the Russian Communist Party as though they are not controlled opposition, completely controlled by Vladimir Putin. Like, that's another funny one. I think ultimately Putin, just like every other fucking country on the planet, has the capacity to not do evil and chooses to do evil shit regardless for capitalist interests, for personal interests. And uh, especially in the process of like uh, a continued invasion with death and destruction that befalls the Ukrainian population... It's fucking ridiculous objectively to say that he is a good dude in any meaningful capacity because he's not. Okay? He's uh, objectively bad when it comes to domestic treatment uh, of Russian citizens. And he's objectively bad when it comes to his foreign policy. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Pushing Z is like the people that defend Putin. Z is, uh, is on the side of the tanks. Uh, that invaded Ukraine. It means like uh, it's it's just the direction I think, right? Uh, the direction of the invasion, like it, it signified where the uh, tanks were going, like where the Zapod. Yeah, Zapod. I don't push Z. I push P. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. So. Let's not pretend like Ukraine is not corrupt as hell. Yes, of, of course. I've talked about how corrupt Ukraine is many, many times over, which is part of the reason why people say I'm a Vladimir Putin defender. Except it doesn't matter. Your corruption, it does not fucking matter when you're being invaded. Okay? Okay. 
Remember this guy, the Z guy? Nothing is more convincing that Russia's elections are fair and balanced than featuring an American accused of running a sex cult that exploited people with addiction to satisfy a spanking fetish on national television praising it. Oh, dude, isn't this guy like a... Isn't this guy like a, like a fucking... Like a crazy... Uh, uh, what the fuck is this guy? He's like a commie, isn't he? But... Uh, oh, Ma Caleb Malpin. He's like Nazball. He's not even a commie. I think he's like... Or a Larishite, maybe. Yeah, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't care. These guys are insane. He's the spanky tanky. Yeah, that makes so much sense. God. You should thank the Lord every day of your fucking life that this is one of the only normal, like, very anti-imperialist communities literally anywhere. Okay? Like, think about that. Think about the fucking gold mine that you're sitting on. That, like, you have a community of people who are socialist and socialist adjacent, okay, that care about workers' rights, that will even cover electoralist uh, politics in the United States of America from a objectively leftist position, and more importantly than all those other things, definitely anti-imperialist, and not a fucking Revcom, not a Larishite, not a not a Trotskyist community like none of these none of these like weird adjacent things that turn into that almost always turn into like uh, some kind of fucking weirdo cult. Think about that. Think about how lucky you are that the only inconvenience is the three minute ad break at the top of the fucking hour. Many of you don't even know what any of these adjacent things are because you haven't spent enough time in like leftist circles or left book. Or even organizing or attending protests, I guess, where you see the smelly guys, okay? The crusty guys. It's good that you don't know any of that shit. Don't worry. You don't need to. Malpin and these Z losers, Hinkle Tinkle, Samira Khan went to Russia and met with a literal Nazi Alexander Dugan. Yeah. Think about the only issue being the top of the hour ad break. Think about that. Now, you don't have to think about it as long as you subscribe. Thinking a white guy from Cali knows best about black liberation. <sighs> you think, I think you're talking about Bob Avakian, right? You're not talking about me. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. Santan Kishan. Thank you for the five gifted uh, subs. Yeah, the rather right-wing-minded side of the communist community is a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. You cannot be a right-wing communist, okay? It is ridiculous. Nationalism is poison. Nationalism is anti-materialist. You cannot have a nationalistic framing while simultaneously advocating for anything that is inherently Marxist. Okay? That's it. Anyone that fucking eats the, the, anyone that drinks from that Kool-Aid inevitably becomes more of a nationalist and infinitely less of a socialist. Okay. That's it. It is inherently oxymoronic. It is idiotic. It's like saying anarcho-capitalist. Okay. These two values conflicted one another. Anarchism and capitalism are inherently contradictory values. Anarchism is the destruction of unjustifiable hierarchies, simply put. Capitalism is built on top of an unjustifiable hierarchy that ain't nobody fucking voted for democratically. Okay? Communism is an economic system, though, so you could be socially right at the same time. It derives from Marxist principles. which at its heart are built on top of dialectical materialism. There is no materialism in nationalism. The only way that you can explain nationalism through materialism is as a mere distraction.
I agree with you, but I really think we should push the Texas border back to Guatemala and just make Mexico a U.S. territories and label the cartel terrorists. That's so funny because, like, absolutely. First of all, this was discussed, I believe, in the 18th, uh, in the 1800s. And the American government literally said that would mean we'd had to live with Mexicans. And I don't want that. So, no, no fucking racist person would ever agree with you. Not even in principle. Also, it's incredible to just say that, like, we should make Mexico a U.S. territory. That's a wild thing. My man is, my man is literally maxing out on the fucking alpha dog colony mindset. Do you react to thought slime? If you don't, just say so. I won't link them anymore. If you do, here's a funny video on Caleb Maupin. Um, sometimes I react to thought slime. He's great. Uh, what did you say? Oh, liberation such as the Cuban Revolution, nationalism? Yes. Nationalism, once a state has been established, is very different than nationalism of the past as a liberatory movement. Nationalism can be a galvanizing factor in creating a state against a colonial occupation or against a dictatorship. Very different than, like, Irish nationalism is very different than German nationalism. Do you understand? This is something that I have. Yeah. Nationalism of the oppressor versus nationalism of the oppressed is a fundamental, uh, uh, is a fundamental difference there that many people don't understand because they hear the term and understandably are, are grossed against it, grossed out against it for, good reason and then sometimes people weaponize that against like black nationalist movements not all black nationalist movements are the same right there are some that are separatist or extremist and weird and reactionary and then there are others who are not a great example of this thank you Britonic, which is very prescient very important to talk about now is israeli nationalism versus palestinian nationalism Shut up, ya kubian Bro, you have a Putin is JD Pawn. Makes sense. First, these criticize him. All right, maybe Putin isn't JD Pawn, but he's our best shot at JD Pawn. Yeah, dude, he's doing permanent first world genocide. That's why he's killing Ukrainians. When I think of the developed world, when I think of the developed world, I'm thinking of like the greatest village you've ever seen with like a babushka living in it, okay, inside of the mud, getting fucking lasered by a rocket. And I'm thinking, this is good. This is permanent first world genocide, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. The only way we liberate the global south is by genociding Eastern Europe. <laughs> like literally just dire conditions. People living basically in, like, developing nation conditions, okay, inside of, like, one step elevated from a fucking mud hut, we should just keep killing those guys instead of, uh, yeah, that's how to do permanent first world genocide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By this logic, unironically, it literally is like Hitler <laughs> looking at Hitler and being like, what are you talking about? Hitler's doing permanent first world genocide. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he kind of did. <laughs> Hitler did more permanent first world genocide than fucking Putin is doing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're out of your mind, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right, uh, dude, this community is so funny. I don't understand the hay sometimes. All right, let's keep going. Putin also made his first public comments on the death of opposition leader Navalny, claiming he had agreed to a prisoner swap before Navalny's sudden death in the Arctic prison. Before people fucking yell at me, I'm saying 
like the comparison between Putin and Hitler in this regard does not favor either party. Okay. I'm saying that it's ridiculous to say that he's doing uh, a, a, a JD Pond style uh, anti imperialist action by killing a bunch, by lasering a bunch of fucking Ukrainian babushkas. Okay. Некоторые коллеги сказали, и не, не сотрудники администрации, некоторые там люди сказали, что есть идея обменять господина Навального на некоторых людей, которые находятся в местах лишения свободы в западных странах. Вы можете мне поверить, можете нет. Человек, который со мной говорил, еще фразу не закончил. Я сказал, я согласен. Но, к сожалению, вот случилось то, что случилось. Yeah, unfortunately, what happened, happened. But there was only one condition. We would exchange him. But he wouldn't come back. Let him sit there. That is all, but it happens. There's nothing you can do about it. This can't be Putin. This must be a clone. Dude, another... Another incredible analog between Putin and Erdogan is the constant, like, he's dying memes. This happens literally in every country with, like, an authoritarian strongman that has existed in perpetuity. Actually, really interesting. I don't know if there's a Chinese version of this with Xi Jinping. I, I don't know. I I've never heard it from the netizens. Maybe they have a similar thing, but I think it's a more of a testament to his popularity in comparison to... These guys is popularity. Russians have been saying, yeah, Putin has been cloned for like 10 years now. Russians have been saying Putin has been cloned and he's going to die for 10 fucking years. Same with Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is on the, is on the edge of cancer. Okay. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is on the edge of cancer for as long as I have lived. Do you understand? This man, according to the Turkish people who are anti Erdogan, is always dying okay he's gonna die like tomorrow he's gonna die tomorrow he's gonna die tomorrow it's just i've given up i've completely given up on that meme from yeah trust me bro bro he's dying bro you don't understand bro it's hopium i'm gonna tell you right now evil never dies okay Following breaking news just coming into CNN right now. Attorneys These are the clones. Educate yourself. Trump say they're unable. unable. <laughs> Bro, by the way, I like that we have our own version of this where we do it with uh, with with Joe Biden. It's just called a facelift. Well, not even a facelift, but like Botox. Okay. <laughs> this is called aging. For those of you who don't know, it's called aging gracefully mind you okay gracefully i think he's created an organic system that the chinese people feel and know will exist beyond xi whereas the russian population knows that they are fucked yeah after putin they are fucked The Turkey-Russia situation is different. If those countries, there is a very real subconscious fear that when the strong man dies, everything will fall into a power vacuum. I think China is different because there is general faith in the party structure outside of Xi. Yes, but I think in Turkey, there is also... I don't think Turkey is the same as Russia in the sense that, like, post-Erdogan, Turkey fucking collapses. I don't think so. But post-Putin, post Russia w is fucked. Like, there is still a semblance of a real structure as a consequence of the parliamentary system, with which Erdogan obviously changed into a presidential one. But, like, still, there is a parliament. There is a... Um, also, I don't know how further Turkey could collapse. The economy is in the dumps permanently. And Turkey's always been, like, relatively 50-50. That's why I always say... Turkish elections are unfair, but they are still free. Whereas in Russia, the elections are both unfair and also not free, right? It sucks, but that is a major difference. Do you think socialists in Russia could seize the power vacuum and Putin bust the dust? No, dude. No.
Like post Putin Russia is like I'm talking Haiti style just like criminal elements. What is unfair versus not free? Unfair means like media, media blackouts, censorship, propaganda, things like that. Whereas like unfree would imply that like you're jailing or literally executing your opponents or also not allowing people to vote and, and uh, you know, like instilling fear in the minds of people that vote against you. In Turkey, it's unfair because of the things I just mentioned. A lot of censorship, uh, you know, a lot just like. Recep Tayyip Erdogan literally fucking did a national broadcast day before the election that was aired on every single platform. Um, uh, he has also jailed some of the political opposition as well, but like uh, there is still like a viable counter to him in the country that 50% of the country definitely still very much like rides for. Um, whereas, uh, what else? What else does Erdogan do? Oh, Erdogan also has like a very corrupt permanently calcified uh institutional control where um like that that basically recycles or or reignites uh a, a, a genuine uh a, a genuine amount of like support through the party structure party stru like being a part of the party offers you benefits being a part of the party offers you additional welfare being a part of the party offers you job opportunities things of that nature and when you control the country for like fucking you know 20 30 years that's how you reinforce that's how you reinforce your your real support he has also many turks in germany who voted for him overrated impact yeah, i i agree that's just whatever Turkey's press freedom, according to RSF, yeah, it's it's in the fucking dumpies, dude. Tur there's no fucking press freedom. Yeah. This is the future president of Russia. Ooh. Bro, the Synthal King himself, dude. One day. It's not Synthal that's natural. My arms look the same. Bro, I feel like he put Synthal in his cheeks, too. I don't know what the fuck he did. Is he natty? Yeah, as nat he's a natty baddie. Emhud thinks he actually did steroids and then didn't like work out enough, so then he just went the next route, which is synthol. I don't even know if he actually ever did steroids. Emhud believes it, so I believe it as well. Emhud follows this man religiously. He publicly did that in 2017. Oh, okay. You see, M. Hunt is never wrong. See Jamel Bowie's take on Dune? Dune is not a white savior narrative. And I need you to understand who's saying Wait. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that's not Jamel Bowie. What the... <laughs> I, you sent this to me? Because I was like, I've seen, I've, uh, I've seen this TikToker, and I was like, that is not Jamel Bowie. What the fuck is going on? Did he like do some crazy, like reverse aging thing or something? Like it shocked me for a second. No, no, no. He's just doing a stitch. Friend of the show, Jamel Bowie. This is this is Jamel Bowie. All right. Um, where the fuck were we? Oh, we were talking about Pootie Poo. And then we, okay. We're moving on from Pootie Poo to uh, America's very own strongman, authoritarian, sexy ass leader. And I'm not talking about Joseph Brandon, if you know what I'm saying. We're talking about Donald Trump. Broke boy, Donald Trump. If you're a broke boy, just say so. 
Trump is unable to make a $464 million bond in his civil fraud case and because he's broke. That's it. He is not buying the, the Pokemon cookies, okay? Anytime soon. Able to get a bond to pay the $464 million fraud judgment, calling it, and I'm quoting now, a practical impossibility. <laughs> CNN's Kara Scannell is joining us from New York right now. Kara, what can you tell us? Uh, Trump should get his money up and not his funny up. He's been doing, he's been getting his funny up too much. Walk us through what this means. So Trump's lawyers have informed the appeals court pee. today that they are unable to get anybody, an insurance company, an underwriter, to help them post this bond, the $454 million for Trump alone, the rest to cover his sons. And what they say is that they've approached 30 of insurance underwriters, some of these big, gigantic companies that you know, and they say that none of them are willing to do it. As you said, they're calling it a practical impossibility. You know, one of the reasons that they say is an issue here is that some of these insurance companies have internal limits that they won't issue a bond for more than a hundred million dollars and some of the biggest names that you can think of in the insurance world also will not underwrite a bond and take property which is what Trump has to put up they want cash they want securities stocks bonds something that is what's a liquid easy to sell asset they don't want property and so that is the problem that Trump has run into in trying to come up with this massive amount of money half a billion dollars you know these bond companies too they also want uh, uh, their own, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, you know, insurance on it. They want extra money than just what the bond is so that they can, you know, cover this as it as it plays out. This bond is to uh, stop the New York Attorney General's office from seizing the property while the appeal of the judgment and the case goes forward. So they've been asking the, uh, the Trump's team has been asking the appeals court to allow them to not have to post this bond um, until the appeal is over. They're saying that Trump has properties that are worth more than the judgment in this case. Uh, it's just something that the insurance companies won't take. So they're saying that the attorney general's team um, will be able to collect uh, on this judgment if it stands. And they could do so by seizing some of the properties, which the attorney general's office said they're ready to do. But they're still asking the appeals court here for more time. And that's why we're seeing this new information come out today, saying they're unable to post the bond of this magnitude. They can't get anyone to underwrite it because it is just a, a, a large amount and particularly a large amount for one individual. Well, so Kara, what comes next in this process? So now it is before the appeals court. There's been briefing on this. It's up to this New York State Appeals Court to decide whether to allow Trump to move forward with the appeal and stop the attorney general's office from seizing properties to give them this time to, to have the court case play out. If the court says that Trump um, does not get this stay. Trump's side is asking them to allow them to put their ruling on hold so they can appeal to people saying Elon's going to bail him out with what money dog with what money how's Elon going to bail him out Elon should bail himself out first what's he what's he got you think he's got 464 million just laying around They're having a broke off, dude. Wait, so Trump did need a GoFundMe? Yes. Yeah, this is part of the new merch that I'm wearing, yes to the highest appeals court in New York State. That Those will be decisions for the New York appeals court to decide. And of course, the New York Attorney General's office like has- People saying Elon has billions of Tesla stock. Okay, you think he's gonna sell Tesla stock? Like that's insane. Or you think at, at the current interest rates that exist, Elon is going to leverage his Tesla stock to get a fucking, to get a, a, a loan that is half a billion dollars. To bail Donald Trump out? That is insane. Buying a president is one thing, but I feel like, you know, it's a little difficult to do here. Pose this. They want the appeals court to allow them to enforce the injudgment now if Trump cannot post that bond. Well, all right, Kara, we'll stay in close touch with you. We'll see what happens. A significant develop, of development indeed. Hey, Renato, let's start with you because you've represented it, you've represented rather, and prosecuted large real estate developers before. What happens 
if they can't get a bond? Oh, if they can't get a bond, uh, collection efforts go forward, which, uh, first of all, can be expensive. OK, it's a there's a court process where uh, the, the New York attorney general is going to be trying to collect that judgment, could potentially put liens on properties uh, in, in, you know, essentially entering that order into uh, uh, various other proceedings. For <laughs> and in the, when they put liens on the properties, they're definitely not using the Trump valuations on the properties <laughs> come on i don't get it just put a lien on fucking mar-a-lago you know what i mean that's worth like what 10 billion dollars according to donald trump <laughs> for example so that would potentially be an issue for trump uh he doesn't if he's already got uh his real estate highly encumbered with loans and so on having to deal with collection efforts and pay attorneys to fight off collection efforts is yet another problem that he doesn't want to have to deal with. And his attorneys say that uh, he approached 30 underwriters to back the bond. Does that make sense to you that they would all say no? Well, in my experience, um, real estate developers tend to be very highly illiquid. They tend to be highly leveraged. They tend to have all sorts of loans. They, you know, they might have a revolving line of credit. They may have uh, various loans and personal guarantees out there. Um, however, uh, what I will say is that you know this is not a complete surprise to Donald Trump. It's not like the New York Attorney General's case happened over the course of minutes. It happened over the course of years. Uh, and Trump could anticipate a potential judgment. And the fact that he hasn't prepared by refinancing and making selling properties and so on suggests that he may be less wealthy than he has portrayed himself to be. Oh, on that note, thank you for um, teeing up Kristen Holmes, who covers the Trump campaign for us. Kristen, if you're a broke boy, just say so. <laughs> you uh, know very well that a big part of Donald Trump's identity is how wealthy he is. And the idea that he can't pay this money, I mean, it wouldn't be out of this uh, world for you or I or most normal people not to pay half a billion dollars and not to have that lying around in our bank account. But it might be different when it comes to how Donald Trump thinks he's perceived. Yeah, and Dan, I just want to start. Who do you support, Biden or Trump, RFK, baby? by saying that you should know that there are a lot of Trump allies who watch your show and they've been texting me with the argument. RFK. Jesse the Body Ventura ticket. That's right. Jesse the Body Ventura is going to be the president after, <laughs> after he's RFK's vice president. Of one, most billionaires are not liquid. This right. is not that surprising. The other, other argument saying this is about the insurance companies. This insane amount, this is their words, not mine, in terms of the bond, these insurance companies can't get that much money, that much collateral. So there is an argument here among Trump world. But as you know, Donald Trump himself has painted himself, his entire image, not just politically, but also before that, his brand on being a billionaire. And that mm -hmm. is why this case was so personal for him in the first place, was the idea that that everything he had built was essentially on a lie, was it was fraudulent, that he wasn't really this rich, that he had inflated those numbers. That's why you saw him so fascinated and so intent on being part of this case, sitting in that courtroom, listening to these various witnesses, because it is to his personal brand. It also goes to his political brand. This idea that I built myself up as a billionaire and I could do that for you too, goes away if you can't afford to pay this kind of money. And let me just go back to Renato on this, because you did mention uh, that most real estate developers are not liquid. They can't just write a half a billion dollar check. I think that is probably true for most billionaires. Damn, dude, they're just flexing on him. They are currently flexing on Donald Trump. They're calling him a broke bitch, dude. Chill. That's fucked up. Though I don't certainly have that experience to really know firsthand. Uh, but if they have assets, the question is, you kind of said maybe if he prepared, he would start to sell things off. I mean, is that a, a real possibility that he might have to do that? I will just say that in other circumstances, other matters that I've handled, uh, that is what's happened. Essentially, uh, real estate developers refinance properties, sell properties, do what they have to do to get cash. Now, uh, candidly, I've never been in a case where a real estate developer needed 
uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions. It's only been in the tens of millions, uh, but nonetheless, for those real estate developers, it was a very significant ask, right, to come up with that mm -hmm. kind of money if you have hundred, well, if your net worth is in the hundreds of millions. And so, but for Donald Trump, nonetheless. He could have anticipated this and sold a property in the midst of the New York Attorney General's proceeding. And I really would say one of two things is true here. Either he doesn't have the wealth that he suggests he has, or he didn't plan whatsoever, uh, You know, was so blind to what was occurring that he essentially left himself at a position where now – uh, he's going to incur significant costs and hassle and, and a disruption to his business that was unnecessary. All right, short time ago in the White House. Well, 10 million bond is a small bean developer. All right, yeah, he's, he's a broke boy. He's been a broke boy. He needs to get his money up. He needs to not get his money up, but he's been getting his money up too hard. All right, Peter Dushi pressed the White House on Biden's flashes of anger, which I love. Fox News went so quickly on the defensive, okay? For months and months, they've been obviously running the understandable narrative that Biden is losing it. He's demented, he's old, he's senile, he's fragile. Sleepy Joe Biden. It's correct. A lot of Americans agree with Fox News on this issue. Okay? However, since the SOTU, State of the Union... Brandon has been a little bit more dynamic, and I have to tell you that as an objective arbiter of news, okay, of truth and democracy. So in the interest of doing my journalistic due diligence, I will tell you, I will tell you the truth. Joe Biden has been definitely more dynamic since the State of the Union. He has started campaigning, okay? They put him on that liquid cocaine, crack cocaine, whatever the fuck. They're putting them on, but that shit's been working. Now, now having said that, so what did the Republicans do? They fucking tuck their tail and they show their belly like a submissive little puppy. Okay? Immediately, they turn on the defensive and they start crying about how angry he is. He's such an angry president and I'm a... I'm a widow baby, and I'm crying about how angry he is. Take a look. House briefing, our Peter Ducey asked Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, about reports that President Biden, because of the fact that he is facing some opposition from his own voters in many battleground states, has flashes of anger over his sagging poll numbers. Those are the exact date of the first day you streamed or you're senile? Easy. 25th of March, 2018. Also, you're ridiculous if you don't think that Biden is senile. You also have eaten the propaganda from um, liberal mainstream media, making it seem like Biden actually was totally clear and coherent on that, uh, on that Robert Herr deposition. He was not. You just read the headlines from mainstream media and the false framing presented by mainstream media and immediately ran with that narrative. Okay, he didn't. He wasn't clear or coherent in it. We looked through the actual fucking statements. And losing voters. Listen to this exchange. The report that when President Biden was told his handling of the war between Israel and Hamas was starting to affect his poll numbers, uh, the quote is, he began to shout and swear. So when he does that, is he shouting and swearing about Netanyahu or about Hamas or about his poll numbers? This is the when did you stop beating your spouse question because I don't think he ever did that. <laughs> um, and so, me? well, you, you use that as the premise of your question, which is when he does that. He, I've never seen him do that, shout or swear in response to that. So from my perspective, um, that uh, particular report is not correct. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Uh, he's so dynamic though, we're gonna behind closed out. doors. Vladimir Putin reelected. Trump calls January 6th defendants hostages and gets a rebuke from Michael Pence, who is fake. So there's also a separate drama. Hey, I'm sorry for being annoying. I understand why you tie me out. I love you in this community and I hope you don't hate me. I just have a really stressful weeks in front of me because I have to give two presentations and that gives me a lot of anxiety. Happy to be a part of the community.
Sheltered Rosebud is back. I only gave him an hour off. Can't wait to give them a week off three hours from now when I'm finally done covering politics and they come back in to be like, uh, I can't believe you're done covering politics. This is really fucked up. Anyway, um, as I was saying, so Donald Trump over the weekend had some statements and some of those statements were incendiary as always. And others were taken out of context. Mainstream media came after our boy specifically and the Brandon camp take, uh, came after our boy specifically when Trump said, if I don't get reelected, it will be a bloodbath. Okay. Now they were quick to jump on that and go, Oh my God, he's talking about fucking, uh, you know, murder on the streets. It's an understandable fear that people might have considering January 6th when he didn't win. However, turns out our big, beautiful boy got clip chimped. And I'm going to tell you exactly how in a moment. Let's take a look. Uh, to the latest on our presidential race, the presumptive Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump, is taking heat for the language he used at a rally in Ohio over the weekend where he lashed out at migrants and defended January 6th criminals. Ed O'Keefe has more now from the White House for us. Ed, Donald Trump's former vice president says he will not endorse him. We are on, in unusual territory here, to say the least. What is going on? That's right, Tony. We sure are. Mike Pence says his differences with Donald Trump aren't over style or language. Pence argues his former boss is walking away from conservative principles like fiscal responsibility and opposition to abortion. So he can't back him. I've come to the conclusion that I'm, uh, I, I won't be endorsing Donald Trump this year. A forceful rebuke from Donald Trump. Boo! Traitor! You have no constituency. No one cares. You suck. You abandoned our president in the, in the moment that he needed you the most. You're a fake friend. You're a phony. We don't like you. Donald Trump's one-time vice president, Mike Pence. The reason why I, I won't endorse Donald Trump this year is because I see him departing uh, from the mainstream conservative agenda. Beyond policies, the two have clashed over the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. On Saturday, Trump kicked off an Ohio rally with support for the January 6th defendants. Can you see the spirit from the hostages? And that's what they are as hostages. On Sunday, some members of Yeah, he called the J6ers hostages, which I think is awesome. He's an abolitionist, okay? That is my abolitionist king. Our prison's obsolete. Folks, let me tell you. We must focus on rehabilitative justice because justice is what love looks like in public. That's right. That's right. Folks, release the hostages. He's a prison abolitionist only for white people? Yes. of his own party criticized Trump's promise to pardon those convicted for actions at the Capitol. We're a nation of laws, and those folks were convicted. Many times they pled guilty. Uh, if you plead guilty, i.e., obviously you are not a patriot. Trump went on to stoke fear about criminals coming across the southern border. Well, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. And speaking about the auto industry and cars manufactured abroad, he said... We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the... Look at this fucking dildo. Line, ...and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected... Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath. The Biden campaign criticized... Immediately, immediately they seized on it. They clip-chimped him, and they fucking... They seized on it. 
and they were like, wow, he's saying there's going to be a bloodbath. To be fair, under other circumstances, Trump has basically likened, uh, you know, he uses spicy language for sure. And he, he, and do I believe that he's not like memeing on what will happen if he doesn't get elected as, as far as like political violence? Certainly. But this, but this isn't one of those instances. What the fuck? Hold on. As Trump's use of the word bloodbath, saying he was doubling down on threats of political violence. The Trump campaign hit back, saying the comment was taken out of context. As for President Biden, he celebrated St. Patrick's Day here at the White House yesterday while also celebrating a record $53 million fundraising total in February. This week, he's headed west for stops in the battleground states of Nevada and Arizona, which he won in 2020, will be critical in November. He'll also be making some stops in Texas to raise money. Tony? Yeah. November itself will be critical. Ed, thank you very much. Republicans find themselves answering questions about one man and one man only, Donald Trump. The Sunday shows were filled with questions about two eye-catching comments Trump made last night. In one, Trump said migrants are not people. And in the other, he painted a dark future for the country if he does not win. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a blood. I just had a... <laughs> Sorry, I just had someone randomly come to my house for ho house cleaning. And I was like, this is not the right house. <laughs> um, they, they're at the wrong house. Never mind. Uh, that's what. No, no, no. It wasn't a solicitor. No, they, they showed me the address. It was the wrong address. Wrong door. It was the CIA. Yeah, dude. The CIA is a is a tiny... Uh, Latina abuelita, okay? <laughs> the CIA has many different methods. <laughs> it's certainly not a five foot one <laughs> tiny little lady. She's an asset. The CIA is woke now. Yeah. She's a trained assassin. Um, Kim Jong-un gets Turkish ice cream. Wait, what the fuck? No, that's not actually Kim Jong-un. Shut the fuck up. Uh, where was I? Oh, so we were talking about the bloodbath thing. Do I believe personally, do I believe personally that um, Donald Trump and his supporters might do another fucking January 6th? Maybe. Right? It's not unlikely. But he's not fucking talking about that here. He's saying, like, it's going to be a bloodbath for you economically. Okay? It's obvious. The actual spicy language that he utilizes is not even spicy. It's just straight Nazi language that he utilizes when talking about undocumented immigrants and immigrants alike. Where he basically fucking said in that same speech, moments prior to this, that, like, these guys aren't human. Okay? How the fuck do you not get mad at that, but you get mad at, like, the it's going to be a bloodbath if you don't fucking elect me? Because Democrats also are like, no, he's right on that. <laughs> like, he's going full fash saying they're not people. And the Democrats are like, I can't believe he said it's going to be a bloodbath if, we, if he's not elected, uh, you know, because of the EV tariffs. It's very frustrating. Okay, it's very, 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 very frustrating. I think a trade war with China is kind of spicy, if not dehumanizing. Well, wait, what? No, it's just. There's limits to what he can and can't do. Look at that dude at the rally behind Trump with the red tie, black coat and glasses. Is that the most insult looking motherfucker you've ever seen? Yes. He has the blockiest head I've ever done seen in my life, too. Beth, for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Now, of course, we don't have to think about what could happen if Donald Trump doesn't get elected and the bloodbath that might ensue because he is going to get elected. <laughs> Unless the Democrats change course dramatically 
okay? He already is going to get elected, so you don't have to worry about what happens when he doesn't, okay? You should start worrying about what happens when he does. Here to talk about that and much more, Democratic strategist Maria Cardona and Republican strategist Alice Stewart, both CNN political commentators and co-hosts of the podcast Hot Mics from Left to Right. Thank you for being with us. All right, Alice, I want to... Damn, bro, they get podcasts up there, but I'm not up there. Get the fuck out of here, CNN. Uh, Ryan Grimm and Aaron Rupar went to war over this clip. Oh, this is funny. So do I have the straight? Trump said if he's not elected and we don't put tariffs on Chinese EVs, there will be a bloodbath in the auto industry, and that's reported as him saying there will be a general bloodbath. Headline writers, don't outsmart yourself. Just do Trump promises bloodbath if he doesn't win election. No, you don't have that right, but that's very on brand for you, so... That's not what he said. I heard it in the clip. That's what it sounded like he said. I don't like Trump, but pretty sure Ryan got it right when, in what he said. Nope, when he says it'll be the least of it, he's referring to cars. The bloodbath of the whole country is not about cars. This is awesome. This is a perfect... This is a perfect rehashing of 2016. Trump says something purposely incendiary. Liberals don't just, like, focus on all the other incendiary shit that he said that's, like, directly tangible policies... Liberals jump the gun and say, see, he used the term bloodbath. He means like they're going to do J6 style bloodbath. Okay. This time it'll be J6, but J7 and J8. Okay. It'll be like October 7, but for America. And then Trump and his supporters go, oh, fake news. That's not what he was saying because it literally wasn't what he was saying in that situation. And the irony, of course, is that he has basically said, he has basically said that, you know, there will obviously be moments like uh, of political violence on numerous other occasions. So like liberals feel galvanized in defending that position. They feel like they, of course, he's going to fucking, uh, of course, he's going to do political violence. He's said it many, many times over. Right. And then we, we consistently get like all those fucking moderates to be more polarized that were already like begging to fucking vote for Trump anyway. They were looking for any out. And uh, rehash the 2016 cycle over and over again. Hyper focus on Donald Trump's incendiary statements in the wrong ways. Okay. Hi hyper focus on Trump's incendiary statements, not the actual ones that are like tangible and, and reflect his, his policy uh, uh, outlook. Okay. And then we have a semantics conversation over and over again. No, nope. when he says that'll be the least of these, he's referring to cars. The bloodbath of the whole country is not about cars. I get why. MAGA's and anti-anti-Trumpers are muddying the waters, though. You can't be this stupid, so you must be lying. So you acknowledge that the first bloodbath was indeed a reference to the economic damage of the auto industry. Bloodbath is a common term for financial catastrophe. This obvious context when he talks about the rest of the country clearly shows he's claiming similar economic catastrophe will hit the whole country and the auto industry will collapse or will be the least of it. Then he goes back to talking about the auto industry. Trump is a dangerous lunatic, but you're just flat out lying here or just dumber than I ever thought. Pathetic. Ryan. He's saying that if he loses, there will be a bloodbath and the auto industry will be the least of it. It doesn't take a genius to listen to the clip and figure that out, but I'll leave the tortured anti-anti-Trumpism to you. It's your specialty. It is impossible to listen to or like the notion that we have to have like a separate category for anti-anti-Trumpism is so dumb because Ryan is not pro-Trump. I am not pro-Trump. Ryan, in, in this instance especially so, is just simply pro-truth. You are saying, you don't want to say that. You don't want to say that, like, uh, you're, you're actually reading the fucking statement. Okay? You're reading the statement as it's intended. Uh, and, and that is, like, because you, you know, don't want this to be weaponized by the trumpets. Okay? And immediately, that's like, well, you must be a trumpet yourself. But we know that you're not a trumpet. So we'll just claim that you're anti-anti-Trump. It's very stupid. You can interpret it both ways. I agree with your point, but there's no truth. No, the point is Trump has already talked about political violence time and time again. Trump has also led to political violence. He literally talks about the January 6th prisoners that went to jail for doing an insurrection as hostages. It is clear how he feels about political violence. He is on board with it. Okay? Okay. He's on board with political violence. You don't have to fucking manufacture an additional narrative off of something that he can very easily defend. It is so stupid. 
It is so goddamn stupid. And to present people like Ryan, especially as like anti anti Trump, as though they don't, uh, <laughs> as though they specifically hate, like as though they are the real centrists here, is idiotic. What at what did Asmund Gold say? Yeah, exactly. It's the it's the Asmund Gold quote about you know people making up shit about me. If what I say is so bad, why make up shit? Except in this circumstance, Trump does say, does say a lot of bad shit. So you don't have to fucking look that far. And then have the media narrative be driven by, did he or did he not mean that there is going to be political violence? Especially when there will be political violence and he will definitely say that there should be political violence down the line anyway. That's why it's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It is impossible to listen to that or read it and think he meant anything other than financial bloodbath. You think by lying like this, you're helping Biden, but the irony is that you are the one here, not me. That is actually giving Trump a boost. I 100% agree with this, by the way. You're further discrediting legitimate criticism of him and insulting the intelligence of people who can watch the clip themselves and speak the English language. You are helping Trump and hurting Biden, the very opposite of your intent. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't even fucking type beautiful. The liberal hysterics and cope at their finest. Biden is cooked and they're grasping, gas, grasping blindly in the dark for anything. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, hey guys, Donald Trump actually did use Hitlerian language in that, in that conversation, in that speech. My favorite Aaron tweet of as of late, fair warning right now that I'm going to have no fucks to give this election cycle. The choice between democracy and authoritarianism, sanity and insanity. I'm going to call out anybody who obscures that very clear and vital distinction. It's all on the line. Yeah, he's dude. Aaron is going to make you wear the latex cuck suit. Okay. This time tonight is different. He's not wearing the latex suit. You are. You better not come after our boy, Brandon, or democracy. I love Aaron. He's great. This Variety article is pretty wild. More than 450 Jewish creatives, executives, and Hollywood professionals have signed an open letter denouncing Jonathan Glazer's zone of interest Oscar speech. Nice, guys. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's see. Deborah Messing, Tova Feldsha, executives Gary Barber, Gail Berman, Amy Pascal, creators Amy Sherman Palladino, directors Eli Roth, Rod Lurie, producers Lawrence Bender, Hawk Hawk. What the fuck? Hawk Cock? That's crazy. Sherry Lansing and representatives UTS Jake Fenton, Gersh's Jeffrey Greenberg, attorney Craig Emanuel. That was a man, a real, the real hoi polloi, high society, real, real big names out here. Okay. <laughs> Producers you've never heard of except for <laughs> the ones that happen to be bankrolling some of these movies. They are really mad at Jonathan Glazer. Okay. <laughs> the jabroni league yeah a real who's who of annoying libs eli roth is the only fucking name i recognize uh the group statement says we refute our jewishness being hijacked for the purpose of drawing a moral equivalence of be between a nazi regime that sought to exterminate a race of people and an israeli nation that seeks to avert its own extermination Glazer declined to comment with such high profile co-signees as jennifer uh, jason lee la la land producer gary gilbert and the America's creators, Joe Fields and Joe uh, Weis Weisberg, the statement as the use of words like occupation to describe an indigenous Jewish people. Blech. Blech. You should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed to put your name on a fucking dumbass thing like this.
Yeah. <laughs> Israel needs to defend itself <laughs> by killing Palestinian children. Jonathan Glazier, please stop saying that that is not a good defense of Israel. Killing Palestinian children is exactly how we're going to defend ourselves, and we must defend ourselves. Okay? The La La producer guy was the one who helped screen the October 7 footage here. Eli Roth was the bear Jew in Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, that, that, Eli Roth is the one that makes me a little sad. Like, I hate that. It's really fucking annoying. The use of words like occupation describe an indigenous Jewish people defending a homeland that dates back thousands of years and has been recognized as a state by the United Nations distorts history. It gives credence to the modern blood libel that fuels a growing anti-Jewish hatred around the world in the United States and in Hollywood. Bro, they're saying it's blood libel. They're saying it's blood libel to say that like Israel should stop killing Palestinian children. No, blood libel is, is a, a concept made up. Okay, to justify atrocities committed against Jewish people. You cannot say it is blood libel when Israel as a nation state has killed a shit ton of children. Okay, that is crazy. You are undermining the severity of this accusation. You are undermining the very real hate crime of anti-Semitism by comparing it to something that is really happening, okay? It is so shocking. Blood libel also refers to a specific myth. It pisses me off so much when they try to make it a uh, mean criticism of Israel. Yeah. Blood libel, for those of you who don't know, is the, the fucking antiquated now, except, you know, rehash regularly, antiquated... Uh, uh, conspiracy that like jews eat children okay they kill babies they eat the blood of babies they kill children and it was utilized to basically justify pogroms it was it was it is a historical record okay it is a matter of historic record this is exactly what uh, uh the the uh like early anti-semites did in order and claimed in order to uh, in order to justify pogroms okay yeah, they kill Christians to use their blood in a ritual. That's where the blood libel comes from. Please stop comparing like a made up conspiracy that is very damaging and has been historically damaging and has been used as a justification to kill Jews with the Israeli state totally separate from Judaism. Absolutely. Okay. No matter how hard Zionists try to fucking marry the two, the Israeli state actually killing children it's so stupid they're bullying our boy critical defense for Jonathan Glazier our big beautiful boy the goat Okay. It's completely fucking ridiculous. Rappaport watch. We don't acknowledge the UN. Then I guess you don't acknowledge Israel either as Israel is created by UN resolution 181 and Israel's own declaration of independence refers to the UN seven times. Have you watched Zone of Interest yet? Yes, I have still, uh, no, I have still yet to watch it. The missive comes in response to director Jonathan Glazier's controversial acceptance speech at the, uh, at the Oscars. You already know what that is. I covered it a lot. Okay. Um, where he said that uh, right now we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people, whether the victims of October whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack in Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist? After Glazier spoke, he received applause at the Dolby Theater. Some of enthusiastic from Poor Thing star Mark Ruffalo. Kaya, please. Come on. Come on. 
place. You're going to hurt your little elbows if you lay on the ground like that. Good girl. Good girl. Good place, Kaya. What? I don't get why they don't go out of their way to oppose the occupation. That makes sense to me. I just don't understand why they go out of their way. I get why they don't go out of their way to oppose the occupation. That makes sense to me. I just don't understand why they go out of their way to defend it instead of shut the fuck up. Um, it's cult shit, I think. I think people legitimately believe, like, I, I dude, dude, dude. It's because the best conspiracies or the best cults have a shred of truth and if you understand zionism as a very real trauma response to uh centuries of jewish history of pogroms and the holocaust it makes a little bit more sense okay because that's what it is it comes from a very real place of hurt and a very real fear that the untold, unimaginable, the untold, unimaginable traumas caused, the untold, unimaginable traumas that the, the Jewish people withstood for centuries will happen again unless Israel exists. Okay? So I think that people do legitimately... I think that people do legitimately believe that. Okay? But this is, of course, when we talk about uh, a Jewish people and their own, per like, Zionist Jews and their perspective. And it is, it is one that is also understandably recycled and and constantly reaffirmed through social development okay obviously uh zionist jews make up a tiny sliver of zionism globally zionism globally is uh one that is most ardently defended by christians this frustrates a lot of nazis and a lot of fucking white supremacists who Act like, uh, you know, that's not the case, but that is objectively the case. Okay? And Indians, sure. Well, Indians go uh, back and forth uh, on that. Some, some uh, Modi defenders on Twitter, but not necessarily. But anyway, listen, listen. The point is this. The point is this. I, I understand in some respects why it comes off so rabid and so cult-like, because it is. Because when there is like very real pain at the heart of this matter, very real trauma at the heart of this matter, that is how you arrive at such zealous supporters of the state of Israel, no matter how atrocious their war crimes may be. Because they've been conditioned into only seeing it in one direction, that if Israel doesn't exist in the way that it currently exists, then, you know, if Israel's not demographic majority Jewish state, if Israel doesn't consistently keep fucking occupying Palestinians and all of the other things that you see, because you've been able to, one, shake that programming yourself, and I'm talking to the, the many uh, anti-Zionist Jews in this community, right? If you can't shake that programming, you're going to be as rabid as you possibly can be when defending Israel's atrocities. There is, but it doesn't explain half of what's going on. There's also indoctrination that is steered into trauma to respond into a bloodthirsty one rather than one that simply wants a secure nation. And the support Israel gets from global power is kind of like your therapist giving you cocaine to fix your trauma, knowing for sure how that'll turn out. I think we all agree that Christian Zionism is the most insane one. Like, to a certain degree, I understand why these fucking dudes are so, like, invested in, in the, 
zealotry adjacent defense of Israel's atrocities. But when you're like a fucking anti-Semite living in Dallas, going to a goddamn mega church, and you're like defending the state of Israel and like giving money every fucking month so that people can settle in the West Bank and shit, that part is like even crazier to me. I just don't. Anyway. Just wild. They should be using that money to avoid the top of the hour ad break here instead, right? For $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. You can connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. They hate brown people more than Jews. Yeah, except the hilarious part of it is a shit ton of Jews are brown. They're fucking Arab. So many goddamn Arab Jews. Bro, if you fucking placed in a lineup... Like the normal demographic makeup of Israel, and then on the lineup you put and you peppered in Palestinian people. You think some fucking Dallas evangelical from the mega church is gonna be able to be like, that's a Jewish person? That's an Israeli person? Fuck no. Have you seen? Have you seen what the average Israeli looks like? The average Israeli Jew? It's fucking, it's impossible to decipher. It's so stupid. Americans think Israel white, okay? Because a lot of a lot of Jewish people in America, unless you're in like fucking Los Angeles, right? A lot of Jewish people in America are Ashkenazi Jews. So they are white. But that's not what Israel looks like at all. <laughs> like That's why it's extra funny to look at it from the lens of like American white black dynamics as well or white non-white dynamics as well anyway i grew up a hella i grew up hella in the evangelical church and was taught that jewish people were god's chosen and that israel will play a huge part in the rapture christians are brainwashed to believe that this is a sign of the end times yeah i used to say israeli and meant white arrows because i didn't know better Wait, what? They have green eyes and shit? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I think as of now, the plurality is Jews from the Mena region in Israel, okay? If you look at the Israeli Jewish demographics beyond the Israeli nation's demographic uh, designation, which is Jew or Arab, okay? If you actually look at the Israeli Jewish demographics, the plurality of the Israeli Jewish demographic is fucking from the Mena region. They look identical to the fucking Palestinians. There is no way. I can't believe, I feel like we got to play the, 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 the game that we play with like transvestigators. You know what I mean? Tell me if this person is, is a Jewish or uh, Christian or Muslim. That's the other thing. Exactly. Palestinians are also not as brown as you think. <laughs> That's the other issue too. Like <laughs> people, I I again. So it's very, very, very stupid. Yeah, there's a hell of white Arabs, white passing Arabs. And there are a shit ton of Arab Jews who are very dark. There is no leftist way to do race science, Lamau. This isn't race science. Race science making a huge comeback in 2024, apparently. No, this isn't race science at all. I'm just giving you actual, like, uh, actual demographics. I'm not saying that there's anything, like, unique or, or remotely different about, like, an Arab Jew versus an Arab Christian or an Arab Muslim. So, like, my point is exactly the opposite of race science. Anyway. Also, I said I was going to run the top of the hour. I break. I'm going to run it now. I forgot to run it. 
I understand and agree with what you're saying, but there's also an Ashkenazi elite in Israeli society, and that happens to be the most visible part of Israeli politics and affects how some people view the in the West view the conflict. Yeah, I think like a lot of <laughs> ironically, you have one Ashkenazi guy, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's very visible in the Western world. You have some other Ashkenazi politicians who are very visible in the Western world. But like the irony is there are a shit ton of the most reactionary power players in Israel that are not Ashkenazi. You know what I mean? Itamar ben Gvir is, is Arab. He's Kurd. Anyway. He's from fucking Iraq, bro. You are not correct on this. Statistically, just not accurate from the men of region because they're born in Israel, not because they're Arab. Arab Jews are not the majority. I am 100% correct on this. You are absolutely wrong on this. The percentage of, of Mizrahi, the percentage of Mizrahi uh, and, and, uh, and Sephardi as well, but Mizrahi specifically, uh, Jewish people is the plurality in amongst the Jewish population. You are wrong. Mizrahi, Eastern or Oriental Mizrahim, Eastern Jews, Mizrahiut, Eastern Niz, refers to Jews coming from the Arab and Muslim world, including Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Yemen, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey. Mizrahim have been in the Middle East continuously for over 2,500 years, starting with the expulsion of Jews from Israel to Babylon. Mizrahi has been used as a derogatory term to describe non-European Jews, especially those in the Arab world, with overtones of poor education and lack of culture and economic resources. Some call themselves Mizrahim to reclaim their Middle Eastern identities and to resist European Jewish hegemony. The term Oriental, as Edward Said described in his book Orientalism, is connected to the racist categorization used by European colonizers to describe non-Europeans. Sephardi, Spanish persons, by the way, uh, are uh, Jews that lived in the Iberian Peninsula. A lot of the Sephardi Jews were also uh, indis like virtually indistinguishable from the Mizrahi Jews in the way that they look. Yeah, the 29, where is it? There's like a uh, actual, a uh, deeper dive into the demographics. Here it is. 61% of Israeli Jews were full or partial Mizrahi an ancestry. The Sephardim made up about 55% of Israel's Jewish population. Okay. This is like Israel's demo Israel's own demographic designation of Jew versus Arab is specifically to muddy the waters. It's the same concept behind whiteness in America. Okay? In Israel, in Israel, okay? Jewish is supposed to be because it is a, uh, a Judeo supremacist ethno state that has an apartheid. Okay? The Jewish designation in the Israeli demographics implies closeness to power in the same way that white does in America. Because it is a social construct, ultimately, built on top of, like, real ethnic categorizations. Okay? That is the only comparison you can make to, like, America's whiteness versus non-whiteness uh, categorizations. So technically, while while the the uh, uh, the the Jewish demographics, when you look at it beyond the designation that the Israeli state applies, okay, you come to a very different conclusion. One that I am describing to you because it's not a, a, it's not a hypothesis; it's just a fact. It's a matter of fact. You get it? 
<sighs> Pull up my logs. I have a good story for you from my encounter with a liberal Zionist. I went on a date. With the Zionist Jew this past weekend, and it's safe to say it did not go well. She brought up the issue, and I told her my opinions, and she hit me with the whole, I've been to Israel, and it's not like that at all. How they say it's on TikTok. So I showed her a literal video from the night of the IDF barring Palestinians from going to Al-Aqsa on the first night of Ramadan, and she said that doesn't happen. It's fake. She then asked what I think about the hostage situation, which I told her the hostage being kept in atrocity, but notified her about the 6,000 hostages Israel has in, her, in their prisons. He's doing a, she then said, those are mostly war criminals, to which I said, would you consider throwing a rock to be a war crime? Chatter, don't debate your dates, honestly. His last message got held by Automod. She then said, those are mostly war criminals who wish I said, would you consider throwing a rock to be a war crime? And does that justify being held in perpetuity without a trial? She said, it depends. She then followed up with the Zionist classic line of, I don't like the Israeli government and I'm horrified of all civilian casualties, but. To be fair, is it good to keep dating a Zionist? I mean, maybe you can change their minds. I don't know. You have to, you have to lay it down good. Started coming at me with the whole October 7th wasn't justified shit on the first date. Trouble talked about the Zionist dating. They're now so bad. Yeah, I covered it first. That one tweet that went, Israeli pussy got me using the word nuanced. And instantly I was like, okay, no second date is happening. Might as well try to get my licks in. <laughs> Motherfucker, you literally did like two hours on Zionist on Hinge. The fuck you mean? Maybe you can smash, I don't know, a free Palestine rest on you, Chatter. Exactly. I just immediately leave my date. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, Zionists are literally starving these days because the Zionist dating pool is dramatically diminishing. Yeah, especially in our fucking age range. I mean. And this was someone I had known in undergrad when I was a Zionist freak. I, had I known about had I had found out she had moved up to Boston a month or two ago, so wanted to reconnect. I mean, that's why, probably. Like, uh, she probably thought, you know, you were still up to your old ways. I have a similar issue, but it's my AA sponsor, and I'm clinging on to my sobriety by a threat. Any suggestions? That's such a, <clears throat> that's such a scary situation. I genuinely don't know what the right answer is in that situation. I, I don't know. But it is pretty funny because, like, yes, uh, a lot of um, a lot of Zionists are having a hard time uh, dating, uh, finding, uh, even you know, uh, restricting themselves to Jews only on dating apps, and still recognizing that, like, especially in our age range, uh, uh, many Jews are anti-Zionist. The majority of Jews are anti-Zionist in our age group as well. So. <laughs> So they're just having a hard time with it overall. As a Jewish person, I can tell you definitively, you're not going to convince a Jewish woman on anything she doesn't already believe. <laughs> uh. Our age range, the fuck you mean, old man? Anyone under the age of 35... Uh, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, doesn't fucking matter, is majority going to be anti-Zionist. Maybe not like overtly anti-Zionist, but definitely like pro-Palestinian. <laughs> it 
It was hilarious when she went, I remember we have the same vibes on Israel. And I was like, well, not exactly. Yeah, you should start. You should get her on the Hasanabi crash course. Anyway. Uh, do you think the growing anti-Zionist sentiment is putting a timer on Israel's lifespan in the next decades? We'll see. But that generational split has already happened, and I don't think we're going back on it. It would take a shit ton for, I think, the younger generation that wasn't, like, permanently brain-broken by mainstream media and, like, you know... Uh, in the words of Sam Cedar, Hebrew school, you know what I mean? Like that, that was completely shut out from uh, seeing exactly what's going on in Gaza. There's no fucking way. And, and outside of that too, this, that like the Hebrew school uh, conversation is specifically for Zionism versus anti-Zionism in, uh, in the Jewish Western population versus uh, Zionism versus anti-Zionism across the board. You're just not, you you are not going to see uh, the same level of support. I tried. I did the whole, if you're a third party, the Native American versus European colonizer genocide, which side would you choose? And of course, she said Native American. And they said, but Israel versus Palestine is extremely complex and isn't as cut as dry as the Native genocide. Yeah. A buddy of mine refuses to listen to anything. He thinks he's going to get murdered by Hamas because of his 23 and Me results. When you try to argue or talk to him, he's like, you just aren't thinking straight. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know. I know. I think Christianity is making it worse in the U.S. Like the video link I showed. No, dude. Christianity is like fucking diminishing. Come on. Like religion, as science improves, and you don't need fucking like... Um, as science improves, and you don't need more... Uh, you don't need like s uh, some, some religious text to conceptualize things as there's less and less need for something like that, don't say not in rural America. Across the board, in rural America too. It's so ironic you're saying not in rural America. There's hella fucking rural Americans in here. How do you think that happens? I think people greatly overstate uh, religion's impact. It's crazy. Like, religion does play a big role, but if you look at all of the trends, like church uh, attendance, religious worship, openly being religious, especially when it comes to Christianity, is literally on a downtrend. You're crazy. Buying gay coastal elites are keeping the stream alive. Anyway, a new P research study finds that 80% of U.S. adults say religion's role in America is shrinking. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, it is unclear how o the open letter came together. Variety spoke to several. Let's finish this uh, article. After Glacier spoke, it received applause in the Dolby Theater. But few are willing to publicly criticize Glazier's words outside of Michael Rappaport, a signatory of the letter. That's all you need to know. And Mayim Bialik, who did so on social media, Blavatnik appeared to distance himself from the speech when his spokesperson told Variety his longstanding support of Israel is unwavering. Others previously interviewed by Variety, like directors Asif Kapadia and Jesse Peretz, expressed support for Glazier's speak as the speech as the Zone of Interest director faced condemnation from outside Hollywood. This is why I said immediately after that speech that it was a fucking very brave act. Okay, because let's be real, like it, it is a very brave act because you will get fucking bullied and humiliated 
endlessly by your peers who do not have a fucking sense of shame and are not of sound mind when it comes to Israel, okay? Even impossible, possibly being blackballed too. He said it in front of a Zionist producer too that takes balls. Yeah. It is unclear how the open letter came together. Nah, it's not that unclear. Variety spoke to several co-signees who explained why they lent their names to the statement. Among the signatories, Juliana Margiles, who apologized for her own controversial comments about black and LGBTQ supporters of Palestine. Remember, remember that fucking freak? <laughs> what was it? What was the... <laughs> She said, black and LGBTQ supporters of Palestine, including the black people, have been brainwashed to hate Jews. <laughs> His words sounded eerily similar to Vanessa Redgrave's infamous Zionist hoodlum speech, says modern family producer Ilana Wernick. Only this time, there was no Patty Chayevsky, Chayevsky to stand up and say the right thing. Sadly, Jew hatred won the day. That's why so many of us in the industry reached out to each other. It was very sad, very scary night. Writing the letter wasn't just cathartic for us. It's something we had to do. Nuts. Also, I'm going to give another one of these uh, cutie Cinderella cupcakes to Kaya in a second when she wakes up. There was no concern for how Jewish people are going to react to a speech like that. To that applause to those red pins when not even our hostages are being mentioned and it's just incredibly hurtful incredibly painful says stranger things and fleabag actor brett gelman is truly baffling to me that people were choosing to be silent that night how what do you mean gelman who's currently on a book tour the reason why people are being silent is because one there are many anti-zionists in the crowd okay and they don't want to be fucking bullied and this is what happens when you don't stay silent as a Jewish director who fucking won an Oscar for his depiction of the Holocaust. Oh my Lord. Duh. I wonder why so many people were silent, but of course that's not what Brett's talking about. Brett being the ultra Zionist monster that he is and an overall dumbass. Okay. He's talking about the pro Israel people who are silent. Yeah. The pro-Israel people were silent because some of them at least had some shame and decency. Okay? Like, a fraction of it. But still, a little bit of shame and a little bit of reading of the room, nonetheless, to not go overboard when Israel at that point had killed 25,000 women and children. What is this? There's a video that circulates that makes it seem like I'm getting paid for all my videos. It's not real. No, this is like a meme. He's making a meme, probably. It's a fake video, a bit. I, I don't want to give any fucking eyeballs to this piece of shit. Okay, unsubbing now. Seriously, considering unsubbing from your stream, keep getting timed out. I'm not being rude or chud, just sharing links you miss. I got timed out for trying to send you a link to the Elon Musk Limon interview. Wanted to hear your takes, to be honest, not being an asshole. Bro, you've been in here for 36 months as a subscriber, okay? You're spamming a fucking link. You're being timed out because, like, obviously I'm trying to cover a fucking story. Like, calm down. We're going to get to that. Duh. We're going to get to it eventually. Calm down. Is that what we're talking about right now? It's probably not even the fucking mods clapping you. You're being timed out by a bot. That's so funny. You're mad at a fucking bot. You're mad at a robot. Okay.
<sighs> Gelman, who is currently on a book tour for his literary debut, The Terrifying Realm of Possible Nearly True Stories, has seen four, four stores cancel signings. According to Gelman's agent, the venue cited security concerns over pro palestinian presidents who have targeted Gelman for his vocal support for Israel. Good. Bitch ass. Oh, I can't believe it. No, why won't venues hold my fucking shitty ass book? Oh, no. What is this? One thing I've noticed is there's a trend of insane self-victimization among white ethnicities, e.g. Jews and over-reporting hate crimes feeling unsafe for no reason, which is in deep contrast to most of the Global South diaspora ethnicities who went violence and trauma, similar or worse than the Holocaust. They tend to minimize or not discuss it. I'm not sure why this behavioral is different, though. Do you have an idea? What do you mean? Like, the if you're talking about people being like, no, worse is not even wrong, by the way. No, worse is not even wrong. They're talking about, like, you know, people in the Congo, like a lot of African genocides that have historically never been covered. That's what they're talking about. Okay. Before you jump on Shinzo Abe redux, they're not minimizing the Holocaust. They're talking about, they're talking about contemporary or historical atrocities that have occurred that Americans are completely oblivious to. But as far as like, um, as far as, uh, as far as self victimization goes, yeah, of course. The reason why, the reason why it happens, but it, and the reason why it's read differently is because Jews are a marginalized group and anti Semitism is very real. However, the waters get muddied when you have, um, People who are saying like, oh, this is an act of anti-Semitism because you're saying you're pro-Palestine. Okay. The ethnic cleansing and genocide of Han people in World War II, that too, that's another one for sure. Or uh, uh, the, the Tamil, uh, I think the, the person was talking about um, uh, Aruna Nau's coverage on, on, the, on the Tamil uh, people. Anyway, others who have made Holocaust uh, films like Jonathan Jakubowicz, who took issue with Glazer's invoking the Nazi regime mass murder of Jews in the 1940s, is a parallel to Israeli war in Gaza. If Israel had existed in 1930s and 40s, see the difference is this. Okay, are you ready for this? If there wasn't real anti-Semitism. Okay, if real anti-Semitism didn't exist, or if Jews were not marginalized, both historically and sometimes in contemporary society, we would treat everything that is going on right now with respect to, like, all of the uh, American people saying, like, oh, I'm being victimized because I saw a free Palestine sign, as though, like, across the board, as though they were saying, oh, the real white genocide is happening in South Africa. But because there are still very real moments of anti-semitism and it is a prevalent issue in the western world in general because it's one of the things that like very clearly indicates that you're most likely a fascist right that a lot of progressive circles give a lot of credence to it and and i i still of course cover anti-semitism as well the issue is that there is valid claims of anti-semitism real claims of anti-semitism which is a devastating and very dangerous bigotry okay but of course that doesn't mean that like uh you know saying from the river to the sea is is a, a valid claim of anti-semitism at all obviously thank you rory v for the 25 gifted subs Mr. Glacier used the memory of the victims of the gas chambers to attack those trying to rescue Holocaust survivors and their relatives from captivity and sexual slavery. It is important to call for peace, and we all do, but in this conflict, disinformation prolongs the war, and his comments unfortunately gave legitimacy to the propaganda networks interested in prolonging the war to demonize the Jewish people. The affair actor Noah Tishby 
Glazier's shocking attempts to blame global issues on his Jewishness and the Holocaust reveals a significant disconnect present among those, some in Hollywood. Rabbi Marvin Heer, a two-time Oscar winner who founded the Simon Wiesenthal Center, says he was appalled not just by Glazier's words, but the reaction to them in the Dolby Theater. Is there anyone in here? Did they get any fucking quotes from someone who is an anti-Zionist Jew? Who thinks this letter is dog shit? What a banger of an article, man. Thank you. Thank you to Variety.com. I couldn't believe it says here. If I didn't know better, I would think that this was a Hamas rally. Where was the audience? People should have gotten up and booed because he left the Academy Awards TV audience thinking this was fine. Yeah, dude. The Academy is Hamas is the is the takeaway here and is a good one. This is why I said Glazer's speech was very brave. The Margillis quote was even more unusual. She pulled up as someone who plays an LGBT person on TV card. Yeah, I remember that was awesome. Yes, yes, yes. There is definitely a lot of background noise. I can't even hear myself think right now. It's just insane levels of brain brokenness. Like you're telling a Jewish person that they're Hamas and also saying that everyone that attended is Hamas because your feelings got hurt. The least these people could have done is stayed silence. Continues its ethnic cleansing campaign. Go out of what they chose to. Denounce a Jewish This is why Glazer's speech was brave Because there are still Many in Hollywood there are still many in Hollywood incapable of feeling shame. The least these people could have done is state silence as Israel continues his ethnic cleansing campaign, but they chose to denounce a Jewish director for speaking out. It's crazy. I thought your collared shirt was fake neck tattoos. Wait, really? A lot of people are uh, saying same? What the fuck? <laughs> That's funny. The co-signees of a broad swath of industry, including actors, ever messing Tova Felsha, executives, da 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 The group statement says, we refute our Jewishness.
Did you get that button up in Japan? No. Obama would be jealous how Biden's rivalry with his ex-boss shapes his presidency. He is so fucking petty. He's petty white, dude. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Where the fuck are we? Where the fuck are we? What are we doing? Uh, okay. Trump defends his bloodbath warning. Hear what political strategists think. We're back to domestic politics now. Nice. You're going to get a lot of shit for that tweet. I don't give a fuck, dude. I get a lot of shit for saying the truth all the time. start with you. The Trump campaign says the bloodbath comment was just about the auto industry. Your reaction? I believe it. Look, you have to look at there are two definitions. There are several definitions of bloodbath, but one of the definitions of the word bloodbath is a period of disastrous loss or reversal. That phrase is used all the time. We're talking about the economy or the stock market. That's the context I truly believe he was using in this case. He's talking to, in Detroit. He's talking about the auto industry, and he was making the case. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm not surprised Democrats took it out of context. He's making the case of of what about China, and if they're going to build huge manufacturing facilities in Mexico and think they're going to send these uh, sell these cars up in America, if he's president, there will be a 100 percent tariff, and they are not going to have the economic result that they're currently getting uh, with the Biden administration. And also, uh, the campaign made the point uh, quite uh, accurately that uh, Joe Biden's uh, electric vehicle mandates are killing the American manufacturing industry. And they're making the case that under the Biden administration, it's not great news for the auto. Yeah, it's crazy that CNN not covering that he said migrants weren't human, literally like in that same speech. I think around 30 seconds prior or 30 seconds after. Okay. He literally said migrants aren't human. And they're like, I can't believe he said it would be a bloodbath for the auto industry, which we will now talk about endlessly. Auto manufacturing industry, and that's an accurate statement. Maria, oh, bless your heart, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, of course I don't buy it. And what Alice is saying reflects every single kind of pretzel that Republicans are bending themselves into trying to dismiss it, spin it, or try to embrace it. But the fact of the matter is, Paula, Donald Trump has a history of this dark, violent, dangerous rhetoric. And we already saw the result of what happens when he uses that rhetoric. Because even though every single Republican that is asked is going to try to spin it and pretend that it really had nothing to do with a real bloodbath, his cult MAGA supporters and followers totally know exactly what he was telling them. They Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, dude, we are so, we're so fucking cooked. Chat is over. Trump president. Trump is going to be president. This is like, this goes along with, uh, wait, the, the, the other tweet that I actually ended up closing for some reason. This conversation, what Trump meant and what Trump actually didn't mean, goes along so perfectly with this piece of news that I didn't cover when it first popped off on March 15th. Hillary Clinton and Hamilton's Lin-Manuel Miranda are reportedly stepping into the spotlight for President Biden's campaign, hosting a Broadway-themed fundraiser together. It's so fucking Jover, dude. It's so Jover. I'm not even... Oh, my God. I mean, come on, bro. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... There are 10 things you need to do. Number one. You register to vote and it's on. You post that Hillary. Yeah, no, you, you deserve it. You deserve to see this. Sign up on your lawn. Number two. Call some undecideds with your crew. Your cousins in Ohio, maybe try and flip them blue. Number three. Watch Hillary examine the terrain. Watch a campaign with the man Tim Kaine. Ah, uh, Tim Kaine in the membrane. Tim, Tim Kaine, Kaine in the membrane. Number oh. four. Hillary makes each decision, looking at the world from a rarefied position. A public servant with tenacity, agility. Mi gente, 
the experience is not a liability. Five. Now no. we all know this is the time when the yep. other side tries to fly low, we go high. We know that our Hillary's no quitter. We watch as our opponent sits and fiddles with his Twitter. Confession time all in a burst. I want to vote the candidate puts our kids first. November 8. Your last chance to participate. It was so cringe. CBS literally lowered the audio and were like, fuck, they were too late to obviously lower the audio. But Rare they literally they they lowered they lowered the audio. Because they were like, maybe we can salvage this. And it's down to the nitty gritty. Three weeks to go. Are, Are you, you ready, ready, New York City? City? Yes, in a world gone berserk. Hillary rolls up her sleeves and goes to work. work. Hey. I have only one overwhelming feeling. Anybody here want to shatter, shatter a glass, glass ceiling? ceiling? Look, Look them in the eye, clear your throat. Clear your throat. Summon, Summon all the time you can devote. Then count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number ten, ten paces, paces vote. Dude, he, he, it goes so hard. I just love his face on this. Like, like, he's like, I did that. He's like, I did that shit. Like, he, he's like, I can't believe it. Like, I went so fucking hard with this. Eight, nine, number 10, paces, both. Like, look at the intensity. Yeah, I, I did counting in my rap. God, it's so sick. Hell yeah. Mi gente. This is your 9-11. No, 9-11 is my 9-11. This is, this is just the best. I don't understand. What are you guys talking about? Like, this was fucking awesome. Demonstrated that on January 6th. And the only thing that Trump said is... Come to the Capitol. It's going to be wild. We have to take back our country. Imagine what will happen when he loses after Trump says things like, it's going to be a bloodbath if I lose. That is dangerous. It's yep. irresponsible. And he should Tell not him, get sis. away with it. And certainly Republicans should not be trying to dismiss it. But even answering questions like this cannot be helpful for Republicans in terms of their own election prospects. No, and this is many in the liberal media would rather focus on this than talk about the how poorly the economy is and how bad things are at the border and how uh, public safety is, uh, is not good in many cities across the country. And, you know, m my dear friend Maria, I just do have to push back on the fact that th what is dangerous is when Democrats take things out of context. He was talking about the auto industry. He wasn't talking about January 6th. And believe me, I have he been. Said our I, country. You and I have. We had, heard it. We have had many conversations. I disagree with everything he had to do with January 6th and questioning the integrity of our election. But in this context, that's not what he was talking but about. But Alice, do you really think that his followers, even, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, what you are saying is what he meant. You know his followers are not going to take it that way. He, as a prospective president, should understand that. And this is where the massive failure is for him and for Republican followers and elected officials who understand just how dangerous that is. Let's bring in our panel. David Frum, staff writer for The Atlantic, CNN contributor Lulu Garcia Navarro, and Jason Osborne, former senior communication strategist for the 2016 Ben, Os uh, ben Carson campaign. Thank you all uh, for being here this morning. Um, David, I'm going to kind of let you uh, go first here. I, uh, the, the weekend sort of back and forth around this no really seemed to center on, you know, a lot of the president's defenders saying, look, he was being very specific. It was about the auto industry. This is all being mischaracterized. Um, I want to just play the whole clip just so that, you know, no one can accuse us of not showing the entirety of what the president said about this. It's a little bit of a longer version than what we just showed. Let's watch it. And then I I'd like your reaction. Watch. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get a I love that they are, like, doing their 
quote unquote due diligence by showing the full context only to like relitigate it over and over again, which makes it so fucking stupid. It makes it so dumb. Like you already diminish the, the importance of the statement. You show the fucking full context and then you still argue over it. And I guess it's because they, I feel like, I feel like the reason why, I feel like the reason why they're doing this is because like, they don't really care about like what this does for Brandon's camp. And I think like Brandon has already pushed the bloodbath narrative anyway. So they, they don't give a shit. Like they think this will be a ratings boost because like triggered conservatives will come in and watch to be like, Oh, you guys are so stupid. So like, I get why CNN does it, but like when Aaron Rupar, who thinks he's like a loyalist Fedayeen for the DNC is doing this, he doesn't realize that he's like playing into exactly what Trump supporters love, which is, Oh, you're so fucking stupid. You wouldn't, you activated my trap card. You're literally fake news media. You're lying about Donald Trump again. There are plenty of instances where Trump fucking says unhinged shit. Elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. What's he doing here? Well, Trump's brain is a little bit like pudding. Things slop around and, and don't cohere into any uh, precise shape. But I, I looked it up. In the past 12 months, past year, uh, former President Trump has threatened violence uh, in one form or another at least five times that I can count um, on his tro social uh, with images of him putting a baseball bat at the head of um, the New York DA. Uh, he's threatened death and destruction if he's not elected. So when if this had come out of the blue, you might say, OK, the pudding brain has gent has spat out something formless um, in the con in the context of saying we're going to blow up the U.S. Mexico free trade agreement and uh, massively raise the price of cars for American consumers. He said something else. But five times this is the this this would be the sixth incident of a call for violence in the past year. So I think it's at that point you get to say. Um, if you're predicting death and destruction if you lose, if you're saying there's going to be bedlam if you lose, if you invite your supporters to go after the New York Attorney General, when you then say, and there will be a bloodbath if I lose, you lose the benefit of the doubt because there's a pattern here that goes back a year. I think one of the things that to me is really interesting about this entire speech was that he started it by lauding the January 6th. And let's show that. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Let's play that and then we're, we're going to pick up where Lulu left off. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. You see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are, is hostages. Genders are like the Twin Towers. And I identify as an airplane. That's <laughs> so stupid. They've been treated terribly. Unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. Criminals who attack police officers on their way into the Capitol. Continue. Precisely. And so this was a violent insurrection. Um, and so what he's doing there is setting the stage. He's starting his campaign rally there by saying, hey, these people didn't actually do what they did. They were patriots. They are, you know, political, politically persecuted. And it sets the stage for this normalization of violence. And so when he uses words like blood, bloodbath, talking about the car industry, already the people who are listening to him are primed to understand that he's really talking about something else. Well, and this is kind of part of it. This is so stupid. He said hostages. Yeah, January Sixers, the political prisoners, free them. My goat, he's right. I'm telling you, dude, he's saying our prison's obsolete. He's saying that America must change its ways, okay? He's a prison abolitionist. First Step Act, anybody? Remember that one? Of it too. I mean, in the lead that. up to January 6th, there were pl there's plenty of clues, right, along the way that this is what he was asking people to do uh, because there was an audience that was hearing him in a certain way. Um, jump in, offer your own, your thoughts. 
the funniest part about this is like dude getting mad at this hold on sorry i'm texting david dave one of chromio i'm gonna have him on the on the broadcast talk about israel palestine um hopefully this week and we're trying to figure out if uh we can have p thug on too that's right my fucking goat a tracks brother no not david from <laughs> yeah i'm texting david from I think uh, old heads remember David Maklowicz is my king, my goat. Love him. No, not Patrick, but David. Don't even joke, please. What do you mean? Why would I joke? I've I I've had him on a bunch of times. I've I've been friends with him for like ten years at this point, almost. As a 34-year-old Chromio super fan, it pisses me off. Your pals with Dave One. Wait, what? Yes. And yes, Dave One is Atrax brother. That's also true. David is incredibly handsome, incredibly stylish, and also incredibly thoughtful, empathetic. One of the goats of all time. One of the greatest of all time of all time. Okay? He does not age. He's the man. Thoughts here if, if you think these folks are on the wrong track, but I'm interested in that piece of it as well. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and defend, you know, like some of the other Republicans that have been on here defend. I know what he was referring to. I would say that, like, this isn't unusual for Trump to kind of go off cuff. Oh, the, th the point I was going to make was this, okay? Donald Trump says unhinged shit all the time. If he wanted to say, it's going to be a bloodbath if you don't elect me because, like, we're going to go out and kill people in the streets, he would just say that. It's so stupid. Like, what the fuck are we doing? And probably next week he will. So... Why are you just, like, doing it when he's not saying it? You know what I mean? It's very, very, very dumb. Uh, you know, the excuse that the teleprompter was, was moving around and shaking around. I mean, what Trump does at these things is he kind of, he gauges the audience reaction. And I think if he's focusing on certain parts of the audience and he's starting to lose them, they're not understanding what he's saying. They're waiting for that red meat thing. He throws something out there. It's careless and it's reckless, right? But I don't necessarily feel that, you know, I, there's a half truth to everything that he says, enough so that it reinvigorates what he's thinking is the base, right? And you're hoping that at some point he switches to a general election strategy, but in the back of his mind, he's, he feels like these rallies are kind of boring if he focuses on policy discussions, et cetera. So the January 6th thing, I, I have honestly no idea what that's about. Um, I can't. Do you really think Trump doesn't always phrase things in a way where he has plausible deniability? No. no. What are you talking about? He just said in the same speech that migrants are not human. Like, I don't think he was trying to do, like, a 5D chess move here. He's not that smart, dude. You guys are making him, like, out to be a much smarter individual than he actually is. <laughs> and even if he is smart, he's just, like, he doesn't give a shit. Your daughter's away. Give her a treat. I already did. Sit here and say that that's a great thing to start talking about. He's already got those folks in his camp. So move on and try and add voters that you lost in 2020 and then the millions of, of new voters that he needs to get in order to defeat Biden. Former Vice President Mike Pence joins us in person in studio. I like that in that entire conversation, they like their takeaway is the silliest shit once again.
But he's literally here. I'm a t man. Come on, you know he's he knows how to read the room better than anyone. Couldn't this be his way of pouring a bit of gas on the fire? He knows how to manipulate so well, guys. Donald Trump will, in the upcoming months, absolutely make further inferences to political violence. I promise you. And they will be directly, and those those inferences will be direct. They will not be while he's talking about fucking cars, okay, and EVs, and China. They will be directly within the context of January 6th. Okay? The reason why the stand back and stand by doesn't make sense to, ma uh, to make a comparison on here is because that was a direct answer to what do you do about the Proud Boys? This was just him talking about, like, this is the usage of the term, it's going to be a bloodbath, while talking about the fucking car manufacturing. That's the difference. He does do that as well when he's like locked into a corner or some shit like that. Yeah, Chad is forgetting that in 2016, Trump was the, oh, he's just straight up saying it candid that motherfuckers never had to hide shit. Yeah. Stop making excuses for Trump. I just want Trump to win because I love him. Okay. I know. I love him. I want to keep running three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour and Trump will make sure that I, uh, you know, keep running ad breaks at the top of the hour, every hour. And Trump will also make sure that you can still subscribe. He told me for $5 or for free. I think you're being a bit derivative and oversimplifying. This it doesn't matter what he said. It matters what his followers heard and they heard fucking bloodbath. Guys, I don't know if you heard, but he also said Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. And he said that they're dumping their insane asylum uh, people and prisoners into the country. They're invading the country and they're not actual humans. That's what he said. Those were direct. Okay. Like, way, 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 what the fuck is happening? Why are people being so obsessed with being fair to Trump? Because this is not about being fair to Trump. It's not about being fair to Trump at all. It's about what the media attention is being placed upon, and I suspect it's being placed upon the bloodbath narrative because liberals agree with the immigrant rapist narrative now. So they can't criticize Trump too hard on the immigrant rapist shit because Joe Biden is also pushing a right-wing immigration uh, bill. That's it. That's my point, okay? And guess what? Is the song gaslighting liberals today over the bloodbath comments? Yes, dude. I'm gaslighting liberals by saying he's talking about the fucking auto manufacturers. And that the fact that mainstream media hyper focusing on the bloodbath thing is a relitigation of the exact 2016 cycle that caused a lot of animosity for a shit ton of people that love this battle. They love being like, oh, you took them out of context, you fucking silly liberals. You guys are so stupid. Bro, you're doing the pancakes waffles meme. No Democrat thinks it's poggers that Trump called migrants animals. No. But. Because Donald Trump, they talked about the vermin thing when Donald Trump was talking about how, uh, you know, he believes that immigrants are vermin, right? And how Hitlerian that is. And then what did, Don, what did Joe Biden do? Like a month after that made its way through the media cycle, Joe Biden went forward with an incredibly right-wing pro-Trump border immigration bill, border which features $22 billion dollars the border patrol that the border patrol union actually originally pushed for as well. Only in only for Donald Trump to say, no, actually we don't want this bill. Again, take you so long to get to your actual argument. Then say that not an hour ago, making excuses of it. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I did start off this conversation with saying just that. 
Okay. That's actually, you might not have heard it, but I did start with specifically that point. Okay. And that was my major focus over the coverage. Now we're just like kind of reacting to liberals being silly about it. Okay. What do you want me to do? If I covered the news in the way that, uh, it, it, hoping that like, uh, you know, I'm giving you all of my takes in that very moment that you come into the chat, I would just keep repeating the same news story and my take on the same news story for fucking perpet in perpetuity for the entire fucking broadcast. I would just be repeating the same fucking talking point over and over again, nonstop. When instead, I should be repeating that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I forgot to run it, so I'm running it now. This guy's in a row somehow watching a Twitch stream. Yeah. I'm seeing so many people ready to blame the left if Trump wins. Yeah. It don't matter. Good morning to you and happy St. Patrick's Day. Good morning, Margaret. Good to be with you. There's a lot to get to with you today, but I want to begin um, with some remarks Mr. Trump made yesterday at a rally in Ohio. He walked onto the stage to a song recorded by a choir of prisoners facing charges for their role in the violence of January the 6th. Take a listen. You see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to... Focus on this. This part is nuts. I mean, this part is, I think, not as insane as the immigration narrative, immigration rhetoric, but it is pretty funny. Work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are, I know in the past you've said Mr. Trump's reckless words endangered you and your family on that day. What do you think when you hear him refer to those people facing charges as hostages and patriots? Well, I think it's very unfortunate at a time that there are American hostages being held in Gaza uh, that uh, the president or any other leaders would refer to people that are moving through our, our uh, justice system uh, as hostages. And uh, it's just... It's just unacceptable. I, I was there on January 6th. I, I have no doubt in my mind, Margaret, that, that some people were caught up in the moment and that entered the Capitol. And, uh, uh, and they're certainly entitled to due process of law for uh, any nonviolent activities that day. But uh, He's the victim of clip chimping. Yeah, they keep clip chimping on our boy, dude. I'm fucking pro-Trump now. I take it back. I was going for the RFK Unity ticket with Jesse the Body Ventura, but now, honestly, maybe I'm in support of our boy Trump, our big, beautiful boy Trump. They're clip chimping him, and I, as a victim of clip chimping, the assaults that. on police officers, ultimately an environment that that claimed lives, uh, is something that uh, uh, I think was tragic uh, that day, and I'll, I'll never diminish it. And the legal system is processing these individuals through and, and giving them trials. Um, I wonder what you think, though, about Mr. Trump and whether the public needs to hear and see some of the evidence in regard to the federal charges related to his alleged role in jail. You guys want to know what the craziest thing would be? I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on now, okay? What if there's an October surprise? And Netanyahu facilitates a uh, ceasefire specifically, specifically after uh, Trump's election. Yeah, I should play the fucking song. Hold on. Hold on. You're right. What is the, what's the song? What, what's, isn't it called Paris?
1980, representatives of Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign made a secret deal with Iranian leaders to delay the release of American hostages until after the election between Ronald Reagan and President Jimmy Carter, the incumbent, happened. The detention of 66 Americans in Iran held hostage since November 4, 1979, was one of the leading national issues during 1980, and the alleged goal was to thwart the Carter regime from pulling off an October surprise. Reagan won the election, and on this day of his inauguration, minutes after he concluded his 20-minute inaugural address, the Islamic Republic of Iran announced the release of hostages. What if Benjamin Netanyahu, who has routinely disrespected Joseph Robinette Biden, actually has a secondary October surprise ready to go for Donald Trump. What if Benjamin Netanyahu will facilitate a permanent ceasefire deal only after Trump assumes office, leading to the Fourth Reich regime of a permanent fascist, white supremacist American government coordinating with the Judeo-supremacist, ethno-nationalist, apartheid regime of Israel, backed by Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay, that's it. I'm still confused. What did Mike Pence really do to betray Trump? What was he expected to do? Not American here? Um, delay the uh, the author the certification of the votes the the certification of the ballots. It's just like stupid institutional uh, uh, bullshit. It it would not have it would not really have changed the outcome. It was just more so a formality. But uh, the Trump administration thinks that as long as like uh, Michael Pence did not certify the the uh, results and like sign a paper basically that they could go in and change um the electors like it's it's somewhat of a convoluted plot that relies heavily on like uh symbolic things that the government does uh you know Mike Pence doesn't certify the ballots uh and then i guess like when they hold it back when they hold the ballots back because he didn't certify the ballots then uh there are false electors uh, they go back and like they they change out the electors in in some states with um, with fake electors that will then go and and uh, vote for Donald Trump instead, despite the fact that like um, despite the fact that Donald Trump didn't win in those states, and so the electors are supposed to vote for whoever won, right? Some of those false electors did go to prison <laughs> for this plot. And and I guess they thought that it would uh, it would somehow make people forget the election that took place, and they would just like sit back and take it, and maybe with the hopes that like the Supreme Court would like defend the Trump uh, second term or something, which you know maybe. January 6th. Do you think that needs to happen before Election Day? Well, I, look, I, I think the American people live through that moment. Uh, I and uh, my family and my team lived through it at the Capitol that day. I think we're, most Americans know what happened. I, uh, you know, and, as I've said before. Uh, yeah, he's a bitch for not, uh, he's a bitch for certifying. Um, you know, I, I truly do believe that uh, um, the, the judgment about the president's conduct that day should have been left to the American people. I know it's been brought into a criminal trial now, uh, and, uh, and we have cases around the country that have been brought related to that, notably in, in Georgia. But uh, at the end of the yeah, day... Yeah, by woke, libtard judges, Michael. My uncle's HVAC business is in a state of disarray because he's in prison. 
Michael, I knew you were cloned out by Hollywood libtards that love the vaccine after you got a vaccine-related injury and they swapped your body with a clone, but I did not know your clone would go to such dire depths. Yeah, I think the American people know what happened that day. And I, I they said do. the people that... We do! We legacy Americans, as Tucker Carlson calls it, know exactly what happened on that day. We were there to execute you. We were there to try you under admiralty court, sir, and find you treasonous and put your head through the guillotine, the guillotine. Why do you think Pence didn't go with it? He knew it wouldn't work, so he basically didn't have nothing to lose by playing along? No, because what do you mean? He didn't want to go to prison, dog. That's it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, he was like, hello, this is stupid. And also, I don't want to go to prison. That's it. That's literally the only reason. The people that ransacked the Capitol need to be held to the fullest account of the law. And uh, I believe that they are. But uh... Chatters, him not doing this gets him a book deal and also uh, allows him to save face for all of the genuine awfulness of the Trump administration that he played a significant role in. Him doing that would have landed him in fucking prison. He would have been the fall guy. All of a sudden, you're an accessory to a crime and you don't have the fucking crazy amount of support that trump has who's gonna be who's gonna be in michael pence's corner after that he's the coke guy anyway he's the guy that the coke brother wanted in the administration to like ensure that they were still getting the wishes of the the republican donors uh addressed and heard and and followed through on he doesn't have any real support his responsibility for the administration is not to like Donald Trump, but to his wealthy benefactors. Uh, the judgment about the president's efforts that day, I think, can be left to the American people. But uh, but look, I, you know, I, I said last week that, uh, you know, after a lot of prayer and reflection, I've come to the conclusion that I've. Uh, I, I won't be endorsing Donald Trump this year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, look, I'm very proud of the record of our administration, Margaret. It was a record. Yeah, see, he's a fucking freak. Record that left America more prosperous and and uh, more secure. Man, thank fuck I stopped watching Hamas Sanabi. Bro, he put the two S's while calling me a Hamas. Like, you could have just put one S, dude. Destiny is the goat compared to this little weasel, he says. <laughs> Hamasanabi. With two S's. Bro, for such a massive platform, Elon bought it for pennies. The amount of direct and indirect influence he... Oh, man. Of course. My, my smartest, my smartest long-term supporters. What is the mod comment? Context warning, planting bomb in Valo. Unbanned, watch for dumb boomer memes and jokes. Sorry, my bad. I want to see the chat again. Sad. Oh, we were planning... Oh, no, he was a gaming watcher. We can't leave this one. We can't lose this one. I'm not banning him. He was watching me play Valorant, guys. I know he said Allahu Akbar. So, obviously, we understand exactly why he left this community post-October 7 and, and became a Mr. Bornatello uh, supporter <laughs> with a 2013 account. <laughs> seems like uh, seems like Hamas and Abi. Uh, writing Allahu Akbar when uh, uh, planting a bomb in Vallo, uh, supporting Mr. Bornatello. 
seeing a lot of seeing a, seeing one consistent narrative here that kind of ties everything together. You don't even game anymore? Yeah, because we lost all these guys because we kept banning them. At this point, my fiance and I have been calling each other every serious version of Mr. Boroncini is so fun in the house. He was saying that shit in 2022 before our actual October 7th. Yes, my point is he was an Islamophobe back then. And he still is an Islamophobe now. That's my point. That's why he loves Mr. Broccolini. He was like, I need it. I need someone to, to give me that. I need someone to tell me my fears are just. <laughs> and, uh, and our liberties and the sanctity of life stronger than ever before in my lifetime. But you've said um, Mr. Trump's walked away from conservative principles. Well, I, I do. I, I said it during my presidential campaign. The president and I have profound differences. And many Don't assault broccolini. I love broccolini. People think it's just over January 6th. Um, and, and frankly, the, the fact that the president continues to insist that that I had the right to overturn the election that day is mm -hmm. a, a fundamental difference. But I want to be clear that uh, you know, I, I've forgiven the president in my heart for what happened that day. I, as a Christian, I'm required to do that. I've, I've prayed for him in that regard. Okay, I can't watch the fucking idiot any further. Israel continuing Israel plans to invade Rafah despite U.S. warning on civilian assault toll. assault on the southern Gaza city of Rafah, which could come at any moment in an effort to finally, finally defeat Hamas. More, more videos of the brave IDF uh, troops shooting at walls. Hamas. But Palestinian civilians could get caught in this crossfire, and the UN says hundreds of thousands are on. This is this is like <laughs> this is all we see, baby. <laughs> Israeli occupying force wall banging. On the brink of starvation right now, the U.S. and other allies of Israel are warning of a possible disaster. But Israeli leaders say they have a plan. Chris Livesey is in Tel Aviv with more on that part of the story. Chris, a lot of people want to hear the plan. Good morning to you. Good morning. Rafa, <clears throat> excuse me, is seen as a final stronghold of Hamas fighters, which is why Netanyahu wants to invade. But it's also where about one and a half million Palestinians are taking refuge. And that's why the U.S. and the international community are warning against it. But so far, that's not stopping Israel. Last night, Prime Minister... Yeah, no shit, dude. Their goal was to literally just kill as many Palestinians and then fucking forcibly deport the rest of them and present it as a peaceful transition. And, and, you know, where are the rest of the Palestinians? Well, in Rafah, where they, fo uh, where they pushed them into. So, duh. You know, their goal is to kill as many Palestinian civilians as possible and then purge the rest of them from the Gaza Strip. So, yeah, you got to go where the Palestinians are if you want to kill the Palestinian children. Where are they? Well, they're in Rafah. The prime minister told his cabinet, quote, we will operate in Rafah. This will take several weeks and it will happen. Now, he didn't clarify if he meant the assault would last for weeks or would begin in weeks. Both can be true. Before launching the invasion, he's vowed to move civilians to safe zones. Think about that. Moving more than a million people in an active war zone. It's expected that Israel will also want to improve aid distribution before launching another major offensive. So yeah, yeah. Feed them so that their bellies are full as we fucking nuke them. Nice. Okay. Our aid deliveries by land and by air have proved inadequate. Last week, aid arrived by sea for the first time in this war. And as we speak, an American ship is on its way to Gaza to set up a pier for distributing. Rafa was the safe zone, by the way. Distributing more. However, it's estimated to take weeks before that pier is operational. And bear in mind, these are projections. The White House has indicated it still hasn't seen Israel's plan to evacuate and invade Rafah and insists it will not get behind a plan that doesn't account for the safety of civilians. Gail? Mm. Chris, before you leave, listen, Netanyahu has a lot of incoming. That does not seem to deter him. Why does he seem so willing to ignore the warnings against the invasion? 
Well, you know, it's not just Netanyahu, even a moderate rival in his coalition. Benny Gantz says you can't put out only most of a fire. You have to douse it all. And that's really how Israel sees what's left of Hamas. <laughs> yeah, the moderate opposition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the moderate Israeli opposition to Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Satan Yahu. It's crazy. So moderate. Moss and the fire it started on October 7. And keep in mind, the U.S. is insisting on a two state. Not even like 99% Hitler versus 100% Hitler. It's like 100% Hitler versus 101% Hitler. Solution after the war. But Israel's made it clear there is no way it will tolerate a Palestinian state so long as Hamas still has the power to stand. Gail? Yeah, great. Speaking of which, Israel forces are attacking Gaza's Al Shifa hospital again. Anifa. Black smoke billows. Caked in dust, survivors emerge. We were just going to get some flowers. Oh, uh, I was going to say, by the way, uh, as I called it, Biden is up by one in this poll before they added any context saying the thing about the border actually bumps him down. Here's the next one. Democrat Joe Biden supports a bipartisan border security and immigration bill that is endorsed by Border Patrol Union. Republican Donald Trump opposes the bipartisan border security and immigration bill that is endorsed by the Border Patrol Union. Having heard this, let me ask you again. If you're if the election for president today uh, were to be today, who would you vote for? 45% Joe Biden, 46% Donald Trump, 9% not sure. Here's the next question. Democrat Joe Biden supports reducing inflation by increasing taxes on corporations and individuals who make more than $400,000 a year. Republican Donald Trump supports reducing inflation by cutting Medicare and Social Security. Having heard this, let me ask you again. If the election for president were today, who would you vote for? Joe Biden, 51%. Donald Trump, 39%. 10% not sure. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder which narrative we should go with. <clears throat> I wonder which narrative is uh, more is a more popular narrative. Hmm. Much to consider, much to think of. Yeah, I'm going to move right on the immigration thing anyway. Biden is up by 1% of this poll before they added the context, so saying the thing about border actually bumps him down, by the way. Q7 seems like one of those things a functioning campaign will be shouting from the rooftops. How about we do the border thing and on top of that say that like we're going to have an inconsistent policy on Israel in their baby murder campaign where we say uh, don't do so much baby murder please but also here are the weapons to do the baby murder with. Oh man. Oh there's going to be a two state right? Uh, oh shit. Benjamin Netanyahu came out and said no two state again. Uh, maybe don't uh, invade Rafa where all the babies are. Oh shit. Benjamin Netanyahu came out and said he's going to invade Rafa and kill all the babies. Oh, fuck that. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a winning campaign. Let's go. That right there, winning campaign, folks. God, they did it again. These guys are so fucking brilliant, dude. Fuck, I love these guys. But this boy says. <laughs> these nightmarish scenes captured by Al Jazeera as Israeli forces once again attack Al Shifa Hospital and the surrounding area. It's shameful, this woman cries out. Israel. Yeah, why are they? Huh? They must be. They must be saying it's shameful what Hamas is doing to us, right? That's what. That's what I've been uh, told this entire time said it killed a senior Hamas operative hiding at the hospital and that attacks on soldiers had been launched from the compound. Palestinians say the man was the head of police and had been helping coordinate aid deliveries in Gaza. An old Jazeera. I 100% believe the Palestinians on this. Israel's goals from storming Al Shifa Hospital and killing Al Mabhuh. The expert in Palestinian resistance affairs, Hani Al Dali, speaks to Al Mayadeen about the occupation's goals from storming Al Shifa Hospital. Uh, and assassinating martyr Fayek al-Mabhuh. 
Once again, Israel occupation forces have stormed the Al Shifa medical complex in Gaza after fabricating yet another hoax. Uh, Hani Al Dali, an expert on Palestinian resistance affairs, detailed to Al Mayadeen on Monday what the occupation's goals from the assassination of martyr Faik Al Mahouh, Mabhouh, and storming Al Shifa were. Al Dali revealed that uh, Faik Al Mabhouh was the brother of Al Qassam Brigade's martyr Mahmoud Al Mabhouh and had been incarcerated for 15 years in Israeli prisons. Al Mabhu came from a family who's offered countless sacrifices to Palestine and the Al Aqsa Mosque. Reportedly, Al Mabhu had been conducting his work publicly within the Ministry of Interior and National Security, which is a civilian apparatus as per law. Al Dali clarified that the Al Shifa Hospital includes a specialized department for the ministry itself, which manages and safeguards the hospital, which is chartered within the law. So the thing is, uh, Israeli defenders have been doing this. I'm not entirely certain on this dude's background. Okay? But. Israeli defenders have been doing this thing where they will point to like the Palestinian interior security, which is like the civilian police force, basically. Um, and, and consistently claiming that, uh, they are actually the bad guys is, uh, they're actually the bad guys. They're actually also Hamas because see, they have guns, which they have an inter like a legal right to have guns and are recognized by international law. Part of the reason why the aid drops are so chaotic is because there is no working interior security at the moment. Do you understand? Faik Mabhu, the Hamas commander killed by IDF troops at Al Shiva Hospital this morning, is the brother of uh, Mahmoud Mabhu, who was allegedly assassinated by the <laughs> allegedly assassinated by the Mossad in Dubai in 2010. Liberals become police abolitionists only when it's in the service of genocide. Now, of course, a high-profile target is hiding in the hospital, so we have to blow, blow up the hospital. Completely unacceptable. But uh, that's besides the point. Zira journalist Ishmael Al-Ghul was amongst those detained. <laughs> Local journalists working with us have been filming inside Al-Shifa over the past few days. Israeli forces took it over last year, alleging a Hamas command and control center lay underneath it. No evidence of that has been produced. And after the soldiers withdrew, doctors... So make no mistake. Make no mistake. Okay? High-profile assassination because they're Hamas, already a ridiculous fucking reason to blow up a hospital. Okay? I, I want to stand. Uh, I, I want to stand by that. I, I want to make sure that there is no uncertainty there. Okay. Beyond that, however, the 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 secondary thing that I think makes it even further uh, unacceptable is profiling every single person that has any kind of security, uh, any kind of security personnel that is a part of the civil governance, like the Palestinian police force, as Hamas additionally fucked up. Specifically because, like I mentioned, a big part of the problems with aid drops and, and aid convoys in general, the reason why it turns into chaos when Israel's not shooting at them, is because there is no security to, to, uh, to, to maintain... Uh, and and like stop the crowds from overrunning the the uh, the trucks and whatnot. Began treating patients once more. Amongst them, 16-year-old Rafiq and his younger sister Rafif. Both have had amputations after being hit by an Israeli strike that killed their siblings and their mother. At the um, yani. My mother was more than just a mother. She was a sister, a friend. She was everything. I wish she could come back because when I lost her, I lost my life. Carrying the pain of his grief, whilst his frail body rides in agony. <laughs> Rafiq is also suffering from malnutrition. But doctors don't have the right medicine or food to help him recover. 
I feel an unnatural pain because the shrapnel that hit me in the back tore the muscles, so they had to give me a colostomy bag. When I need a painkiller and they can't provide it, I curl up and bite my teeth until I sleep and feel the pain gradually fading away. Somehow Rafif still manages to smile, but she knows they both need to find a way out of Gaza to access the treatment they need. Please get us out of here, because this place is no longer Gaza. It's no longer a land to live or breathe in. We don't know what's happened to the siblings after today's raid. The Israeli military released its own footage from inside Al Shifa. The defense minister said soldiers had turned the hospital into a death trap for terrorists and that 20 gunmen had been killed. Facing international criticism, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today vowed to continue the war, even as a delegation arrived in Qatar for talks on a ceasefire. How do we define victory? We define it as a, the destruction of Hamas's military and governing capability. We define it also as the return of the hostages, which we're working right now, because this is a war of uh, civilization against barbarism. Bro, I mean, he hasn't stopped doing that Nazi shit, like, literally. Yeah, it is a war between civilization and barbarism. You're just on the side of barbarism, dumbass. Like, who, who is the fucking barber? Who's the barbarian in this situation? The fucking young child that you have blown to uh, bits alongside their family? Or the dude doing the blowing up? Disgusting. But many Israelis are growing increasingly frustrated with Netanyahu's government for not having reached an agreement already. Are you in favor of a deal, even if it means stopping the war and leaving Hamas still in Gaza? They do horrible things to them. They, they are not legitimate. They are uh, terrorists. But first thing, our moral the duty is to bring back home the women, the young men, the old women, everyone. This is number one. Yeah, bro. I mean, there it is. That's the... <laughs> there, someone said, there's the nuance. It, oh, it's just so nuanced. We'll never know. Yeah, even from a self-preservation standpoint, it makes no fucking sense. It makes no sense. Like from a from the if you if you care about the hostages, it still doesn't fucking make sense. Like Benjamin Netanyahu's actions are like completely antithetical to the to the protection and and uh, survival of the Israeli hostages. These are the, you know, they're not the left, but these are the liberals, okay? And not even the liberals. These are just the people that have just family members that are in uh, Gaza right now. A byproduct of, of uh, as I've mentioned before, the Hannibal Directive. An expected outcome if you're familiar with Israel's uh, ways of waging war and conducting operations. You may not know the answer to this question, but do you think BB is continuing this war primarily because he's a fucking genocidal monster because he doesn't want to go to prison for his corruption charges? I think both. I think both. Benjamin Netanyahu has a long career, a long track record of being a genocidal monster. It's a it's win-win for him. He gets to he gets to avoid prison. as a deeply unpopular leader completely fallen out of favor with a shrinking coalition of support. And also, he wants his legacy to be 
uh, the guy who did the population transfer in Gaza. You know what I mean? Like he, he it's self preservation. Uh, it's self preservation all the way down. He doesn't want fucking that pussy ass liberal Benny Gantz to be the guy who does the final solution to the Palestinians in Gaza. You know what I mean? He wants to be the guy who did it. And right now, continuing to do it also helps uh, him stay in power. In Gaza, starvation is spreading at unprecedented speed. Today, a warning from international monitors that famine is likely to occur within the next two months and that more and more people will die from hunger. You can see the desperation at this soup kitchen in northern Gaza, where the situation is most dire. Israel is accused of using access to aid as a weapon of war. There are no vegetables and the prices are very expensive here. Even if we have carrots or potatoes or eggplants, the prices are so high in northern Gaza. Sometimes obtaining them requires risking our lives. Israel denies blocking humanitarian access, but aid agencies, even its closest international allies, have criticized Israel's refusal to open more routes into Gaza. Some aid has now reached the north. Famine can be averted, but only if much, much more is allowed through. Well, Sekunda joins me now from Tel Aviv. Sekunda. Well, Jackie, this report on levels of hunger in Gaza makes for very grim reading. I mean, according to it, around two-thirds of people in northern Gaza are regularly going day, days and nights without eating. And the food that is available for sale in northern Gaza has massively, massively increased. In yeah, remember Mr. Borelli said, what famine in Gaza? That's what he was talking about. He hit him with the fake news when talking about the horrifying conditions on the ground. Piece of shit. In price, Israel says it insists that it's not to blame, but that's not really how pretty much the entire rest of the world sees it. And you can sense the frustration even in the United States. Uh, the national security advisor there, Jake Sullivan, has been talking after a conversation between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu. He said that a, a major ground offensive in Rafah, as Netanyahu has vowed to carry out, would be a major mistake that would deepen uh, the, the, the anarchy there is in Gaza. And he's also said that uh, Netanyahu has agreed to uh, send a team to Washington to discuss any operation in Rafah. But what we've not yet seen from America is any willingness, at least in public certainly, to, to leverage the huge amount of military aid it gives Israel. Uh, there is some talk about the possibility of a slowing down of ammunition sales. Of course, many people around the world would like to see America go much, much further than that. As for the ceasefire talks, they are now expected to get underway in Qatar, but Israeli officials here are briefing the media that they're not up optimistic. Sekunda, thanks very much. Well, joining me now from Jerusalem is Israeli Knesset member Boaz Bismuth, who is a member of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party. <coughs> thanks very much for joining us this evening. Half the population in Gaza is facing catastrophic levels of hunger. Famine is imminent in the north. I just wonder how concerned you are about that situation. Good evening and thank you very much for inviting me. I listened. I, lo I looked at the... Uh, uh, report and I listen carefully and I only let's talk about facts. Uh, 17,000 trucks have entered Gaza, humanitarian, humanitarian aid. Uh, you know the planes that are coming with humanitarian aid from the air, now from the sea with the American idea of the port in the, that of course Israel said yes of course and the trucks that I've said by myself uh, entering Gaza. So what does it mean that Israel on the contrary from day one of this uh, war in Gaza, but I have to remind you also why it started because of the massacre of the 7th of October, always said, and this is how we do the war, with, of course, respecting international law and applying, okay. of course, humanitarian aid. This was done from day one. But I would like to ask you a question. Can you talk to me? Immediately. October 7, 
Israel's been following international law. Okay, Yoav Galan said we're shutting off aid. They gave no food for the first couple of months. What was that about? If you guys were respecting it, like, what happened to respecting it in the beginning? And also, what about all of the fucking humanitarian aid drugs that you don't let in right now, deliberately? Can you do, I have any questions concerning starvation in among our hostages? We're not I'm even afraid, visiting well, it uh, under the 34, but this, exactly I believe that this that uh, point, concerns you less. Yes. The, it, the, we have to spoken many, many times and covered the situation of the hostages, spoken mm -hmm. to their families throughout this since October. I asked you a question about whether you have any concern about people starving to death in Gaza. <clears throat> are, so are my you answer was about by you? the fact I that do, northern I do believe, Gaza I do believe, is facing I do believe, famine. Jackie, that Jackie, if I do believe that if my country, if our country, if Israel respects humanitarian aid, and I can show you the numbers, I mean, again, I can say it again, 17,000 trucks from the beginning of the war, what does it mean? It means that we're at war against terrorists, not against population. And when you mentioned before Israel operating in Rafa, I mean, Israel will do so only after evacuating population. And this is what we've done. All, Your all the suggestion places we, is... All the places we operate. I'm sorry yeah. to cut across you, but uh, but I, I'm still yes. waiting to hear you, whether you have a level of concern about huge numbers of people potentially starving to death. But, yeah, but on the idea you... that Israel is allowing sufficient aid in, that is simply not accepted. In today's report, it says aid crossings continue to be hindered by crossing closures, access denials, onerous vetting procedures. The charity Oxfam says Israeli authorities are not only failing to facilitate the aid, but are... Here's the thing. You know what they do? I've heard this from people that are there. Like working in and uh, bringing in humanitarian aid. An entire truck has medical supplies, right? And in the truck full of medical supplies, you have scissors to cut the gauze with. No, the entire truck is not allowed in. Because scissors... is a weapon. So I'm being able to eat during this shit just shows how constantly he listens to deals with this shit. I mean, yeah. I'm also, I'm hungry. Yeah. Medical scissors, that's a weapon. Entire fucking truck uh, is not allowed. Yep. Actively hindering it. Unfortunately, I mean, the reality is exactly the opposite. On the contrary, if you would come to Israel, you would see so many, for example, families of hostages who feel so frustrated as many Israelis, where you know, for example, that medicine did not arrive to our hostages. Red Cross did not see our hostages, yet we respect humanitarian aid, and this is exactly what is happening. Now, it's not because you said it four times that it is true. I can answer it four, five, six times and tell you that, again, 17,000 trucks have entered. Aid is coming but from the air, from the sea, and wherever is needed. The EU, so Israel the is EU foreign Israel policy is chief... The EU yeah. foreign policy chief says Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war. He can say whatever he wants, but this is so untrue. Look, I want to tell you one thing. I mean, one thing that, I mean, for me is, how would I say, unbearable. You know, we were attacked on the 7th of October. We never wanted this war. On the contrary, we were giving humanitarian aid to Gaza even before the 7th of October. Those so people... It's so strange. What was happening on uh, the day before October 7? Like, I wonder if they're like, what was the living conditions of the Palestinians on October 6, maybe? Because it's crazy. Now, you might have noticed. Now, I, I won't say this about Channel 4 because they've done a really good job since day one like probably one of the best in in western media in like the traditional outlets but the narrative has changed maybe not for channel four they've been pretty fucking aggro from the jump however however the one thing i do not hear from even channel four anybody else often is what was going on before October 7? 
Like, in your mind, in all honesty, can you please tell me why you think that these guys had nothing going on and they just, like, randomly decided to fucking attack Israel? Liberal Zionists use the same talking points as the Likud members is crazy. Yes, because it's still Zionism. And Zionism is fascism. It's basically saying liberal Zionist basically means like liberal fascist. Okay. It's a laughable concept. Well, it's the level of starvation let, let only, the people please, in Gaza. Finish, it's the level question. of starvation of people in Gaza. You, you, please respect I, my I answer. To, people people I that like were to understand are is the level of starvation give, people are facing acceptable? Because of what happened. All the responsibility the of, of what is happening in Gaza right now, madam, is due to Hamas. You know that this war Hamas. and salvation that you call that, of course, we're not responsible and we shall, and we do the, our best in order to make sure that population is not suffering. And this is why we allow humanitarian aid and we're doing it from day one. Yet, okay. this war and President Biden and President Biden said it himself. This war can be over in exactly one minute and 30 seconds if Hamas stops the war. Gives up, of course, surrender, of surrender, ago, leaves I'm Gaza sorry to keep and bring back you. our hostages, I'm sorry to and the war you, is over. If I may, a couple of months ago you spoke, I saw an interview you did talking about how much support you had from across the West. The truth is that support is waning, isn't it? You have the EU senior diplomat accusing you of starving people as a weapon of war. Israel's greatest friend, the US Senate leader Chuck Schumer, saying Israel should hold elections to replace your leader, Mr Netanyahu. You're losing friends, aren't you? So I will ask you a question in return. I mean, between Israel, yes, a democratic country that has 134 hostages and Hamas on the other side, would you tell me that you're on the side of Hamas? Are you on the side of terrorists? Would you be on the side of Al-Qaeda, yes. Boko Haram, uh, ISIS? Because this is how I interpreted your question. No. Matt I'll say it. Yeah, between Israel and Hamas, Hamas are better. Objectively. Yeah. Not even a question. It, why would you why would you present yourself as as um why would you present this dynamic between I Israel and Hamas while Israel's doing whatever the fuck they're doing so far lesser evil baby 100% lesser evil go ahead get mad at me all day every day Hamas is the lesser evil vote. A vote for Hamas is a vote for lesser evil. It's called harm reduction. Mouth noises out of control, brother. Suck my dick, dude. The only mouth noises I want to hear is your dick around my... Your dick. My dick around your fucking mouth. Adam, we're on a war right now, which is the most justified war in the world. We have 134 hostages over there. Now, before being a member of parliament, I used to be a journalist myself. I covered wars. I covered wars in Iraq. I covered wars in Afghanistan. I covered wars also in Europe, in Kosovo. Believe me, the fact that you had civilians never prevented uh, Europeans or Americans to make war. Not in Mosul, not in Rafah, not in Kosovo itself. So with all due respect, Israel has also the right to defend itself, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are intending no. on doing obtaining our two objectives. We shall bring back our hostages, and we shall take, and we shall Boris evacuate, Bismuth and going to we have to end clean there. Gaza from terrorists. Thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Thank you very Over much. You. For right now in Qatar, a country playing a lot of double games these days, ceasefire negotiations set to resume between Israel and Hamas. As Israel still fights to defend itself, from the brutal military attack on their country when more than 1,200 Israelis were murdered. And still, Hamas holds more than 100 hostage. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu joins us live from Jerusalem with an update. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this, season this fucking piece of shit is literally constantly on Fox News, bro. Yo. His Fox News appearances have gone up by a lot. You know his ass is cooked right now. You know he sees the pressure. So he's just... How many times has he been on fucking... How many times? He talked about having the 
support of the majority of the Israeli people for his policies, including. See, listen. Liberals, liberal Zionism making a big comeback. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Liberal Zionism making a big comeback. Wow. Explosive, explosive. Sullivan hits back at Netanyahu. Kind of an interesting irony, which you have is a prime minister speaking on American television about his concerns about Americans interfering in Israeli politics. Yesterday, he talked about having the support of the majority of the Israeli people for his policies, including going into Rafa. Is there more that the administration, the U.S. administration, needs to do to speak to the Israeli people directly so that they don't support uh, this idea of going into Rafa now? Well, first of all, inherent in the question is a, is a kind of a, an interesting irony, which is you have the prime minister speaking on American television about his concerns about Americans interfering in Israeli politics, and then your question is, should Americans be speaking into Israeli politics, which, in fact, um, we don't do nearly as much as they speak into ours. Uh, but that's not a constructive answer to your question. It's just a, an observation. Yesterday, he talked about having... I mean, he's right. But of course. This is again, liberal Zionism, baby. No, no, he's not losing his job. No, you need to understand. This is because the, the, uh, the unconditional support And full throating, the full dick riding of Israel by the Democratic administration is taking a sidestep, and they're using the Netanyahu thing as a as an off ramp, a pressure valve. That's it. It took them five months and thirty thousand plus dead Palestinians to go from bear hugging. Netanyahu to saying Netanyahu is actually the singularly responsible evil for the atrocities. That is where we're at now. And Netanyahu sees that and is basically turning around and trying to hit the fucking propaganda points as hard as he can on Fox News. The difference is, however, beyond the... Um, beyond the posturing and beyond the psychotic zealots, there's a big chunk of the Republican voter base that also thinks a ceasefire should happen. He's a white man, so it's not anti-Semitic to point out that Israel plays a big role in U.S. domestic politics. It would be anti-Semitic if a hijabi woman of someone of color generally said that. I mean, yeah, that, that is the reception. Even though no matter who says it, it is obviously fucking prescient and, and correct to say that. These calls for a ceasefire at this point are extortion. Uh, the other, uh, on, on behalf of Hamas, but you've, you're, you've been in the press talking a lot about the offensive in Rafa. How does that play? Bro, every day that they fucking keep blowing up Palestinian lives and Palestinian children, and they try to fucking posture as like we're doing it against Hamas is another day when people are going to be like, okay, well, I don't think the Hamas guys are the bad guys anymore. I've been saying this and I don't think Israel understands it because yes, the terrorism designation carries a long, a, a, you know, a tremendous amount of weight with it. Right. But you can't do way larger terror way larger terror than the people who you are calling a terrorist in defense against the terror act. Because ultimately, ultimately, no matter what happens, like people are gonna be like, no dude, like what the fuck are you talking about? Well, the other guys are obviously not, it can't be that bad because I see what you're doing. Play into getting Hamas to a place where they're prepared to negotiate on your terms. Look, the only thing that gets Hamas 
to uh, release the hostages is continued military pressure. That's what enabled us to bring out already half of the hostages. That's what will enable us to get the remaining hostages. At the same time, there has to be pressure. It's such a funny take because, like, no, it's the exact opposite, actually. The only time hostages were released was when there was a ceasefire and you released hostages from Israeli prisons. Pressure from Qatar that has, wields enormous influence on, uh, on Hamas, and they should be pressed to press them. So uh, the, the fact that we're... Uh, going to destroy the remaining Hamas terrorist battalions in Rafah uh, does, is, is both important for uh, eradicating the Hamas rule, but also important for getting the hostages out. Uh, these are complementary goals. They're not contradictory goals. How many Hamas fighters, terrorists remain in Rafah? What kind of force are we talking about? Uh, we've, Pete, we've destroyed about uh, uh, 19 of uh, Hamas 24 terrorist battalions. So there are about four in uh, Rafah. We have to destroy them. When people tell us, don't go into Rafah, that's like telling the allies, uh, listen, don't go into Berlin, <laughs> leave, leave a quarter of the Nazi army intact. You know, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, if we leave a quarter of the uh, Hamas uh, uh, fighting uh, uh, terrorist uh, battalions in place, they'll regroup, reconquer Gaza, and uh, in fact, perpetrate once again what they vow to do, which is to repeat the October 7th massacre over and over and over again. That's not going to happen. So we need total victory over Hamas. We're uh, within reach. We should do it. Uh, we're going to do it while we uh, enable the civilian population in Rafah to leave, as we've done up to now. But we have to finish the job. We need total victory. There's no substitute for total victory. There's no doubt this is a fight that Israel needs to finish, uh, considering what occurred. Yet you already hear in our media and from our leadership, we're going to get to that in a moment, renewed calls again for a two-state solution. Uh, what's your view on these calls for Palestinians? Pelosi saying Bibi's interfering in our elections as it's well? It's curious to me to see Netanyahu talk the way he does when he tried to interfere in American elections. But that's another subject. When he that's really interesting that Nancy Pelosi's chirping too. Last time someone said this, Last time someone said this, Nancy Pelosi was very mad. Very, very mad. But of course, the person that said it was a hijabi woman. So here's uh, Trump repeating what the, what the hijabi woman said. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. Help, yeah. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. Help, yeah. Or she didn't need to wait till June to drop came to the Congress, criticized the president of the United States, barged into our country, into our, in our elections. But again, let's put that aside and let's just say as we go forward, uh, uh, what is wrong with advocating for elections in a democracy? And you know, you mentioned the polls. The democracy line does not matter. America's not a democracy. This Dream is not a democracy. Plenty of things are not a democracy. There's a three-minute outbreak at the top of the hour. And if I were to ask democratically whether you guys would like to see those ads or not, obviously the majority would say, of course I don't want to see the ads. But of course, as it stands, the only way that you can refuse to see those ads, avoid seeing those ads, is by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's the only way you can fight back, folks. Here's the three minute break now. Winter Rose, thank you for the 10 community gift. The subs allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. You see that thousands and thousands of people are in the streets even last night mm -hmm. in, in, in Israel. But again, it's a democracy and people have different views and they express them and that's a beautiful thing. But for him to say, what does that say if he won't, won't even say that as the war run, run, winds down, the people of Israel should speak. Uh, it's curious to me to see Netanyahu. 
uh, it's curious to me to see Netanyahu talk the way he does when he tried to interfere in American elections. But that's another subject. When he came to the Congress, criticized the president of the United States, barged into our country, into our in our elections. But again, let's put that aside and let's just say as we go forward. Democrats are the most cock people on the planet. Because, like, you might think she's talking about Biden right now. And in some ways, she is talking about Biden right now. What Netanyahu is doing against Biden. But actually, what she's talking about is when Netanyahu went and delivered a speech to Republican Congress when Barack Obama was the president. Many elections have passed since then, and yet the Democrats are still cocked to Israel. Hmm. Interesting. A real fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me situation from the Democrats. Why he gave a speech to Congress, do you remember? I think it was the Iran deal, Iran denuclearization deal. It was very butthurt. So why is it that Nancy Pelosi punished many years later Inhan Omar for saying that the uh, APAC lobby has a profound, profound influence on American politics, which was objectively correct? Hmm. State. Well, it's not only it's not only my view; it's the uh, view of the vast majority of Israelis who believe that at this time to have a Palestinian state would be basically a formula for uh, creating a, a platform, the greatest reward for terrorism in history, and it would create a platform yeah. for, uh, uh, for attacking Israel. In fact, Hamas had a de facto Palestinian state in Gaza. And what did they use it for? To massacre Israelis and the worst savagery uh, that uh, was meted on Jews since the Holocaust. So, you know, we just had a vote in the Knesset the other day. Ninety-nine against nine of the Knesset, our parliament members, voted against the attempt to impose on Israel uh, a, mm. uh, a Palestinian state. They, see, you have to say, when people say, oh, well, you know, this is... Yeah, exactly. And we're killing, we're killing the nine people, actually. We've, we've arrested them, and they're going to permanent jail for voting against that. We're going to kill them. <laughs> Netanyahu and his fringe, uh, you know... In He's like, that's how we do democracy. The fringe elements in his coalition? No, it's not. <laughs> it's the vast majority of the Israeli public that understands that a Palestinian state, the way that is being envisioned, would be an enormous danger to Israel's future. So that's why they're united and resisting. I do love him saying, like, we are democratically genociding um palestinians as though like to the americans i mean maybe fox news watchers that means something but like americans are not going to look at that and be like oh yeah israel's definitely the good guys because as long as they're doing it democratically that's fine it's like okay well the nazis were democratically doing the holocaust dude the fuck if you polled the nazi population at the time you know minus obviously the victims they would they were probably pretty on board with it you know this doesn't matter it's just as stupid as being like, well, it's illegal. It's not the law. Thing this, uh, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm proud to lead this policy. But when I'm being criticized by various people in the United States as obstructing peace because of that, well, number one, we're not obstructing peace. We're ensuring that we don't have a catastrophic uh, suicidal move. And second, it's not just me. It's the vast majority of Israelis. So if you want to take up the issue with the vast majority of Israelis, say so. Say you're against the vast majority of the people of Israel. And don't try to... Uh yeah, 
I am me. I am. I'm against the vast majority of Israeli people, uh, the Israeli population's take on further genocide in Gaza. Yes. Also, what I personally don't understand is like, this is Fox News, buddy. Fuck, you mean the majority of the interests of the Israeli population? I'm sorry. I didn't realize Fox News was, was being broadcast out of fucking Tel Aviv. What, what do you mean? You're talking to Americans, okay? It would be chill if we, you know, had that kind of energy, but we don't because we're pussies. Our politicians are massive pushovers and totally cucked. Uh, personalize it because it's not a personal thing. I'm leading the policy that most Israelis think is essential for our survival and our future. Let's talk about that criticism, Mr. Prime Minister. Here's Chuck Schumer slamming you on the Senate floor on Thursday. A new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making oh. process. Oh, by the way, ironic because the majority view is to, yeah, fucking kill, uh, keep killing, uh, uh, you know, keep killing people in Gaza. Here's another majority view, almost as popular as continuing the genocide, getting Benjamin Netanyahu out of office. I wonder if he's going to talk about the Democratic majority's wishes when it comes to him no longer being in office and being in prison, for example, because I thought he cared about the Israeli democracy. Guess what? Let's, let's hear from the majority Israeli view on that. About the future of Israel. People on all sides of this war are turning away from a two-state solution, including Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe in his heart he has his highest priority is as is the security of Israel. However, I also believe Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way. Mr. Prime Minister, he says you've got to go. Joe Biden says he liked the speech and also said your policies are hurting Israel more than helping Israel. Your response to Chuck Schumer and the president. I think Schumer's statements are wholly inappropriate. I think we're, we're not a banana republic. The people of Israel will choose when they'll have elections, who they elect, and it's not. Why doesn't CNN play this all the time? CNN should literally play the Fox News clip of Benjamin Netanyahu being like, yeah, fuck Chuck Schumer and fuck Biden. Like, literally nonstop. They should play this so that the liberals can comprehend what the fuck's going on. Not something that will be foisted upon us that you know it's wrong to try to replace the elected uh, leaders of a sister democracy and a staunch american ally at any time but especially during the time of war just imagine that after 9 11 uh and when you're in the midst of fighting al-qaeda uh, and winning uh, people will say oh well the right thing people some israeli would say oh the right thing to do is now to have new elections in america or have uh, uh, President Bush resigned. It's inappropriate. It shouldn't have been said. It's wrong. As far as the, uh, my considerations. Yeah, except Bush was like, he should have been replaced, but he was incredibly popular after 9-11. You had reverse Bush numbers after October 7, big dog. The fuck? Bush was like 94% approval rating after 9-11. You had like a 94% disapproval rating after October 7. They're not for my personal survival. They are for the survival of the Jewish state. And that requires pursuing the war. It's something that support that I, uh, my government enjoys the support of the overwhelming majority of Israelis. And let me tell you something. Not only the majority of Israelis, but the majority of the American people. 82% support Israel consistently over the five months of the war uh, against uh, Hamas and not Hamas. So, you know, I don't know why President, why uh, uh, Senator Schumer made the, those statements. Uh, I think the only thing that we should be focused on is changing the regime in Gaza, 
bringing down the terrorist regime of Hamas and not the duly elected government of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the right policy. Well, as you know, Donald Trump is the front runner on the Republican side. He was recently asked about what Joe Biden has said on this topic. Here's what he said. And all of a sudden, he dumped Israel. That's what he's doing. He dumped Israel. Well, he's not walking. Dude, you know what's really funny about this? It's like, Republicans love talking about America first. And, like, how we're fucking so proud of our nation. Like, they, they love talking about how, like, they love talking about how patriotic they are. And, like, this is just a broadcast of, uh, of, of them getting cucked to an unpopular leader in a foreign country. Look, don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. Netanyahu, sir. Don't worry. Our big, beautiful orange boy loves you. And says that Biden is not sufficiently pro you. Please, sir. Please, sir. Crazy. Away, but what would be in light well, of? Yeah, uh, yeah, but in light of you say he is walking away. I mean, he just said essentially that uh, BB Netanyahu should take a walk. Do you feel like you're losing support, Mr. Prime Minister? Well, I hope not. First of all, let me say that I appreciate President Trump's uh, tremendous support for Israel uh, when he was president. He uh, recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. He moved the American embassy there. Uh, he recognized our sovereignty in the Golan Heights. He got out of the disastrous Iran uh, nuclear deal. And he also... Yeah, he's literally, like, one of the biggest reasons why October 7 happened, <laughs> like, straight up. Well, uh, together, we worked and brokered uh, the historic uh, Abraham Accords, which brought peace with four Arab states. Uh, equally, I appreciate the fact that... Uh, yep, there it is, by the way, the Abraham Accords. Right from the start of the war, President... Yeah, maybe now people will fucking understand what I mean when I get, like, really mad at Joe Biden for not, um, for, for, bro, shut the fuck up, shut up, shut up, shut up, stop fucking complaining, you goddamn boomer. You Twitch users are really weird. Please explain why spamming a caricature of a Muslim and spamming Arabic random phrases is weird. Shut the fuck up, boomer. You don't know. You don't know what the fuck you're looking at. So it's like making you angry, okay? You're getting mad at fucking emotes. Shut the fuck up! God, you haven't stopped fucking complaining. Like, this is what he's mad at. We're over here fucking going through, like, the genocide of the Palestinian population, and he's mad at a bunch of fucking white boys spamming mashallah or inshallah with a fucking people baba. Goddamn dumbass, old ass, fucking stupid ass boomers on this fucking platform. Jesus Christ. There's a difference. They're not being fucking racist, jackass. The fuck do you think? Please don't ban them. Just explain to them. I feel bad. Us boomers don't understand us. There's a difference between making fun of Arabs and Muslims in general versus like using Muslim or uh, Islamic imagery. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Holy shit. So mad. And it, it's like, I was going to let it go because I was like, all right, he's like definitely a boomer getting like really upset and really agitated for no fucking reason. But he hasn't stopped fucking adding other chatters in the chat. He literally was like trying to duke it out with a bunch of fucking 22 year olds in the chat. Like you cannot use this emote that I cannot understand. And I'm only seeing Allahu Akbar is what he keeps saying. No one fucking said Allahu Akbar in the fucking chat. But even if they did, shut, what the fuck do you think is going on here? Whose community do you think is they're a part of? Like, do you think I fucking allow Islamophobia in here? Dumb fuck. You're disrespecting me when you fucking say shit like that.
Oh my God. Biden uh, stood with Israel, came here, called Hamas sheer evil, uh, sent carrier groups, aircraft carrier groups to the region, and sent us ammunition. So I hope that support will continue. But I'll tell you one thing. Look, I, you know, I, I, I can tell you. Why should that continue? You're a fucking fake friend. You're a bitch. You're bitch made. God, but so is Biden. God, he's such a bitch. I hate Biden so much. Fuck. And I said this to President Biden early on. Uh, uh, we had our discussions. We had some differences on whether we should enter Gaza, how we should enter Gaza, and so on. And I said... Like, it'd be like if a trans boomer came in here and got mad if we had like a hyper pop uh, emote and people were spamming it while talking about hearts of iron or some shit. Like, context, okay? There's not an Islamophobic community, jackass. Fuck, man. The, uh, I said the truth. I said, look, if we have to go it alone, we'll go it alone. But I also know that we're not alone, that the vast majority of Americans support Israel, uh, and for a good reason, because they understand that our war is your war. Our victory is your victory, that we're fighting the same people who want who chant death to America and death to Israel. They want to see our civilization brought down, our liberties brought down, our values brought down. And that's why I think we'll continue to enjoy the support of the vast majority of the American public. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, thank you for joining us on Fox and Friends Weekend. Godspeed in your fight, sir. Thank you. Godspeed thank in you. your fight against Palestinian children, sir. And joining us for more. God, I fucking hate. Oh, my God. They're all crying about Schumer. More on all of this. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso is a Republican on the Foreign Relations Committee. It's great to have you here. Thanks. I have to say I was a little shocked that one of your colleagues, but on the Democratic side, Chris Van Hollen. You stupid motherfucker. You're from Wyoming. Why the fuck? Why the fuck? Dude, America is a, is a nation that... America is a lost nation, okay? Not to be Jesse Lee Peterson. Imagine being from fucking Wyoming and criticizing a the, the highest Jewish held office, okay? Like the dude, a Jewish guy from New York who has been a dick writer of APAC in perpetuity being like, I, I'm a liberal Zionist. I think then Yahoo must go. And you're some... Cow fucking Wyoming asshole being like, no, that guy fucking sucks. He hates Israel. Actually said that he doesn't think UNRWA was, actually, that anyone from, from UNRWA was helping Hamas. Watch him here. When it comes to UN provided humanitarian assistance, like humanitarian mm -hmm. assistance through UNRWA, there's been no evidence of diversion to Hamas. And this was, he said this very, very clearly. Uh, I have tried to tell my colleagues who keep coming back from meeting okay. with Netanyahu government officials, spreading this, this, yes. this lie, this myth about diversion from UNRWA. Now, there right. may be diversion yeah. in other places, but not from UNRWA. This was a surprise to me because I mm -hmm. didn't think that there was anybody who disbelieved mm -hmm. what we have been hearing about UNRWA for months. Yeah, of course you don't have anybody who disbelieves it because you're surrounded by fucking jackasses. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody who believed the UNRWA shit. Actually, that's not true. I know a lot. I mean, I watch a lot of media, so I have heard it a lot. But, you know, I guess I don't, I'm not in the same echo chamber. And that's the UN Relief Fund that money has been going <laughs> to them from years to Hamas. And this is money, they have blood on their hands. There's no question, and not a single dime should go to them into the future. Dude, how about some dimes going into fucking Wyoming, you stupid fuck? What the fuck? What connection do you have to the state of Israel? How many Jews are in Wyoming? Not let alone, like, not all Jews are obviously fucking Zionists, but like, I gotta look this up. Like, what, what is this guy doing? What is this guy doing? There's more cows than Jewish people in Wyoming. This motherfucker's over here like, like, what the fuck? Wyoming doesn't even have internet. They don't even know Israel exists, dog. What the fuck are you talking about? The one group of evangelical churches in Wyoming, they don't even know that Israel exists.
Because they don't have internet. They don't have access to internet. Bro, I found a website called Jewish Wyoming. Like, th that's perfect. There you go. Do they even have like a large, do they even have like a large Christian Zionist population? Like I, I do, like what the fuck? Wyoming, if I'm Wyoming, okay, I'm mad at Israel every day. Why? For one key reason. Because Israel is significantly more important to the United States as a state than Wyoming is. Okay. Wyoming Jewish history. Wait, what? I mean, but this is the Jewish virtual library chat. They have, they have this for everything. What is this from the mid 1950s to the mid 1970s? Okay. This is like a tangent, but I, I am actually kind of interested about like Jewish existence in Wyoming. Like, I, I like this is how I find out about all this, like dumb nonsensical shit sometimes by going, Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to look this up. How many cows are in Wyoming? Wyoming has 2.15 cattle per person. Like across the board. Worry about the cows, big dog. There is currently no full-time rabbi in the state. Yeah, worry about that. Once again, though, it's not even like I just want to. I just want to make one thing very clear. Okay, obviously, support for Israel is not about like. So this is this is the right wing framing on the issue. Support for Israel has nothing to do with supporting Jews. Okay. But it is funny because it fails the right-wing framing test as well. Worry about the cows. Worry about not even your population, like across the board, the entirety of the population. Worry about your fucking cows, okay? What the fuck? The United Nations has failed in its mission, and we've seen that now repeatedly. This money has gone to build the, the tunnels and the terror network that we have with Hamas. You just showed the video of all of those tunnels, hundreds and hundreds of miles of tunnels, more than the New York subway system. Where'd the money come from? United States, United Nations, funneling it to this organization. I'm starting a synagogue in Wyoming just to show your ass? Bro, don't do it. It's probably a dangerous prospect. Remember... Pro-Israel evangelical Christians are not pro-Jew, okay? <laughs> like, they're going to be like, oh, that, there, there goes the neighborhood. Them Satanists are in here with their synagogues. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Building their dang tunnels under Wyoming. <laughs> Trump, any Jewish person that votes for Democrats hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves because Israel will be destroyed. And guys like Schumer see that. And to him, it's votes. I think it's votes more than anything else because he's always pro-Israel. He's very anti-Israel now. What changed, Schumer? <laughs> Yeah, evangelicals think fucking Catholics are pagan, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> Jews are not spared from that equation. They're like, what the fuck are you doing here? Get your ass to Israel right now. 
boy. <laughs> we got a rapture to uphold. Every moment you're standing on American borders is a moment that you're not bringing about the rapture. Get the fuck back to your country. What power? <laughs> yeah, I support your right to exist, just not here, brother. I support your right to exist, just not here. Only in Israel and only for a short period of time because once the rapture happens, your pagan ass is going to hell and burning in eternal damnation unless you convert to evangelical Christianity right now. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, did you try to write Hamas Piker and then accidentally wrote Hassam Piker? Bro, the Islamophobes are so stupid. Like, obviously they are. That's why they're Islamophobes. But, like, anti Semitic Piker? <laughs> sure, brother. Evangelicals always support foreign nations. I like that that guy in my head canon, that guy thinks I believe these things and I'm not making a mockery of evangelicals who do. So he is coming to the recognition that everything I said is anti Semitic because evangelical Christians are anti Semitic. In his head canon, in my head canon, that is what's going on. But yeah, like I said, Islamophobia is already stupid, right? Dude, deadass, let's talk about it. If you think that, I'm not Christian, dog. What are you? Wait, you want to talk about evangelical Christianity and anti-Semitism that is captured within evangelical Christianity with their uh, conditional allegiance to the state of Israel? Because this could be a really great learning moment for you. Naperville, Andy. When they want to talk right away, is sus. He's a cow and you provoked him? Yeah. He's one of the Wyoming... <laughs> Mm, maybe maybe he'll understand. Hold on. Mm, mm. Let's see. I think that worked. I cursed at him. God from fault. Thank you for the 12 community gift of subs. I wonder why 12. That's always interesting. When someone gives like not 10, a 10 spot, but instead like fuck 12. Why'd this guy stop talking? What happened? What happened, Chicago kids? What the fuck is this? What is this PFP? No, nah, man, I think your viewpoints on situations have some anti-Semitic thing to them. I feel like with the Ethan situation, you didn't care about his religious uh, point of view. No diss, Hassan, just my opinion. Wait, you think Ethan is religious? Bro, it is literally anti-Semitic for you to think that Ethan Klein is a religious person, okay?
Now I wonder, is that is that yay? I can't tell what is uh, on his PFP. So if you're not Christian, what are you? Because I'm trying to find out. Like this is what your you, this is what your PFP is, Chicago kids. Explain to me. I came off too strong. That's my fault. But I don't think you like or care about Jewish people. I'd love to talk to you about it. Papa Gut has a good analyst. You think I give a fuck about what some dude named Papa Gut has to say about my my opinion on Jewish people? The fuck? Who the fuck is Papa Gut? You laugh, but this is the guy you're making fun of? Okay, stop. Okay, stop, Chad. Come on. Ethan is religious, by the way. Analysis revoked by gut. I will pay to watch you debate this chatter over guest. I... I don't know what the fuck a Papa Gut is, but let me tell you, you still haven't addressed this. Is this yay? Like, who is this? What's happening on your... What's happening on your fucking... PFP man, I just I genuinely want to understand. I it, it not even a gotcha. Okay. But whoever whoever Big Papa is, he's definitely not sending his best to this community, okay? <laughs> God damn. I don't care about clout, man. Atheist and yet it's yay. I like yay, but I don't but don't fuck with his music. Wait. You're a Kanye West fan who came in here to talk to me, said I was anti-Semitic, and said that, like, one, Ethan Klein is a religious Jew, okay? And, and still have, like, a yay PFP, like a relatively new yay PFP. Dude, this is awesome. You are, you're a fantastic individual. You might not recognize it, but you are basically proving exactly what I was saying. Like your existence, your very existence and everything you, that you have said thus far. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with his music, man. I just like the shit he says about what Jews. <laughs> what the fuck? He said, I don't even like Ye's music. I like his old music. I don't like his new music, but I have his PFP right now because. Because honestly. <laughs> because honestly, a lot of what he's said so far re in recent years is pretty good. He's saying you're anti-Semitic and he likes it. That came out wrong. You cool with just talking about it? I'll explain it better on voice. Are you cool with that? Dude, I want to I want to fucking talk to this guy. This is such a, this is, you gotta be a troll, but I need to hear what he has to say. This is guest star beta on. I mean, come on. It, it is bait, but like, this is so obviously bait, dog. Yeah. <sighs> No bait. I don't care. You seemingly don't care about a lot. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm biting it. I'm biting the fucking... I'm biting the bullet here. All right. There you go. Sent your... Sent the guest star to you. Okay? I don't think you guys understand... Um, if he does something that's fucked up, I don't get banned. He gets banned for it. I hope you understand that. These guys are going to go Baba Booey for some disgusting freak after wasting your time for 45 minutes. Wait, Baba Booey? God, you guys are so old.
okay, why the fuck is he not? He's like, please have me on. I invited him for the guest star, and he's not responding. I don't know what's happening here. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. When you pointed out they get banned, you might have scared them. Yeah. I, I'm okay. I'm still waiting. Uh, I you have until four forty to respond to this invite, and then we move on. Hey, I'm trying. No bait. I don't care. Hey, I'm trying. The only Papa Gut I care about is, yes, the gut. Greg Gut. Oh, chatters. Chatters. You, you have to stop fucking freaking out on my behalf, okay? Every time I... And you have to stop sending me, like, fucking Papa Gut links either. I don't care to know who this person is. I am not going to look at their stuff. I don't know why you guys are giving him more clout when it's like obviously a drama farmer weirdo. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why you guys. Um, refresh your ass about discord. No motherfucker. We're doing it on. We're doing it on here. You cool with discord? No dumb fuck. I invited you on guest star. Obviously, I'm not going to fucking invite you via Discord where I could be held liable for whatever dumb shit you fucking say. Put your fucking phone number down for Twitch, the platform, so you can fucking be on the goddamn guest star. You think I'm some fucking idiot? No, of course. If you want to talk to me, you got to do it through the appropriate channels. I'm directly fucking giving you... I'm directly giving you an opportunity to fucking make your goddamn case on the platform in the safest way possible. No, I'm not fucking cool with Discord. The fuck? Yeah, dude, let's be friends on Discord so you can send me dick pics later. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, can you do it? Can we do it in your house? Send me address. Yeah. Can you please come? Can I please come over to your house and like let's have this conversation in your house? Oh my god. One more minute. You have one more minute until you are banished into the nether realm. Give me a few. You cool with that? My fault, man. I just forgot my shit, dude. Uh, to be fair, most regular chatters really don't know what guest star even is still. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, can I get your phone number? Can I get your phone number, please? Like, it would be cool if I could get your phone number. Give me a few. I'm cool with that. No, I'm not fucking. I've given you a few. You've already taken up six valuable minutes since 1634 when you first asked me to be on voice and I gave you the opportunity. You asked for it. I gave you the fucking opportunity. What do you not, not remember your phone number or are you trying to fucking find a fake Google phone number that you can add on? 
Yeah, no. Um, I gave you six minutes already. All right, this is your last. Mo this is your last opportunity. Nah, man, multiple accounts. We know, dumb fuck. We know you have multiple accounts. We know you're in here with a sock account. You have to do it right now. He's a dipshit Zionist and a Kanye cuck. I mean, yeah, he is. All right. We're done. Moving on. Twitch announcing guest star feature. You can stream with your friends. Isn't that cool? Hassan using guest star. Get the fuck in here, you random chatter. Talk shit to my face. I think... I, I like having these conversations. Okay? And I think that... It's better face-to-face. -face. He li literally instigated, openly said he wanted to talk to me directly. I gave him the opportunity to do so. And instead of fucking taking on that opportunity, he just, like, dropped it. He cast it aside, flubbed it, fumbled. I'm sorry, but I'm always going to take the opportunity for a Naperville-ass chatter who is a fan of Kanye West who claims I'm anti-Semitic. Okay. That's crazy. That, that's a that's a beautiful moment. Like a chatter who is a Kanye West fan, Stan, his PFP is literally Kanye West, contemporary Kanye West, who says Ethan is a religious Jew and that I don't respect his religious Jewish perspective and therefore I'm anti-Semitic as a Kanye West fan, like You know, as a Kanye West fan, who's a fan of the man, not the music, by the way. All right. All right, we'll uh, we'll move on from this. Elon Musk, oh, come on, finally. Can we watch real Papa's videos of palate cleanser? No. Welcome to the Don Lemon Show, everyone. We're still here. In a minute, I'm going to bring you my conversation with Elon Musk, the one that everyone is talking about. But first, let me tell you a bit about the show. Contrary to what you might have heard. No, we, I don't no, care. Um, listen, we are here as part of the launch of a news interview show that is going to be on X.com. Uh, it's coming as a media industry, as you know, is going through a whole lot of changes. Yeah. X has also been affected by that. Where do you see X.com's role in the future of news and journalism, Elon? Well, I, I think the, I see the, the X as uh, it's already the number one source of news uh, in the world. So it is number one, yeah, uh, the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real-time events, is uh, on the X platform, formerly Twitter. Um, there's, there's nothing even close to real-time news. So um, we also want to expand upon that, um, and we've, we have done so with uh, long-form content. So instead of just doing what you call tweets, you can now do long-form posts. You can post an entire essay. In fact, you can now uh, put an entire book, post an entire book. To the you, want me to, you want me to start off with the... Uh... Tweeting and drug use, this is where it goes off the hinges. Listen, I'm not asking you anything that anyone else hasn't asked you about um, your controversial stuff that you tweet. You post a lot of controversial stuff. Is that Bro, this is the ugliest watermark I've ever done graced my eyes on, okay? I've never seen such a ugly ass. Consider it's going off the too. Like, uh, what is this? It's like, it's like. Venn diagrams like what the fuck what what did what are they doing and the color scheme is like awful too holy shit um well I, I guess I do enjoy using the platform I mean I do call um the X platform the the PvP or player versus player uh platform um so in video games there's a uh, player versus like environment um where you're not playing against other people um and then there's PvP which is like hardcore you're actually playing against other people and uh but that's blowing off scene for you I'm such a nerd. Uh, PvP, like playing against other people. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is to some degree, not always. I mean, obviously I use it for, uh, to post jokes, to post, uh, you know, sometimes trivia, uh, sometimes things that are of great importance. Uh, so you do a lot of it at night, like late at night. So when you're doing this, are you, are you sober when you do it? Like, <laughs> Almost always, are you yes. under the influence of anything? Uh, no, I don't, I don't drink, I don't really, no, I, no. 
So you got no drink, no smoke, no nothing. I mean, you smoke pot with Rogan. I had one puff. Yeah. I think anyone who smokes pot can tell I don't have to smoke pot. But you've had. Do you drink and drive? Admitted that you've had, you have a ketamine prescription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that for? Well, I mean, it's pretty private to ask somebody about a medical prescription, you know. Um, but uh, it's, I think it's, it's something I'd say, like, uh, th there are times when I have. Um... Dude, of course. Of course. Megaphonics. Can you slow it down by one tick? Elon talks in hurried phrases, and it's hard to understand. Of course, when we have fucking Elon prominently faced, Megaphonics has to be like, I want to savor this moment. I want to savor this fucking moment because I'm sorry. I'm going to fucking bust the nut and I want to be able to take all, uh, take it all in. It's sort of a, I don't know, like a, like a negative chemical state in my, in my brain. I uh, like depression, I guess, you know, it's, or, or, or like depression that's not linked to any negative views. Um, and, and, and then uh, ketamine is helpful for uh, getting, getting one outside, out of a negative frame of mind. Well, listen, so I, 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 in fact, I generally, obviously I'm not a doctor, but I would say uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to the doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. Listen, I, I think that um, ketamine uh, and drug therapy is uh, increasingly becoming more. In Can you believe that Megaphonics sold his Tesla out of everyone he sold his Tesla? Damn. Bro, they're calling you a faker in here, dude. Are you going to take that? You sold your Tesla? What the fuck? You're Mr. Ride or Die. In the mainstream. Yeah. Do you think that you're doing it under a doctor's care, right? Yeah, yeah. Literally a prescription from an actual, a real doctor, not like, you know. Yeah. But do you, uh, do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. You use too much ketamine. By the way, I think like the fact that he's prodding on the ketamine use is pretty annoying. I... My controversial opinion on this is that, like, it's none of one, it's none of your fucking business. And two, ketamine does have uses, it's like relatively experimental, um, especially for people with like uh, serious uh, mental health problems. And I think that. I do think. I do think that, like, especially if it's, like, doctor-administered, it's, like, uh, come on. I, I mean, I hate him, and I do think that he's, like, probably, you know, I suspect he might be even doing more than he's supposed to be. But overall, like, this part of the interview is, like, the, the part that he got the most mad at, Elon did, but it's also, like, the least significant aspect of it. I mean, you can't really get worked up. So I have a lot of work. So I'm, I'm typically putting in like, you know, 16 hour days. That's normal for me. And it's, it's, it's rare for me to even take off a weekend day. So I don't really have like, you know, a situation. Yeah, we know you're working real hard, bro. Motherfucker, we can see you posting tweets all day long. We know your ass ain't working. The fuck do you mean? The biggest lie ever told by bosses is that they're working super hard. Okay. Like. The, the Venn diagram of people who were yelling at me about streaming being a hard job because they misunderstood what I was saying. And, and Elon Musk works really hard is a circle. Okay? Straight up. For sure, I can be not mentally acute for an extended period of time. Like, I can't, I can't really get wasted because I can't get my work done. So how often do you take it? Um... Well, it's, it'd be like a, a small amount once every other week or something like that. But there's, I mean, there's not on the bottle where it says take this dose this many times a week or whatever. If it's yeah, not actually, there's a dose. I, I, it's, there, there are several weeks will go by where I don't use it. You don't use it. Yeah, I think it's just, like I said, I think the, the what if I kind of is if you if you like literally like a chemical state in your brain that you can't you can't just think yourself out of, then uh, ketamine can ha is helpful for getting you out of a depressive mind state. You suffer from depression or you have a depressive mind state? And I asked you as someone who has suffered from depression. I wouldn't say that I, I, I wouldn't say that I have like a, a case of like extended depression. Um, it's just once in a while I get into a, ne a negative sort of chemical mind state. Once in a while, it's not a not a common thing. Um, but once in a while, this happens. Where do you think that comes from? I think it's just genetic, basically. You think it's just genetic history? I think so. Um, yeah, I and mean, some people are just wired. I think grilling him about his fucking prescribed drug use is crazy. <laughs> like.
you're just relying on the broader public not knowing enough about ketamine for it to be for it to come across as controversial is fucked up i i do hate elon musk as you guys know it's not a secret but this is like one issue where it's like weird that he's just like prodding wired to be happy all the time uh some are unfortunately wired to be sad all the time um and in my case uh i'm, you know, I'm generally pretty pretty positive and optimistic uh but once in a while uh i don't know what happens to some uh like I said, I think it's just chemical tides to your brain once in a while. It's like a brain storm. Yeah. Do you ever... It's also really funny because, like, Elon Musk has to come up with, like, a super, uh, like, super cool reason as to why he's, uh, you know, being treated with ketamine therapy for his clinical depression. It's like, yeah, it's because my mind is like a storm. You don't understand it. Your mind is not like a storm, but my mind is like one. And that's why I need it to tame what goes on in there. Sometimes when I'm sitting by myself, my thoughts, they scare me. Worry that this may get in the way of your government contracts and clearances and also no. and Wall Street as well. Well, from a standpoint of Wall Street, uh, what matters is uh, execution. You know, not uh, really. Are you for Elon? Not necessarily. Because, like, obviously his execution has been dog shit with Twitter, but that hasn't impacted people's assessment of the Tesla stock. Building value for investors. Um, but Tesla is worth uh, about as much as the rest of the car industry combined. From nothing. So, I, you know, that's pretty good. Um, as I mentioned, we had, we had the best-selling car on Earth last year. Um, so, from, from an investor standpoint, if there is something I'm taking, I should keep taking it. Have you, you talk about your ketamine use and depression, have you, you also have said, and the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, the, like, the reason I mentioned uh, the, the ketamine prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the great replacement theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan opened up the border. You said that the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? <laughs> right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants, which I think have a, a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, a very strong bias to vote Democrat. Okay. How can illegal immigrants vote, Elon? Elon, how can they vote? They don't have documents, Elon. How can they vote? They have a very strong bias towards Democrats. Okay. Um, the, the more the more that come to the country, the more they're likely to vote uh, in that direction. But it, it is, in my view, uh, a simple incentive to increase uh, voters to Democrat voters. Um, and yeah, so the question is like how? So there's, there's, a, few, there's a, a few ways that this works. One, it's so funny that this guy is like still celebrated as like a brilliant dude by the dumbest people you've ever seen in your entire life. It's like, dude, you have such a strong opinion on this matter and you haven't even done any of the fucking reading. Like you don't even know the racist talking points at this point. You're just like regurgitating what other dumb races have said like you didn't even fucking look through the talking points to come up with like an answer what is that uh, when the census is done uh the census is based on all, all people in an area whether they are citizens or not so uh if there are a concentration of uh people who came here illegally in in a, in a particular state or uh in a particular state that state will actually then get uh, an increased number of house seats so the house seat apportionment is proportionate to the number of people, not the number of citizens. Okay. The number of citizens. Okay. Um, so how does that work for Texas then? Shouldn't Texas have like an incentive for more undocumented migrants?
That doesn't make no sense. So the, 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 the illegals overwhelmingly go to places like California and New York. Um, no, they don't. They go to California and they go to Arizona and they go to Texas. They go to New York now. At least like we're talking about border crossers. 52% of undocumented migrants are visa overstayers like Elon Musk himself. But Texas is has such a... Texas hates uh, undocumented migrants so much, they're shipping them to New York. 37,000 uh, in, in Chicago and even more in New York, if I'm not mistaken on the numbers. And the... If you just look at the, look at the math, if, if, if you look at the apportionment with and without illegals, I believe California would lose, I believe, I believe the blue state, there would be a net loss of blue states of approximately 20 seats in the House. Uh, this also applies to the, the Electoral College. So you say, like, well, this also applies to, to electing the president, because the, the, the same, the electoral votes are also done by, by apportionment the same way that House seats are done. But the reason, Elon, the election Deliberately misrepresenting him? Me? Why? What is he saying? Listen, the only illegals I care about right now are those illegally watching the broadcast at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break, okay? Don't be like that. Subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, okay? No misrepresentations, no nothing. If you think a fucking chatter is going to catch me as a long-term community subscriber, hit me with a two-parter. You can suck me, okay? You can suck me from the back. You understand? Yeah. Nope. Not today, son. Not today. Here's the three minute ad break now, bitch. Boom. Electoral college is in place is to to balance that so that that doesn't happen. So what you're saying about it is the exact opposite of the reason oh. why the, the electoral college is there. The electoral college at this point at this point in our history, gives people who are in smaller states and red states much more of an influence. Yeah, let's abolish the Electoral College, Elon. Let's abolish the Electoral College, Elon, if undocumented migrants are getting too much. I like that he talked about 20 house seats the Democrats would lose which I don't know about that analysis to begin with, but what the fuck would happen in Texas then? Also, if this was so beneficial for the uh, representatives there beyond the, the economic impact, why doesn't fucking, why is Texas shipping them off then? over our elections than people who are in blue states and the majority of the people in this country. That's what the Electoral College does. It actually does the exact opposite of what you're saying. It protects people who are in smaller states and protects people who are in... If unauthorized immigrants were excluded from the appointment court, apportionment count, sorry, California, Florida, and Texas would... Huh. So it's actually three. They would lose one electoral, uh, one less uh, congressional seat than they would have been awarded based on population change alone. California would lose two seats instead of one. Florida would gain one instead of two, and Texas would gain two instead of three, according to the analysis based on projections of Census Bureau 2019 population estimates. Oh, because of Florida's uh, arena, California's uh, undocumented immigrants, uh, undocumented immigrant uh, uh, percentage, population percentage. Alabama, Minnesota, and Ohio would each hold on to a seat if they would have lost the... the apportionment based on total population change in addition to these states 11 more would gain or lose seats based on population change alone whether unauthorized immigrants are included or excluded five seats would gain one each arizona colorado montana north carolina oregon oh six states would lose one seat each illinois michigan new york pennsylvania rhode island and west virginia so it's not 20 elon isn't used to even mild pushback from someone as milk toast as don lemon so the proper counter to the idea that blue states gain seats is that red states would lose seats? No. Red states would gain seats. Blue states would lose seats. 
The problem is, however, if that was what was so beneficial for them, given that undocumented migrants, as Elon also loosely agreed to, without openly stating it, then all these states would have an incentive to continue having more immigrants, more undocumented immigrants. <sighs> is there any way I could talk to you privately? No, man. What the fuck? What is happening in the chat today? What what's going on? I did this. I want to pull one fucking dumbass gray name. And now everybody's like, no, can I have your phone number? Can I come to your house? Can I talk to you privately? No. I do one fucking, I, I even attempt to do one guest star. And now everybody's coming out of the woodwork. The fuck? Why didn't you invite me to Kai's birthday? I did. I streamed it. Red states. Well, um, the red states I, I, because they tend I, I, to be I smaller think, and, and less popular. I think that that's that, that statement is is. Uh, what yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the solution is to. Abolish redistricting and also abolish the electoral college. What you said is, is true, but what I said is also true, uh, which is that uh, if, uh, if, as is the case, a disproportionate number of legal immigrants go to uh, blue states, they amplify the effect of a, of a blue state vote. And the math, as I understand it, and you can research this obviously very easily on the area. It's, it's like it's, it's pretty straightforward to, to research this. But my understanding is that there would be uh, that, that the, the Democrats would lose approximately 20 seats in the House. Uh, if illegals were not counted in census. And that's also 20 less electoral votes for president. So legal. I mean, it's not wrong. It's, it's, it's wrong. The numbers are wrong. But it doesn't matter. Because if that was the case, then they would fucking open up their board. Red states could just easily open up their borders. Or rather, you could just abolish the electoral college if that's such a big fucking problem. Eagles absolutely do affect. What exactly have you done? What exactly are you doing to help Palestine? Dude, 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 dude. I already ran the top of the Arab break. Okay. I did. You see? That's what I mean. Stop. I already did it. Don't try to fucking debate me with this. I, I already did it. I already ran it. Okay. The, the uh, who controls uh, the house of the house and who controls uh, the presidency. It does not affect uh, the Senate. Yeah. In blue states, you're talking about. Yes. I don't believe that your information on on uh, that is right. Um, so listen, the, let's talk more about the Great Replacement because the first time that you did, you posted on X about uh, this Jewish conspiracy. You ended up apologizing. I didn't call it a, a conspiracy. I, I just said that there's a simple matter of incentives. You don't need a conspiracy when you have basic incentives. In my view, there's a basic incentive that's fundamental uh, that uh, for, for the Democrat Democratic Party to foster and, and usher in a large number of illegals. And, they, and, and, and you don't need a conspiracy in that case because you have a very basic incentive. You could say I'm wrong about that incentive, but that's my view. I, I'm not I'm buying, into, I didn't, I'm buying some great replacement theory. I'm simply saying there appears to be a very clear incentive for uh, uh, Democrats to have to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about the... Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Democrats are carting uh, and courting undocumented migrants in their states so they can get like five fucking additional seats is so goddamn stupid okay it's just idiotic doesn't make any sense because the democrats win the majority vote they literally would benefit from having elections be played out would they they would probably they would do better if we did away with redistricting and remapped all of the fucking uh states 
with normal district boundaries rather than ones that benefit the Republican Party overwhelmingly. There are a couple cases where it benefits Democrats, but very few in comparison to how much, uh, how much Republicans benefit from redistricting. The reason why we count undocumented migrants in the census is because they're humans that live there. It's the same reason why we count prisoners in the census. Just because they don't have a vote does not change the reality that they're human beings. It's the same reason why it's the same reason why we count people who are fucking like uh uh H1B visa holders, right? Cuz they're still human beings. And therefore, they need access to certain funds, okay? They're still going to utilize certain resources, like roads, as basic, basic shit like that. Not only that, but they also fucking, yeah, we count people who are under the age of 18 as well, regardless of the fact that they can vote or not. It is so stupid. Yes, prisoners in the United States of America can't vote under, I mean, maybe in some states, but across the board, they can't. Elon is unironically doing like a three-fifths compromise style solution here. Like it makes no goddamn sense. Just because someone does not have the right to vote doesn't change that they're still a human being. Okay? And as a, oh my God, look at this one. You hear it? Is louder than you think it is. I promise. Oh my God! Please, sh please stop! Stop telling me to cover Noah's video on on starvation in Gaza. I'm not going to do it today. Okay, we've covered Israel Palestine extensively today. Please. I think another thing that Elon Musk is discounting here is that population size accounts for uh, population size counts for um, congressional seats, except Republicans get congressional seats in the state of California as well. But regardless, this the reason why uh, undocumented migrants, just like children under the age of eighteen are counted in the census is because they're still human beings and we have to account for their existence when funding certain things. Okay? That's it. No matter how much that dumb fuck tries to claim, it's for different reasons. And if it truly was an electoral problem, then the Republicans would be advocating to abolish the Electoral College. The Great Replacement Theory is also part of a Jewish conspiracy theory. And when you did the tweet or you responded to the tweet about that, you ended up apologizing, and which I think is, you know, it's good that you ended up apologizing. You went to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Right? So you said you learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when, it, when you apologized and you said you went to Auschwitz. You saw what... what... No, I was already, already aware of, of, of these things. And the nature of my comment that... Congress season funding uh, for something are not correlated. You can do both separately. Okay, let's fucking abolish the Senate then. The fuck do you mean, dumbass? Why the fuck does Wyoming get two senators? And so does California. Okay, fuck it. How about that? Who can play that goddamn game too? Yeah, I'm pissed. These motherfuckers are stupid. Oh, you're talking about Elon. I thought you were talking about me. I'm pissed too. This shit is so stupid, dude. Cows should be able to vote. Cows do vote. Wyoming votes like they have cows. 
500,000 citizens, 2.5 million cows. The fuck are we doing? Hey, bro. Yeah, I'm going to head out. Gave you a sub. Just to say again, I did think you came off a little anti-Semitic and mean-spirited in the ancient issue discussion. I said some dumb shit at first. My fault, but that's just my opinion. Gave you a sub. Good night, Mr. Piker. Kisses. No, I didn't come off as anti-Semitic, dumbass. Disagreeing with a Jewish friend of mine does not make me anti-Semitic. What the fuck are you talking about? I came across anti-Semitic. No, I didn't come across like that. You watched some other random drama farming dumb fuck by the name of Papa Goot. And now you came to that conclusion because you're fucking stupid. Okay? You're so stupid that you can't even fucking figure out how to do guest star in like six to ten minutes. Jesus Christ. Motherfucker's still in here being like, oh, you just came across anti-Semitic. Yeah, dude, I know. Anti-Semitism is when you disagree with, with a, a Jewish person. And the more you disagree, the more anti-Semitic you become. Yeah, I disagree with Benjamin Netanyahu, too. And in much more severe terms, by the way. So I guess I'm much more anti-Semitic on that front. Also, why the fuck are you subscribing to a dude who's anti-Semitic? Well, I mean, he's a Kanye fan, so. This conversation is so fucking stupid. I hate these idiots, but it's also very entertaining. Yeah, I know. Anyway, maybe he has the capacity to learn and change. Hopefully. I don't think he understands what a huge insult that is. It's almost like you're a good person being anti-Semitic is disgusting. Exactly. Exactly. That's why it's gross. Like, it's one of the... It, it, it's just, like, so frustrating to, to just come in here and be like, oh, you came across as anti-Semitic. Like, get the fuck out of here. That really inflamed people. Um, what I was what I was trying to say, and I did very quickly clarify. This is what I'm saying: is that uh, um, a number of uh, prominent uh, Jewish philanthropists fund uh, groups that they should really take a closer look at funding because some of the some of the groups they fund, um, I think, are anti-Semitic. Yeah. Do you understand the connection between the two? There one. There's a connection between you said Democrats are Great Replacement theory, but when it comes to the actual Great Replacement theory, originally it was started about Jewish people, as you said, flooding in the country, and then now people are using it for Democrats, saying the same thing about Democrats. Flooding. In my view, it's a simple matter of incentives. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I actually don't see an incentive for uh, Jewish people to want to have an illegal immigration. I don't, I don't think there is such an incentive. The Great Replacement Theory is a, a neo-Nazi trope. So wait, why did he, why did he like the, the Jews are replacing the population tweet then, and said I agree with it. I, I don't get it. It's in the neo-Nazi manifesto. It's in the Turner Diaries. It's referenced by the Buffalo mass shooter uh, in his manifesto where 10 people, um, black people were murdered in Buffalo. His actual title is a Christchurch shooter's manifesto. 51 people in the Muslim mosque were murdered. 23 people uh, murdered in El Paso by a shooter who used the same language that you use in that manifesto when you say Hispanic invasion. Is that not? I didn't say an Hispanic invasion. And you tweeted, you quoted a tweet that said, that called it a Hispanic invasion. If I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything every image. It's just something that I want to. You quote tweeted it by saying, I agree with this. You didn't like just quote tweet it. You quote tweeted with it and you said you agree with it. You also responded to a bunch of tweets that had the exact same sentiment displayed in it that you said, that's so true concerning when he says concerning or interesting, I think he means like, I'm concerned with this tweet being on my platform. Yeah. With the, with the great replacement, Jews are doing great replacement. And it's coming back to bite them in the ass. His exact words were, you said the truth. This dog is dead, by the way. It's crazy how much he, she is sleeping way fucking harder. Yeah. Okay, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minorities 
that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want the truth said to your face? There it is. 22,000 likes. Elon Musk turned around and responded to it and said, you have said the actual truth. 37,000 likes. I guess he wasn't agreeing with it, though. Or this video, while they have distracted, while they have us distracted, this is the tweet in question. Um, while they have us distracted, a massive caravan is marching to storm our border. This is not a crisis. It's an invasion. The scale of illegal immigration across the U.S. southern border is staggering. So when he, quote, retweeted end wokeness and said this and got 355,000 likes, I think he was uh, saying, like, I don't agree with it. That's why I'm, I'm only appearing to agree with it. And I'm saying I agree with it. There is no way out of this. Don Lemon, you're a fucking journalist. Well, kind of. Not really. Why don't you read out the tweet back to him? and say, what did you mean by this? I think this is something worth people should uh, consider. Why would you quote something that you didn't believe? Because anything I quote is going to have a whole range of statements. It doesn't mean I agree with everything in it. Do you think if, there, if, if you moderated yourself more, if there was... No, don't move off this. Don't fucking move off that. No, don't give him an out. Oh, do you think you should moderate yourself more? No, you're just like bullying him now for being a dumbass. No, hit him where it actually hurts. God damn, dude. Don't, because the moment that you drop what he just said as a counter is the moment that you concede it. I hate when journalists do this shit. Better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates to. I don't to have to answer these questions. Great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that. I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't Türk müsün sen? Hayır, değilim. Öğrendim sadece. Ben aslında hep yani Amerika'da büyüdüm ama çok neden bilmiyorum. Öylesine öğrendim Türkçe konuşmayı falan. Ankara bebeli, Ankara bebeleri gibi Türkçe konuşmayı öğrendim. Ama yok yani Türk değilim abi. Do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm criticized possibly. I could care less. It, you, don't, you don't care? No, I don't care. Make Scalim. I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. It makes sense. That's terrible dirt as a character. Even someone who has one of the biggest... He said, are you Turkish in Turkish? And I said, no, I'm not. I just learned to speak Turkish because I was fascinated with the language. I'm actually from Mexico. Social media and biggest information platforms in the world. You don't think, you don't care? You don't think that there's, you have any X.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating? The platform? Uh, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media, and I think the media is uh, not truthful. Well, not with just the, the media. I mean, just the truth in general. Uh, I care about the truth very much. That's why we have, for example, community, community notes on the, the X system, um, where uh, in order for community notes to surface and uh, provide corrective information about what somebody posts, and, and my posts are equally subject to this, my I've been being community noted many times, um, the, in order for, for a community note to surface, uh, People who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community node to surface. And all of the code for community nodes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law. And we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting a thumb on the scale. And uh, we don't want to put our thumb on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it, go, it went down. The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? 
Uh, and if you look at the number of views of how, 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 many, how many times was his content viewed on our platform, it is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and no, you, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Do you... Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they... So, why did he restore the account of a dude who fucking uh, watermarked the most, like, famous version of CSAM would be my question. Considering that, like, they posted it and they were banned and then you petitioned to unban them. They can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship. Is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not, you know, Look, if something's illegal, we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't put out child porno pornography. That's not it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don, you know, I, I literally said if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's saying that he's, he's hiding behind the legality argument as it pertains to uh, anti Semitic uh, hate speech manifesting on his platform. Obviously, he has to remove it in like places like Germany. So the question should be, okay, I don't care about the legality. I care about what you think. Do you think this stuff is good to have on your platform? And if you, if you like, do you agree that it should be illegal? It should continue to be legal. Do you disagree with the German uh, uh, argument? Why don't you fight against Germany? L streamer. This is true. I am an L streamer. I agree you're L. You, I, you do agree with me. I am an L streamer. Oh. But if it's not legal, the, the, the laws in this country are, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. Uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, we I agree. agree. Of, of okay. Others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Okay, agreed. Uh, with the law. But if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing, you don't feel there's, you have any responsibility not to do that? Uh, when, when, when the people who I are doing it admittedly are saying... those articles all the time that lead to, to violence and killing. Um, so don't they? Shouldn't they? It's like you're applying a differential standard to... But uh, that, would never, that would never be in mainstream media. These types of images, that type of language, those things would never be... We'd never... I mean, when I was in mainstream media, we'd never promote things that um, would, would be anti-Semitic. We would never promote think things that would. Either. Did you, did you, did you not see those? You said promote. If content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. No, but you can think of that. That's because mainstream media is has like, whatever, twenty articles a day. Uh, we have five hundred million posts today. Okay, five hundred million. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to. Get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The laws, the, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is uh, I, that we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe. I'm shocked at how he's having a hard time with his fucking dumbass. I actually, because he's not a very smart guy. Like, even the con, like earlier in the conversation, he's talking about like great replacement. Elon very clearly has said things that go far beyond just like, oh, Democrats are taking advantage of the electoral college by allowing undocumented immigration. He could have easily said, okay, well, uh, if that was the case, then Republicans would be advocating to uh, end the electoral college, but we both know that that would actually hurt them, and that's why they don't advocate for that. Um, so clearly, this is beyond. 
such sensibilities. It has something to do with the race, the perceived race of what the undocumented migrants are. Which you know as well, because you've talked about the culture of the people that are coming in, or at least agreed with the culture argument of the people that are coming into the country on numerous times. Another fucking, uh, another area where he flubbed was like his own personal, his own personal assessment. Like he should have held him, held his feet to the fire, held him accountable for the things that he said, specifically as it pertains to um, the, the great replacement boosting that he's done, the narrative that like migrants are invading the country, things of that nature. He should have just fucking read back directly to him his quote retweet. Beyond that, he should have also, beyond that, he should have also talked about, especially like the illegal stuff, he should have asked them why he re personally played a role in reinstating the account of Dom Lucre, a person who watermarked his own child sexual abuse material. Child sexual abuse material that is so, pr so famous, so infamous, that having it on your computer immediately puts you in prison, okay? Dom Lucre not only has it, he watermarked it and he distributed it on your platform and you personally played a role in reinstating his account. So, what's going on there? Why'd you do that? That was illegal. And censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that, but these are your own rules on your own platform. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you had, if you said, "Listen, we allow everything," but that's not what your content rules say, and that's why I'm asking you, why no. are they still there? The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because which part of our content policy says that we have we, we, we should delete these, these these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. Hate speech, and so you don't consider that hate speech. I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. This, 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 if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, a, a, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Uh, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. That's your argument? Okay, what if everybody reads it? Then you're technically promoting it, I guess. Also, you have personally promoted hate speech. What the fuck? God, that's so stupid. That is such a dumb fucking argument. Oh my God. Dude, this is literally uh, Mr. Bonicello's argument about saying the N-word in the vacuum of space if no one is there to uh, hear it. Also ironic because Mr. Bonarelli also says it in public on the Twitter uh, platform, platform known as X, formerly known as Twitter, all the time. But on the principle, he's talking about it. He's talking about it like it's only happening in a fucking vacuum. So the, you, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not some, t it's some tiny publication with like 20 articles a day. It's 500 million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity okay. to read it, Elon. So I think that you don't have the opportunity to read, read the internet. Are you said it's suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but, but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility and your platform. And I, I, so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at Yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there's, I think there... You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship... You want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. And, and I think that... Want censorship. And, I, and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along... No, 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 boo-boo. You want censorship. I know it. Like, literally fucking child brain. Sometimes I say, perhaps falsely, that a lot of these guys act dumb so that they can appeal to a much dumber audience because stupid people are easier to sell to. This is not one of those moments. I think Elon Musk is just that fucking dumb. Like, I think he is that stupid. I'm realizing that. I think he just lucked into how perfectly stupid he is in the ways that he is. 
that like he is so appealing to even dumber people. Along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law. Um, and if people want the law changed, they should talk to, elect talk to their elected representative and get the law changed. And then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has. He's also personally talked about shadow banning or limiting the reach of certain kinds of content. So he definitely is making that decision personally, despite acting like he's not. Or maybe he isn't. I don't know. It's no meaning. But I, I do think that there are, there should be guardrails. And I believe in free speech as much as you. I would fight. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't agree with um, a lot of what you put out on social media, but I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Right. Okay, so listen, let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, all right? That's been a target of yours lately on X. You, uh, on, there was a repost of Ben Shapiro that you claim that DEI is killing people. Specifically, you point to medicine. You claim that DEI programs are putting people at risk. Do you really believe this to be true, and what evidence do you have to support it? Uh, what I was referring to there was that if, uh, if we lower the standards for doctors uh, such, so that they, you know, get, if, if the test for a doctor is lowered, uh, that, then the probability of them making a mistake and killing someone I really think Don Lemon is a bad person to do this interview with. I think he's doing a bad job. I, I, I am not confident that he's going to do a good job of like defending DEI or whatever. And I kind of don't want to watch the rest of this interview at all. But I'll continue. I was going to be higher. Wait, say that again. I'm not sure I understand what you said. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. I yes, say. if, if, the, if the standards for passing medical exams... Would be the best. I would do a much better job of interviewing Elon Musk. I mean, he, it would never happen for that reason. But yeah. One hundred percent. And becoming a doctor, or especially something like a surgeon, if the standards are lowered, uh, uh, then the probability that the surgeon will make a mistake is higher. They're making mistakes in their exam. They, they may make mistakes with people, and that may result in people dying. What evidence do you have, though, that they're lowering the standards? I, there's no evidence of that. Which I believe there is. Stop glazing yourself. I'm not even, like, a particularly good in, uh, interviewer, necessarily. I'm just simply saying that I would do a much better job than Don Lamont, who I think is doing a bad job. There are certainly people who would be better than myself. I don't think that this is like a glaze sesh for myself. There's no evidence of that, Elon. What, what is the evidence? I, I believe they have literally lowered the status at, at Duke University, and that is what the article was referring to. There's no you evidence. They have that. not lowered there's, the status. There's no evidence about uh, lowering standards, and I think that there is. Um, I believe that is a false statement you're making. Okay, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I think the thing is, what do you when, mean? When this is well, no, 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 ask him, push him on that. What do you mean, lowering the standards? Why do you think we are lowering the standards? Why do you think that automatically. Like black and brown uh, people, if that's where you gripe with DEI, why do you? Why is it that with the automatic assumption that the standards are being lowered when they're considered? What are the standards? What do you think the standards are? That someone needs to be white, or at least like close in proximity to whiteness? What the fuck? What standards? First of all, considering that medical racism is such a severe problem. It is literally taught in medical school, examples such as, uh, you know, having to teach doctors not to underprescribe black people painkillers, pain medication specifically, is such a glaring, obvious issue that they literally teach it in med school. Don't you think that the standards would automatically improve by having at least more black doctors? at least for black people, the standards would improve. This does not mean that uh, black doctors cannot treat white patients, but across the board, what do you mean they teach you in medical school? There's a class in med school, I think it's called the, medicine, the Ethics in Medicine, if I'm not mistaken, that I don't know what the exact, I don't know the, the, the exact, the, uh, name of the classes 
but they teach this in they teach this in medical school they teach it for public health they teach it for anything that touches the medical realm even the fox business article about this exchange doesn't cite any evidence for what elon musk is claiming people will die so you're talking shit lamau wait what talking shit Talking shit in what regard? Healthcare inequality or healthcare inequity is absolutely something that is taught to doctors. And the reason for why it's taught the doctors is because there is a lot of healthcare inequality. Just look at like black maternal mortality rates, for example, during pregnancy in comparison to white women. And you will understand it. Or look at the history. You can't even quote what you're talking about in healthcare. You don't think that there is empirical evidence that backs my point? So you must not know. I just gave you... What are you talking about? I literally just gave you... Uh, I, I just gave you a one very clear example. I gave you two I talked about pain treatment specifically for black people. Black people on average are perceived to have a much higher level of pain tolerance. This is actually objectively untrue. This is precisely the reason why most doctors have to be taught not to underprescribe black people is precisely what I said. This is one aspect of uh, ethics in medicine that is taught in, in school. Okay. That's number one. Number two then I talked about the healthcare outcomes for black women, for example. Black maternal mortality rate in comparison to white mothers in the United States of America. In 2021, the maternal mortality rate for non-Hispanic black, subsequently black women, was 69.9 deaths per 100,000 live births. 2.6 times the rate for non-Hispanic white, subsequently white women. Unless you think the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is not a, a, a good place to, to look for this kind of empirical evidence. The inconsistency in medicine in a developed nation like the United States of America is only born out of the lack of adequate care. This one, by the way, this this is one example. Oh yeah, medical ethics and professionalism. Medical ethics and professionalism, MA750. First, your required course provides an overview of major ethical issues that arise in the practice of medicine, medical education, and medical research. After an initial whole class introductory session in amphitheater, the course is taught in separate sections of 10 to 11 students run in a graduate seminar format. Oh. They introduce students to the core elements of ethical reasoning around issues such as confidentiality, truth-telling, genetic testing, rationing, professional boundaries, conflict of interest, informed consent and treatment of research, and end-of-life care. Readings are required for the preparation of each session. Here is a uh, here is a, a uh, PubMed article on racial bias in medicine. Racial bias in pain assessment and treatment recommendations and false beliefs brought about biological differences between blacks and whites. Where's that chatter? What's this chatter's username? Currently in medical school, definitely an emphasis on health disparity in the curriculum. Also, people are falsely equating getting into medical school with graduating residency in which the requirements of training are very rigid. But where is it taught? I'm said you couldn't remember, but where is it taught is where I'm said, where I'm at. You said you couldn't remember. No, I said I couldn't remember the exact name of the class in medical school, in med school which differs from med school to med school. 
But the examples I gave you should, if you were smart enough to understand how communication works, you would have already came to the conclusion very quickly when I gave you not one, but two very common examples of, of the types of uh, uh, ethics in medicine that is taught to not only doctors, but also anyone that is involved in healthcare, including public health, okay? That would have allowed you to, through deductive reasoning, through logic, that I know what the fuck I'm talking about, and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, okay? But you hyper-focused on me saying, I can't remember the exact name of the class, which, by the way, I was pretty close on, regardless, to imply that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Then you snarkily said, tell us, so you must know. In the process of which, I also gave you the exact data on what the disparities are, specifically on black maternal mortality rates in comparison to white maternal mortality rates. Uh, mortality rates and you're still you're still hitting the oh you just didn't remember no you didn't understand see the difference is you're stupid <laughs> and now you've made your stupidity everyone else's problem do you get it i'm here to tell you that as a stupid person you can do what many stupid people do myself included when I'm out of my element, you know what I do? I do a whole lot less of this and do a whole lot more of this. I shut the fuck up and I listen and maybe I learn some new things. Okay? Do you understand? I know your parents probably, as an American citizen, if you are an American, I don't know, maybe told you that your opinions are perfect and special. And that they must be heard no matter what. Okay? And people have to address what you have to say no matter how stupid those opinions are. Okay? But sometimes you need a little bit of medicine. Okay? You need a little bit of medicine. Like you. Uh-huh. Exactly. Like me. There are many instances where I'm stupid and out of place. And I recognize that. So I shut the fuck up and I listen. You are in that pocket right now, but instead of shutting the fuck up and listening, you're still thinking that you're owning me. You are, too, you are too stupid to recognize that you are the one who is being owned. Now, let me tell you something, okay? This is how you will become a smarter person. I promise. You will become a smarter person by not doing this every fucking time. I promise, even if you're not a smart person, other people won't recognize that you're stupid if you don't speak out of turn like this. Do you get it? It's a really, really cool way. It's a really cool way to make people think with this one simple trick, a really cool way to make people think that you're actually much more intelligent than you actually are. It's called shutting the fuck up and not letting everyone else around you in your immediate vicinity learn exactly how fucking stupid you are. I promise. It is like, it is a life hack. I'm giving you the how-to. Now, now here's the thing. I don't think you're going to listen to me. <laughs> I have a feeling you did not learn this lesson, but I hope it sticks with you. Okay, even if you don't practice it right now, if you try it tomorrow or the day after, you might like the results. People will think you're cool and mis uh, mysterious. You know what I mean? Instead of people will know how fucking dumb you are. Yeah, allow others to imagine your intelligence by keeping quiet rather than opening your mouth and removing all doubt. There you go. You are correct. It is called ethics education and is part of curriculum in medical schools. Huh. Anyway. Hopefully this was an educational moment for many in the chat as well.
not to just like not come up against me because there might be instances where you guys know more than me on a particular subject matter. This is not one of them. Although if there is a, if there is a, if there are current MD students, they will probably know more than me, but I doubt that any current MD student would come in here and fucking tell me that the ethics courses that are taught in their curriculum is actually non-existent in order to win a fucking Reddit argument. Anyway. Now, the reason why I talked about ethics and medicine to begin with was because I wanted to explain to people that, yes, across the board, standards would raise specifically for black patients if there were more black doctors. Black people are historically and currently marginalized in this country. So having black doctors would do away with some of the necessity for medical ethics being taught. Because after all, no matter how well you learn a particular subject, there's still going to be gaps in your knowledge. So... That would raise the standards. I've given you one example of how standards would raise in this circumstance. As far as I understand, there are no standards that would be lowered by opening up avenues so there are more black and other non-white doctors. Well, there will be a whole bunch of things that rebut what you said and what, what I said. Right. And so people can then make their own decision based on the replies, and the rebuttals, and the community notes. I think that's fair. But I do think that on this particular topic, I do think that you and Ben Shapiro are, are reaching in uh, about this. Because there was a, what, it, what Ben posted said that people were, he gave instances of people who were deliberately uh, harming people. Um, nowhere in the thread does Ben suggest at all, I should say, that anyone is being killed as a, a result of DEI. Um, that's purely speculative. There's research on DEI and medicine, and there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, okay. that DEI is affecting medicine. Actually, like okay. well, only 5% of doctors yeah. are black, and a small percent. Yeah, well, I think minorities. you'll find that when this is posted to the ethics platform, that uh, people will reply to it with evidence. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, let's see. Okay, so, but... <laughs> Don't worry, Don. They'll post the racist evidence in the replies. You know, in the community notes, which, by the way, if they go against me and you put them on my tweets, I will delete them, which he has done, by the way. That's my whole thing about moderation. Maybe you're wrong, but you'll put it out there. You don't know if it's right. Do you think that your responsibility to make sure something is right before you, the person who owns it, Elon Musk, yeah. is a huge figure in the world, that you should know that it's true, that some, there are people at X who can get research for you before you put something out there like that. That's not necessarily true, even in other examples. Um, if I say something that uh, is inaccurate, I'm immediately corrected on the platform. That's the advantage of a real-time uh, system like X. So they'll be immediately in the replies. Correct. People I can't tell if he's a racist Nazi or just too stupid for advanced thought. He's a racist Nazi and he's too stupid for advanced thought. Because at least if he was like a racist Nazi and a little bit more intelligent, he would have like... Donald Lamont is not exactly an intelligent interlocutor who's clearly capable of like destroying the false narratives that you're presenting that much i have seen from his performance thus far so if you were even a little bit smarter you could at least give him like fake information or false information cherry pick data or something like that you know if you did your racist reading you would at least be able to like own him in the marketplace of ideas you could talk about the bell curve or any number of different things that I'm sure he would not have it quick enough counter for. He's not that stupid. How else would he have that much money? I'm a fucking idiot. I have more money than your dad. I have more money than most fucking college professors, most researchers, and I'm a fucking dumbass. What does money have to do with anything? The fuck?
people are correcting me. There'll be community note that will correct me, um, which is attached to the actual post itself. Do you think as many people um, read the, yes. you think as many people read that as it reads your tweet? Yes, in fact, and if, if there's a community note that happens uh, later that or somebody didn't see, but they replied to that uh, or interacted with that post, we will notify them that there is now a community note correcting that post. Mm -hmm. Just so you Whereas if you consider the conventional media, that doesn't happen. Conventional media makes false statements all the time with no and nobody ever hears the correct. Oh my god. Of course they put fucking retractions in the articles themselves, which is literally the same principle behind community notes. What the fuck are you talking about? When I was in conventional media, I can only Yeah, my brother is literally a fucking rocket engineer. And I have a shit ton more money than he does. He's a lot smarter than me. I'm going to tell you. Literally builds spaceships. Okay. Unlike Elon Musk who LARPs as a person who builds spaceships. My brother actually does build spaceships. Rocket ships. Thinking that money has to do. Thinking that money signifies intelligence is the dumbest thing on the fucking planet. You automatically take an L. You automatically take a fucking L to the likes of Kylie Jenner. Do you think Kylie Jenner is infinitely more intelligent than you? I only speak for myself. If I got something wrong, if someone got something wrong on the platform that I was on, it was corrected. And we made sure that it was corrected. Now, I can't speak for hey, well, anyone else. That's, I, think, I don't think that's a universal situation. Okay. So I just want, just the research that when you talk, do you believe that people are dying because medical standards, DEI is causing medical standards to be lowered. Do you actually believe people are dying because of that? I, I believe that it, uh, if, if, we, if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor. You're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay. But the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh. most, doctors, okay. most doctors now are white. And there are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are, have bad medical care. I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI, because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said, so if the standards, like, like, let's say, uh, like that particular dude, so much of right wing grievance is literally, I made up this problem and it scared me in my mind. So now you have to address it. Address what? The problem I made up in my mind that scared me. But think about how scary it was when I made up this problem. You, I, I don't want to deal with your demons, man. Like, you got to deal with it on your own. Back in the day, at least there was, like, some decency, you know? Not every dumb fuck with an anonymous account could come in and chirp and make it your problem. Like that one fucking chatter. What was it? Total outlaw or whatever. Where the fuck did that guy go? The fuck was his username? Did you guys ban him? Oh, come on. I hope you didn't ban that guy. The one that was like, uh, you didn't know you couldn't come up immediately with the I'm going to be so disappointed if you guys banned him mods. Oh, you didn't. Oh, he just said no and left. They're invading due to Biden, letting them for votes and you get off on hanging on their, on all their shirt tails to support your stream. There should be freedom of speech. Wait, what? Oh God, he's so stupid. Your mods have started banning all the phone people. We didn't even ban this guy. He just left on his own. I guess he hates free speech. I don't know. Things were referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon, is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do a, a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay. I'm okay, but you just made up a hypothetical that has nothing to do with what is going on. Like, dude, dude. Okay, right-wing argumentation. Are you ready? I made up a problem in my mind, and it scared me. Now it's your issue to deal with. Then you go, okay, but that's not what's going on. Then you go, well, what if in this hypothetical 
that I created in my mind where the problem does exist, right? What do you do then? And it's like, okay, but you made that problem up. He's using an analogy to describe the DEI standards. I know, but that doesn't work because that's not what the DEI standards are. That's not a real thing. That's the issue. Yeah. Okay. Here, here's why this level of argumentation is so stupid. Okay. What if, because the counter to that is me going, what if in my hypothetical, white doctors are slaughtering people and then black doctors are much better than white doctors. What then Elon, don't you want all the doctors to be black then? Logically, you should want every single doctor to be a black doctor in that situation, right? Because both of these arguments are just completely made up. He just made up an argument where he's right. It's very stupid. I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it was, it's happening. You said you didn't say it was happening. I said I said it will. You, but I said if if if, if we lower status, people people will die. <laughs> He's also doing Mon and Bailey. Like you're not talking about lowering standards. You're saying DEI lowers standards, which there's no evidence for. Okay. Your fake argument made black doctors look dumb. Wait, what? What the fuck? But why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower those standards. Okay. If you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America. Like megaphonics is right. I can't believe I'm saying this. He's doing mental gymnastics to avoid coming across as overtly racist by typing, by tying the lower standards thing to DEI. So what, Don Lamont should be doing here is, can you explain to me exactly what you mean by lowering standards when you associate it with diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives? Like, exactly, in your own fucking words, what do you mean? Like, it's so obvious that he has to exist in this, like, otherwise very liberal space as a billionaire because when you get to that point it's like you can't be like overtly racist because now you're you're limiting the audience that you can sell shit to regardless of how fucking racist you are personally so he's trying to be a right-wing charlatan while simultaneously not say directly what he means so he just keeps going, oh, well, um, actually, uh, uh, Democrats are bringing in undocumented migrants because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break and Democrats want the undocumented migrants to avoid said ads by subscribing for $5 or for free. You know what I mean? This sh feels exactly like a Jordan Peterson interview during the Bill 16, C-16 thing. No, it's worse. Because at least Jordan Peterson has done the reading to like be able to come up with like racist secondary conclusions and and like he's done the racism uh he's read the racism manga. He didn't just watch the anime, okay? And Jordan Peterson back in the day at least did a good job of never being pinned down on a question, but would like simultaneously hit the liberal adjacent notes. In, in a way that didn't offend the sensibilities of other like racist people or bigoted people that also still wanted to maintain the facade that they are liberals. That's what I mean when I say Elon doesn't even have the talking point. Elon doesn't even have the racism talking points. He didn't read the, he, he didn't even watch the racism anime. He basically like saw the racism anime, like snippets of it, and is just like trying to recall moments from the racism anime. He didn't even read the manga. He did not read the original stories. He knows nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah, he did one of those like TikTok summarizations that's like three minutes long for fucking eight seasons of an anime. Basically, if the anime is the racism anime, he went and watched that TikTok and is now trying to repeat what he remembers from it. And it's odd. Yeah, it doesn't know the story. His parents were there when it was written. Exactly. That's why it's odd because his dad is like direct, close and personal relationship. Elon does too with the racism manga, right? Like he was there when they were writing the manga cause were putting it together. At least the South African version of it. Weird. Very intellectually lazy as far as racism goes. Very offensive to me. Are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that D and there's still these inequities, right? And there's and people still there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm I'm very very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it's yes, dude, just ask him what he means by lowering standards for DEI. Just ask him that it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or you know an oncologist or something where that where the the kind of disease we're talking about. If you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the okay, what would lead you to believe that DEI is doing that? That more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors? Or that's what the, the, the audit, that's what that article said. suggested. Yes, at the at the university. Okay, the evidence that I have shows that that's not true. Okay. So listen, after the door blew off, this um... wait, what? That's that's it. Don't move on from that. Don't move on from that at all. Do not move on from that, please. That thing he's talking about isn't even real, by the way. I googled Duke University DI lower standards, expecting this on some right wing rag covering it, and I found absolutely nothing. Does anyone have the article? I want to look at it. Because Duke literally has DEI initiatives, number one. Duke University, specifically the School of Medicine, also has uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Like, literally every fucking college does. So, what's up? This is, not a, this is not an article. This is Ben Shapiro talking shit. DEI medicine means that if doctors injure patients, they might still be protected, even promoted. Like, this is made up. This is what Elon was saying. This is just made up. Ben Shapiro made this up. I can't stress this enough. This is not an article. This is a guy talking shit. Okay? Like, in a very racist way. You cannot source this. You cannot point to a Ben Shapiro Twitter thread. Oh my God. Primary evidence from the goat? Yeah. You're right. My man. My bad. My mistake. This is the post in the thread he's citing. Both you Penn and Liu's medical school wake horrors have attempted to hide Liu's hiring. What? None of this is a fucking... None of this destroys DEI at all. This is not a fucking study. This is, again, Ben Shapiro cherry-picking fucking data. I'm losing my goddamn mind 
Ramon adds that post George Floyd, Duke made a concerted effort to stop hiring so many walls of white men. He says the team is now abandoning all sorts of metrics and adopting completely holistic application practice in order to recruit more women and non-white surgeons. Oh my God. If your argument is a fucking one minute and 52 seconds from a Zoom call about some motherfucking doctor being like, we are actually going to adopt a different metric for how we recruit more women and non-white surgeons. If that is your literal fucking argument, you are the dumbest person on the planet. Okay. You still have to go to medical school. You still have to do residency training. There are a there are so many different qualifications that you have to go through before you can become a fucking surgeon. Do people think that let's 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 think this through. Do you think that like now medical school is going to be like, "Oh, you're black?" Don't worry, you don't have to study. Don't worry, you don't have to learn the anatomy. You're black after all. Do you think that it's just like, oh, you're black? Well, let's fast track you to being a surgeon. You pass. They're like, oh man, the blacker you are, the, the more quickly you pass. Okay? Logic is going to have a hard time. Just like, that's how it works. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. One guy saying they're going to adopt a more holistic application practice doesn't mean that they're actually doing that anyway you don't know what that means one you don't know what that is going to look like in practice two it's just like when people look at the world economic forum saying shit like we need to i don't know we need to lower our carbon footprint and then people going, they are Satan spawn that want to do socialism and permanent first world genocide. No, they do not. They're simply saying that they want to lower carbon emissions. They're doing that for marketing. Okay. That's it. Following our investigation, Duke Medical School is taking down the videos and one of his doctors, Vignesh Raman, admitted to abandoning all sorts of metrics and hiring surgeons for the sake of DEI. Unfortunately for Duke, we save copies. As Elon Musk aptly put it, DEI puts the lives of your loved ones at risk. We reached out to Duke, Raman, a North Carolina attorney general for comment, and are in touch with a U.S. representative bishop who intends to ensure the laws are fully enforced. Oh my God. This is what politics is. In the United States of America, this is what it has become. This is it. I heard something that a dude said in a Zoom call. I'm mass blasting it out into the world to fit my narrative. And now we got to get other people involved. We got to get them to look into it. Because it seems like this is going to cause people to get butchered. Mid five Miss Alaskan Airlines flight. Do you remember that? Um, you responded in a post claiming that the average HBCU grad was less intelligent than the average airline pilot, uh, and stated that it will take an airline crashing, an airplane crashing, and killing hundreds of people for them to change this crazy policy of DIE. I don't know if you did you misspell it on purpose, which it should be DEI. Do you believe that women and minority pilots are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No, I'm just saying that we should not lower the standards for them. Okay. okay. There's no evidence that standards are being lowered when it comes to the okay. airline industry. You've, you've repeatedly said that there's no evidence that standards are being lowered. And watch the replies showing all the evidence that it is. Reply.
That's not an argument, man. You can't have an opinion this strong that is this nonsensical, that is this bigoted, and then your reply to it is, well, my reply guys on Twitter got me. That is fucking crazy. What the fuck? Do you not have a single thought of your own? I mean, he's literally saying like, I don't know these things, but the dudes on Twitter who are like much more racist than me that did the racist reading have the replies for you. Okay, well, you are having a conversation with another guy. Oh my God, this is literally the, the Bonarelli versus Norman Finkelstein debate all over again. A guy that's like completely out of his element, completely just oblivious, trying to talk to a guy who's also, I mean, with Norm, Norm is obviously incredibly intelligent, especially as it pertains to encyclopedic knowledge of, of uh, everything that has happened in Gaza. But like, he literally is turning around and going, openly admitting like, well, I don't even have the talking points. I got fucking Twitter shooters though, and they will give you the talking points. It's like, why did you say it then? Why did you agree with it? Why, like, do you, do you not have a single independent thought in your own mind? What the fuck is happening? You should be embarrassed to, to retort like this. I originally didn't want to watch this video, but I'm glad I did because holy fuck, it's so much dumber than I thought. He is so much dumber than I thought. And Don isn't even that good at like holding this conversation. I, so on social media or on Twitter are not necessarily fact and evidence. No, they will just, that's people's they will, opinion. They will cite okay. all the, all the reply, in the reply. But why can't you cite it? You have a firm, you have a, a firm conviction that DEI lowers standards. You do not have any evidence to back up this firm conviction. And you keep saying that like in the future, my reply guys will save me. That's not how an intelligent person presents their fucking argument. You should have at least like fake come up with some quotes. Just fucking lie. Don isn't even good enough to call you out for those lies. I'm in awe that his, whenever he's backed into a fucking corner, he's like, I don't got the information, but you know who does? Hypothetically, in the future, people who reply to me will have the evidence. As to this, you'll see how often the, this, this, uh, the information is cited showing that indeed there are significant uh, cases where uh, standards are lowered. And I do hope that happens. I do yes. hope that happens, and I, and I look forward to it. And as you said, if you're wrong, then you're... What the fuck are you saying? No, you don't hope that happens. No, you don't hope that you get false information in Elon Musk's replies from 12-year-old Nazis online. I hope that Don would go, that's a ridiculous way to argue your point that you have just no evidence for this point whatsoever. And you don't even have evidence of the, the evidence existing. Like, that's the funniest part. Okay? The funniest part is that he doesn't even point to anything. Like, not even a thing that he hasn't read. You know what I mean? Like, there is, there's no replies right now. He's saying in the future there will be. So we don't even know if there's any fucking racist Nazis that'll come up with a fucking baseless uh, or cherry pick data points. What an incredible fucking thing. What an incredible way to argue. So we started off with a hysterical perspective that this person has that he hallucinated. We moved on to an example that he made up that proves that this could happen zero evidence thus far and now when dom pushes him even a little bit on like okay so where's the evidence for dei lowering standards here I've, i'm telling you that like there's no evidence for it actually there's evidence the contrary he turns around and says well there will be evidence in the future that is incredible he didn't even point to anything but you already have arrived at the conclusion without any evidence whatsoever.
you're wrong and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Yes. Okay, so let's, so and I'm glad we're having this conversation debate. This is what you should, we should be doing debating the issue. So right. if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong and then they'll be proven in the thing and you as well. But I just want to tell you that that pilot that you talked about, in fact, was a woman pilot, landed the plane safe, safely despite the major found malfunction with the equipment. Boeing has taken responsibility for that incident, saying that it was caused by a faulty door panel. So I'm not sure what that had to do with lowering the standards for pilots when it was a faulty. No, it's not lowering standards for pilots. It's, it's the, the incentive structure, uh, I, I believe, at Boeing changed to uh, include DEI as, uh, as, as a fundamental executive incentive. Um, so, but I, in Oh, it was DEI at Boeing that actually caused it. Oh, when he said it was DEI that's going to kill people, he meant DEI at Boeing. That's really interesting. Okay. Do you know the demographic makeup of Boeing and how that has shifted over the years? Okay. Or has it shifted over the years? Do you have any idea? Or do you think that this, uh, do you think that it hasn't changed much at all? And as a matter of fact, especially in the executive office, or, uh, and, and uh, what has changed in Boeing is they're hyper-focused on profits. Something that Elon knows personally. You weren't talking about Boeing DEI. You were talking about the airplane pilot doing DEI. In my view, it should be purely about passenger safety. Okay, but do you understand how by... You should ask him, is it DEI that SpaceX keeps blowing up so many fucking rockets? He should ask specifically when Elon's own personal motivations for uh, not building a la launch pad that could withstand a shit ton of heat and pressure that caused concrete to fly everywhere in one of their failed launches, including potentially the, the fuselage, right? Like the, the body of the rocket literally uh, had pieces of fucking concrete falling on cars miles away. Um, was that a DEI initiative? Is it because they hired a South African man? Is that what happened there? Are you a DEI hire, Elon? Why did you suggest that? Why did you suggest the shitty launch pad? Why were you so adamant about the shitty launch pad that caused a shit ton of destruction and maybe linked to your own fucking rocket failing? Tesla itself has a DEI uh, report as well. Of course, I mean, maybe they stopped it, but this is 2020. Perhaps that's the reason why the FSD is such a fucking failure. Saying just that standards are being lowered, that you're implying that they're being lowered because people are less skilled and less intelligent, and you're talking about people of color and or women. Uh, look, I'm, I'm saying we should not lower standards. But do you, you don't, that's it. I think everyone can agree that you can't, you shouldn't lower standards. Right. That's but you're cool. implying that they're lowering standards because of people of color or women, because someone is not a white male. You're saying that they're less skilled and less intelligent. That's what no, you're I'm saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that they are. Then why would they be lowering the standards? I don't know. Why are they lowering the standards? Just so you know, 5% of pilots are female, 4% are black. So you're, you know, you're talking about this widespread takeover of minorities and women when that's not actually true. I'm not saying there's a widespread takeover. Well, you're saying that the standards are being lowered because of certain people. Um, and you, how do you, you don't believe in DEI, right? Do you not believe there's in diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think we should be uh, treat people uh, according to their skills uh, and their integrity, and that's it. Do you know that studies show? Studies show. Yeah. Well, we can look them up. So your reaction to studies show and understand, right? <laughs> you mean studies show? It's like, bro, you can't do that. What do you mean? You're so fucking stupid, dude. The fuck do you mean? Ugh, study show. You're not... Dude, I hate this. Look, I am no big city lawyer. I am not this, like, fucking elitist guy at all. Okay? But nothing frustrates me more than dumb motherfuckers being like, Ugh, study show, sure. Like, what do you mean? What are you doing? What the fuck? How do you draw? How, how else can we arrive at fucking conclusions? Like what? I hate this fucking anti-intellectual slant where people 
unironically hold up idiocy as a virtue. I am more virtuous because I have not been tainted by what you talk about as studies and empirical evidence. I know you're busy, but do we have to be on camera tonight? Dude, I don't fucking know. Ask Will. Why are you asking me? <laughs> That's why Norm kept quoting people in excerpts from books. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, man, Norm actually lost the argument in my head canon because he kept quoting historical facts and statements from people at the time. And you're not supposed to do that. What you're supposed to do instead is what? Agree with me, I guess. Do you think anti-intellectualism has gotten worse over time? I think it fucking adapted to the new circumstance new circumstances that's what i think happened like it always existed but now with the with the internet like i said because you're anonymous and there's like no way to understand that the person that you're talking to is the biggest fucking dumbass of all time a lot of people with that anonymity can take advantage of that anonymity and present themselves as like communicators uh, who are grounded in logic and reasoning. COVID, I think, really accelerated the anti-science narratives. But it is very odd that a guy who fucking literally hires scientists and engineers to build that shit behind them is over here being like, fuck studies, bitch. Without scientific achievements, without any kind of fucking interest in like evidence whatsoever, you wouldn't have, you couldn't be able to build that. How do you think you build that car? COVID made people very comfortable being stupid. There are many good examples of people who can portray their own stupidity as intelligence, not even anonymous all the time. Barry Weisen or people are very out in the open about who they are. I think people also are desperately looking for... People are also desperately looking for uh, other people who agree with them. And there are a lot of... Even extra Emily cooked Mr. Barilla. All right. We want 10 to 11 minutes al dente. Okay, dude. New and relevant. Did you listen to a word I said? Did you listen to a word I said? Huh. Right, because I always like to say, I always like to point to an exact uh, study, right? Sure. Is Elon not just grifting? Why are you surprised you didn't question? <sighs> of course he's grifting. I do think that his, like, right-wing opinions are real, though. I'm just shocked that he's, like, not even grifting well. Like, it doesn't even take... It doesn't even take for someone to be, like, well-read to present, like, a decent argument. That's what I'm shocked by. I feel like maybe back in the day, maybe I'm like being nostalgic uh, as an old man, but I do feel like at least people used to try and make an argument so you could like address exactly what was wrong with their argument. You could go into it. That's why I gave the example of, of the bell curve, right? Like even the Sam Harris's of the world regardless of their Islamophobia, would try to present a narrative, sometimes literally including the bell curve, to, to like neatly tie everything together. Nowadays, you don't need to do that. You just need to say the talking points. 
and the talking points are completely devoid of facts. And you can even cast aside facts. You can just go, oh, sure, whatever. Some studies are bullshit. Yes, I agree. Not all studies are equal. Okay. But again, when you do present a study, now we can look through it. Now we can find out why we can disparage the study. We can cast it aside. Okay. But if you don't fucking do anything, you don't even present a study and you just go, no, this is my opinion and it's right. And maybe in the future, someone will correct me with some, inf maybe in the future, someone will back me up with like Twitter replies. Well, then I can't fucking argue with you, man. I can't argue with you at all. You just didn't even present anything. You just said my opinion is right because I thought of it. And I'm, I'm mommy's special boy. I'm mommy's special boy and you have to listen to me. Me, 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 me. Something that is factual. It's the same thing when you talk about, well, let's see what the replies are on Twitter or on X. Yeah, so, so, I, yeah, I, so I feel the same, I feel the same way about that. But this is what studies have shown and people will reply and they'll say that companies with more diversity and their leadership teams have reported higher innovation race than those in, with a lower, um, with lower diversity or low diversity. And they, they're better companies and they make more money. This whole idea about DEI, if you go woke or whatever, you go broke, that's not necessarily true. People with diverse leadership teams and diverse um, workers make more money and more innovative. Um, like I said, my view is that the, the only basis for promoting somebody should be uh, their skills, talents, and uh, their integrity, and that's it. I want to ask you about, there's a, there's a federal government, uh, EEOC, they are also currently involved in a lawsuit against Tesla that alleges that there's a history of widespread racial harassment against black Tesla employees, as well as a pattern of retaliation for speaking out. What do you say to that? Uh, well, uh, there's, I, I don't believe that is, that is true. Um, I think we've got a very good, uh, uh, like if, if you walk around the, the, te the Tesla Fremont uh, plant, I think it's a very good atmosphere. Um, in <laughs> fact, I, I practically lived there for three years. He's like, the vibes are really good. There's not even a single black person. Okay. The vibes are so good, bro. Trust. No black people, vibes on top. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, there were some black people in the, f in the past and then we, you know, discriminated against them. It was a little costly big lawsuit you might have heard about it okay but now no black people it's fucking tight just trying to make the production work were you uh, aware if you live there were you aware of such behavior i never saw it so you're saying that this is not true it's not happening well i mean there's over twenty thousand people so you say like oh, if there's over twenty thousand people in one building um well is everyone going to be behave perfectly no did i see any any situations that i thought were uh, improper i did not uh let's talk about trans what percentage of, oh wow they're not they're not being improper around me the boss man is one way to look at it or the other much funnier way to look at it is that i don't think it's improper that they call it the plantation the fremont facility i think that was the one right like i i gave that name to the facility so i don't think it's improper I mean, there's not a, there is literally not a single fucking thing you can say about this. He objectively, objectively was so in the wrong that a court found him in the wrong for racial discrimination and harassment and forced him to pay millions of dollars. Workers at Tesla also allegedly refer to the factory as the slave ship or the plantation. In addition to other slurs, one black worker heard these racial slurs as often as 50 to 100 times a day. Some workers at Tesla with tattoos of the Confederate flag would make their tattoos visible to intimidate black workers, according to the lawsuit. Yep, that's the one. But dude, 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 you don't understand. You don't get it. The vibes were tight. Okay, the vibes were fucking awesome. And also, and also, not only were the vibes awesome, also, by the way, California plant with Confederate tattoos is so funny to me for many reasons. 
especially considering that like the fuck are you doing with a confederate tattoo in california but I know Inland California has a lot of white supremacists, man. I know. I just think it's like hilarious when I see someone from Ohio rocking the fucking stars and bars, uh, repping the Confederate flag, Ohio as well. And it's like, I know that there's plenty of races there. It's just like, what are you doing? This is historically not an area that you were welcome. You know what I mean? It makes no fucking sense. Anyway, trans rights and the woke mind virus, because you've talked about that a lot. You write about that a lot on the thing. You have been deeply outspoken about the issue of trans rights. You posted trans rights. You uh, posted that pronouns and bio mean the woke mind virus ate your brain. Do you know what the term woke actually means? Um, it's come to mean a lot of things. But what it actually, what originally it was meant to mean, it's just being aware of inequities in society and, and being aware of facts and, and history. Yeah, I think it's come to be. I think, I think being aware of inequities in society is fine, of course. Um, but uh, trying to blame everything uh, on, on, trying to make everything a race issue is, uh, I think, uh, divisive and corrosive to society. Even as it relates to trans issues, which is what I'm... Yeah, race or, you know, uh, uh, gender or whatever. You think blaming, you think that society blamed everything on racism now? It blames a lot of things on it, and, uh, yeah. You think that's unfair? Yeah. Why? I think, I think we should, we should, we should, uh, not not make this a constant uh, subject. I think we need to move on. I think we're just damn, bro. I can't believe the apartheid guy is saying, perhaps bra very bravely. Okay, brave take from the apartheid guy. It's not the racism that sucks. It's constantly mentioning that it exists that sucks. Just want to, you know, just want to mention that real quick. Racial inequalities are one thing constantly mentioning that they exist however that's the real problem okay i say as a guy who grew up in apartheid south africa it's fucking you know kind of a yikes thing for me you know i saw this i saw this growing up it's like everyone was always talking about this thing called an apartheid and it's like i didn't see it there were no black people around me in my father's emerald mind, maybe, right? There were some black people there. I didn't talk to them, but the vibes were really cool. I didn't hear anything that was disparaging. Yes, they, you know, said the most heinous shit to the, uh, the black people that were working in the, uh, the emerald mines, but I agreed with them, so it wasn't actually concerning at all to me because it's all about how I receive things. Remember, the existence of racial inequality is not a problem. Me hearing about it is the problem. It's me. I am. My feelings must be spared. You know, um, treat people like people. You don't agree that there's this country was founded on racism and founded on slavery and, and in many ways inequities. Um, that still continue on to the same. I think every country uh, at, at that time, and I think even today, uh, was uh, extremely racist. Um, every country. Um, and um, obviously, uh, uh, slavery was present in uh, about half of this country. Um, and no, but not was not present in the, in the uh, North. Uh, there was racism, for sure. Uh, but, you know, the, I, I think we, we, we want to look to the future rather than the past. Um, so there was no slavery in the north just racism it is pretty funny to like be a south african dude okay then look at don's face look i hate don lamont but at the end of the day he's still a black american dude talking to a guy who's talking to a guy who's trying to educate him on a guy from South Africa, apartheid South Africa, trying to educate him on racism is over, Dom. Okay? 
Racism is over. It's fine. Um, and uh, instead of engaging in uh, constant rehashing of the past, uh, because it, it, in, in fact, if you look at history, if you study history broadly, everyone was a slave. Everyone. Yes. Well, okay. not everyone was a slave. No, everyone was a slave. Okay. But <laughs> we, 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 are, we, are, we are all descended from slaves. Yeah. This is awesome. I love this dude. My favorite type of argument, straight up. Just like classic dumbass white guy argument. Dude, it's just like everyone was enslaved at a certain point. Just like get over it. Is that is that what happened? Is that how how society advanced? Because like the Irish got over it. <laughs> By the way, chattel slavery is unique in its cruelty, in its mass adoption, and also how long it continued for. So that's the reason why no historian would ever agree to like, oh, everybody got slaved. Everybody got enslaved at a certain point. Irish historians would not agree to that. Okay. It's about continued material inequalities. It is about the gross human rights atrocities that were committed. For example, Maybe he should ask Elon, like, okay, so the Holocaust happened. Would you tell the Jews to get over it? Or do you think that, like, Germany was wrong for offering reparations? You know? Or do you think that Jews got over it and that's why uh, they were able to, in the Western world and, and, and in many other places, like, be able to become more prominent individuals in society? Or do you think that the in-group that normally would continue their oppression brought them into the in-group. Perhaps there is one thing missing from black people in this equation. You know, being, off, uh, being offered uh, to be a part of the in-group. He probably thinks it's... <laughs> He probably best not to ask Elon about Jews. Yeah, I mean, I would like to hear his opinions on it. He did he did say that he did say that, that is exactly the truth to a guy saying Jews are bringing barbarian non-whites into the into the western world. So maybe Maybe it is best that Elon doesn't respond to that question. Well, All of us. Yeah. It's, um, so it's just a question of when. Is it, was it more recent or less recent? That's it. Right. Um, so the, but what, what future do we want? Do we we want to, is this something we want to make a part of our constant dialogue forever? Or do we, want, do we want to say, like, let's just move on and treat everyone? This is, the, again, painful white guy take. Because the only way that this touches him is the dialogue, is just the mere mention of it, is when he hears it. You know what I mean? So that's why in his mind, it's like, yeah, why are you still talking about it? Like, we've already moved on. He's like, I've moved on from it. Like, shut the fuck up. And it's crazy because, like, there's still very obvious material inequalities that exist and persist in contemporary society due to chattel slavery, and also what we did after the abolition of slavery. It's ridiculous to be like, oh, just uh, fucking move on, you know? Uh, I don't get it. Just stop talking about it. People wouldn't have to talk about it. By the way, talking about it shouldn't bother you. Unless you're a fucking racist piece of shit. But people wouldn't find themselves in need of talking about it if there weren't so many people who just, like, refuse to acknowledge it, you know? One, 
you know, uh, let alone offer any restitution whatsoever. Pointing to just who they are as an individual. I agree with you with that. That's the ideal. But what the evidence shows is that that's not what's actually in practice. I think we're doing better than anywhere else. That, that's true. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean a lot. Holy fuck. That is 1914. Cocaine fiends are a new southern menace. Murder and insanity increasing among lower class blacks because they have taken to sniffing since deprived of whiskey by prohibition. Oh my God. Those who are saying F are going to come back from that mini F to see the most unimaginable New York Times title I've ever done seen in my entire god dang life. That's insane. <sighs> They're nothing if not consistent. To be fair, they are very consistent. You are right on that. They are. Literally, look to how they cover Israel right now and what Israel is doing in Gaza. And then look back in time to see how they covered Adolf Hitler. And you will understand exactly what I mean. Okay? Straight up. There is never an atrocity that the New York Times will not whitewash. Okay, they love that shit. They're like, listen, I'm in it for all of the ethnic cleansing. Doesn't matter who's doing it, okay? If it's being done to Jews, I'm defending the guys doing the ethnic cleansing. If it's being done by Israel, I'm still going to defend the guys doing ethnic cleansing. It doesn't matter. I am pro-ethnic cleansing is the New York Times position. God damn. You inadvertently hit the nail on the head with, does this guy have any thoughts of his own? Even since 2013, I recognize that Elon's whole deal was his high levels of credulity. Whatever has his attention, he believes it to be real with little capacity for criticism. It used to be sci-fi video games that had his attention. Now it's his Nazi stands on Twitter. You always try to make... What? Bro, it's 6.43. Don't do that. It's 6.43. That's insane. Okay, you take, you're getting an hour off. Like, come on. That's insane that you tried to debate me. At, the, at a certain point, you're just being annoying on purpose. Wait, what? Makes better marksmen. Many of the wholesale killings in the South may be cited as indicating that accuracy is shooting in shooting is not interfered with is indeed probably improved by cocaine for a large proportion of such shootings have been the result of drug taking. But I believe the record of the cocaine N word paper record near Asheville who dropped five men dead in their tracks using only one cartridge for each offers evidence that is sufficiently convincing. I doubt if this shooting record has been equaled in recent years, certainly not by a man under the influence of any other form of intoxicant. I dare, I do declare, dare I say, for the bad marksmanship of the drunken man is proverbial, while the deadly accuracy of the cocaine user has become axiomatic in Southern police circles. Since everyone in authority in the South is alive to the dangers of the cocaine habit and eager to suppress it, two questions arise. How does the black man get his supply? 
and why do not the officers in authority prevent his getting it? <laughs> Cocaine refills your dead eye. Bro, Biden was in Congress when this was published. Okay, bro, this was 1918. Okay, or 1914. Okay, no. <laughs> All I'm hearing is cocaine makes you lock in. Yes. You want to know why you're hearing that? Because that is what they're saying. Because I don't think cocaine was illegal back then. That's the thing. It's just they don't like it when black people use it because it makes them really good at killing white people is the fucking article. They literally are saying this medicine is making black people kill white people too good. I don't know if you recall, I don't know if you understand, they're saying one black guy killed like five dudes. <laughs> okay, six years after, someone said cocaine was made illegal in 1920. Six years after this, they made it illegal. <laughs> no. Bro, hit the dead eye. Did a, new, uh, did a 1922 article advise not to worry about Hitler's anti-Semitism? An early New York Times reporter about Adolf Hitler woefully misjudged his virulence of anti-Semitism. <sighs> yes, they did. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. I was like, look at what New York Times is saying now. About like Benjamin Netanyahu, and then look at what they said about Hitler's anti Semitism. <laughs> New York Times on the 10th of February 2015 re released the first article they ever published about Adolf Hitler, who was the chairman of the Nazi Party. The story, dated in the 21st of November 1922, <laughs> opened with this introduction. I read The New York Times gave its readers a first glimpse of Hitler in a profile that got a lot of things right, his description of his abilities to work in a crowd and a fever pitch. Wait, oh, this is just like re-releasing it with notes. I want to see, no man, I want to see the OG one. Okay, here, 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 here. New popular idol rises in Bavaria. Hitler credited with extraordinary powers of swaying crowds to his will. Forms gray shirted army Armed with the blackjacks and revolvers and well discipline, they order, they obey orders implicitly. Leader of reactionary is anti red and anti Semitic and demands strong government from the United Germany. Next to the high cost of living and the dollar, the Hitler and his hacking Kreuzlers are the popular topic of talk in Munich and other Bavarian towns. This reactionary, nationalistic and anti-Semitic movement has now reached a point where it is considered potentially dangerous, though not for the immediate future. Hitler today is taken seriously among all classes of Bavarians. He is feared by some, enthusiastically hailed as a prophet and political economic savior by others, and watched with increasing sympathetic interest by the bulk who apparently are merely biding, biding by the psychological moments of Mount Hitler's bandwagon. Undoubtedly, the spectacular success of Mussolini and the fascisti brought Hitler's movement to the fore and gained popular interest and sympathy for it. 
Another condition favorable to the outbursts of movement is a widespread discontent with the existing state of affairs. Among all classes in the towns and cities under the increasing economic pressure. Hitler's Hakenkreuz movement is essentially urban in character. It has not yet caught a foothold among the hardy Bavarian peasantry and Highlanders, which would make it really dangerous. As a highly placed person, age put it, personage put it, Hitler organized a small, insignificant group of National Socialists two years ago. Since then, the movement has been smoldering beneath the surface. Now it has eaten its way through, and a conflagration, conflagration, of course, is not only possible, but certain if this now free flame of fanatical patriotism finds sufficient popular combustible material to feed on. He's been called the Bavarian Mussolini and the followers the Bavarian Fascisti. My girlfriend just asked what kind of gay German I'm watching. The best kind. Herr Hitler regrets he is unable to meet you as he is leaving town on important business for several days was the answer received by the New York Times correspondent. His important business was going to Regensburg mit Drei special train loads of Munich admirers for the purpose of holding a series of reactionary inflammatory meetings and incidentally to beat up protesting socialists and communists with blackjacks, if any dare protest, which is becoming increasingly rarer. His simple method is first propaganda. And secondly, efficient organization. He personally conducts patrioti what? patriotly revival meetings for this purpose, often descending from his stronghold Munich on other Bavarian towns with special train loads of followers. Oh. Where is it? In this article, they basically say he's probably simply making up the anti-Semitism and he's probably not being serious, basically. A common soldier is distinctive evidence of the exceptional bravery and daring. To the Bavarian mentality, he walks away rough, shaggy, sound horse sense. And according to prevent present Bavarian public opinion, a strong active leader equipped with horse sense is the need of the hour. Hitler's program is less interest than his person and movement. His program consists of chiefly half a dozen negative ideas clothed in generalities. He is against the Jews, the communists, Bolshevism, Marxian socialism, separatists, the high cost of living, existing conditions, the weak Berlin government. Anti-Semitism stuff is in the third last paragraph in the right column. Like here. Hitler is credited with having a rapidly increasing following amongst the workers disgruntled by the high cost of living. It is also said many ultra radicals, including communists, have flocked to his reactionary banner. He is beginning to draw support from the politically sluggish middle class, which in Bavaria, however, are not so sluggish as in Berlin. Even more significant, there is some active, more passive support, and to a still greater extent, sympathetic interest for the Hitler movement among the Bavarian nationalists. Oh, on the right column. I'm reading, I'm reading the, the left column. A sophisticated politician credited Hitler with a peculiar political cleverness for laying emphasis and overemphasis on anti-Semitism, saying, you can't expect the masses to understand or appreciate your final real aims. You must feed the masses with cooler morsels and ideas like anti-Semitism. 
it would be politically all wrong to tell them the truth about where you really are leading them. No, he was really leading them to anti-Semitism. <laughs> but several reliable, well-informed sources confirm the idea that Hitler's anti-Semitism was not so genuine or violent as it sounded, and that he was merely using anti-Semitic propaganda as a bait to catch the masses of followers and keep them aroused, enthusiastic, and in line for the time when his organization is perfected and sufficiently powerful to be employed effectively for political purposes. Oops! Turns out he wrote an entire book about this, and uh, maybe, maybe uh, he was being a little serious. It's a big oopsie from the New York Times. This was just a... Uh, uh, an oopsie, right? An oopsie of sorts, yes. Of course, New York Times would never do the same oopsie ever again. Time and time again. Every fucking, every fascist throughout history, every single one since the beginning of New York Times has gotten exactly this kind of coverage from the New York Times. Exactly. I mean, there's a possibility he personally did not believe it. He absolutely... Bro. If there's one guy who believed it, it's fucking Hitler. Are you kidding me? Hello? That's the one guy who definitely believed it. Like, there is no... That is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my entire life, dude. It is so much more insane than thinking at the top of the hour there isn't a three-minute ad break. Venza is one. So don't fall for it. Subscribe for five German franc, right? Or for free if you have an Amazon Prime account that you can connect to your Twitch account, right? And that way you will no longer see the try. Minuten. <laughs> Ad break. Commercial. I think he meant the author who wrote the article. Yes, a little bit of motivated reasoning, yeah. Powerful figure saying a whole bunch of anti Semitic things and anti communist things, right? Judeo Bolshevismus, right? Oh no, I only have Swiss franc. Deutsche Mark, not Frank, sorry. Okay, shut up. It's Euro, it's Euro. The German Frank, I fucked up. Okay, whatever, Sh suck my dick. Okay, here's the three minute ad break now. Sucking my dick won't help you with avoiding the three minute ad break. Deutsche Mark Franks with French, I think. <laughs> if there's one guy that believed it, it was the Grand Mufti, as we learned from Benny Morris. Yeah. Who taught Hitler everything he knows. Yeah, here's another good article. <laughs> this headline didn't age well. Jews voting for Hitler said to have played safe. Like, dude, dude, I'm telling you, these motherfuckers, man. From a trustworthy source, the Times publishes a story which says shows how some Chancellor Hitler's yes votes in the recent uh, plebiscite were obtained. The head of the Jewish community in the village of 2,000 inhabitants in Hesse approached the... Wait, isn't this literally uh, Burgomaster before the plebiscite, according to the story, fearing the Jews would be blamed for any no votes? He promised that all the Jews would vote yes. As proof, he had arranged that they would mark the ballots with green pencils. Like, every every article at the time... It's just like, what you have to remember is that, like, these articles at the time are documenting, obviously, historical facts. But one thing you have to, you have to remember is that the reason why I'm showing you this is because it 
it tells you like what the New York Times' role is, what the New York Times' goals are, what the New York Times, like what role it played historically and what role it still plays. Okay. That's what's really important. Oh my God, I just realized these were our newspapers instead of German newspapers. Oh. That's the reason why I'm showing you all this. Because, like, they play a role in normalizing some of the most horrific fascist tendencies because they're in a position of power in the Western world. Any kind of, from that same period, if you look to like our historic enemies or those we considered barbarian or lesser than those we wanted to dominate, you will see identical. Uh, you will see like circumstances where uh, the language changes dramatically, right? Not just normalizing their should up downplaying it when it's a white country, when it's like in our sphere of influence that we are interested in like maybe even aligning with where we have like a bunch of German people that are also white, just like we are right. The, the, the power structure dictates that you normalize their impact, that you downplay their severity. Okay. But if it's like a Brown country or if it's like a black person in the South, even domestically, because 1914, it's not that far removed from what we were just reading. Like, Think about the way that they were talking about black people in 1914 on the New York Times uh, versus think about how they're like talking about Hitler and the threat Hitler presents. And that sentiment still exists. And in some instances for the identical groups that we're talking about, no matter what the cruelty is, no matter what the actions are, if you are in... If you are a nation that is in the sphere of influence of American or Western liberal capitalism, you will get the exact same kind of writing. They will defend you. They will normalize the cruelty. They will contextualize the violence and say it's acceptable and it has to happen. Okay. But if you are victim to said cruelty from one of our allies, then they will talk about how you're barbaric. How you kind of deserved it. How violence is the only language you understand. And the same goes for foreign adversaries. Okay? Or countries that are outside of our sphere of influence at the time. The way that we write about China now. The way that we write about every other country on the planet that is not immediately in our sphere of influence... Or the way that we write about like brown nations and shit like that, nations of the global south, it's very different than the way we write about the same kinds of cruelty that we see in the global north. Okay? You contextualize the violence that happened under the USSR. Why are you such a hypocrite? Explain. I have the exact approach to American violence like allied violence in World War II on both fronts. Beyond that, I do not contextualize the violence that happened under the USSR. So unless you are completely oblivious to my assessment, you are mistaken. Do you get it? Yes, you do. You said the 1956 revolution was a counter-revolution. Do you think I think it was appropriate? The USSR actions were appropriate? Because I don't. I don't. Unless you think, like, me memeing about tankies is, like, uh, is, is serious.
I like that you already you already figured out what my opinion is, and now you're just you're you're mad that it doesn't correspond to what you thought it was. So now you're literally fucking just continuing on with your narrative. I like that. I like that you came here. I like that you came here. Ask me what my take was. I told you what it was. It literally was the exact opposite of what you thought it was. So now you're just keeping. Now you're just addressing. Now you are literally simply addressing takes that I already have addressed. That's awesome. This is why I can't fucking argue with so many people. It's just like I'm arguing with what you think I believe. They're 4chan butthurt Nazi on a sock account? No, they're now like uh, 4chan Nazis have evolved. They now believe in liberalism or at least claim that they care about liberalism. Okay, what is this? I have to, I need this AI and I will pay you back for the month subscription. Oh. Hello? Am I in the group? I don't know where the fuck... What is happening in this Discord, man? There's so much happening. Where is the... Oh, here it is. Nandre was exaggerating hello, a little hello. bit. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Pecker. What's uh, what's happening? Uh, I have to. Can what do I have to do? With? He I, look. Hold on. Let me guess. The son. You have no idea what's going on. No, I do know. <laughs> I do know. I'm on the Suno AI website right now. I know yeah. that we're gonna be duking yeah. it out. I know I'm gonna fucking destroy uh, son, Austin. Uh, uh, son, just in case you didn't know, this is not a sponsorship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a sponsorship. Wait, what? I didn't know if you were confused or thought this was a It's not. I'm on app.suno.ai uh, if anyone was. Oh. <laughs> um, wait. Is it a sponsorship? I'm confused now. No. What the fuck no. Is no. It? Wait. wait. Wait, are you not roped up in the management Discord email? <laughs> <laughs> you okay, do have the CTAs ready, that. right? You got the CTAs? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let me get Caroline to join. Hassan, you know, don't get psyched out. Right? We haven't even started yet. You can, can't get can psyched you guys out. Send me yet. Discord bubbles. Uh, uh, chat. Yeah. Will is doing another competition where we're gonna yeah, make the worst. I'll make Discord bubbles. With Suno AI, and uh, and and I am of course participating in it. All right. So Wait, Will think... made you guys sign the NDA too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Think everybody is here except for Caroline and Cutie Cinderella. Um, so we're just gonna wait on them. I'm making oh, bubbles. Women. Yeah. And guys, if you use code word Hassan for Suno.ai, you can get 50% <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is not true. All right. So, hang on. We're waiting for our last two. Was that Cutie? Yeah. Cutie's in here now. Right. Hello, Blair. That is my Hi, mic sound. Fucking awful. Even... Discord <laughs> bubbles are in the DM. Caroline, it's, it's kind of shocking that you're a professional bitch. streamer. She's calling uh, the who's calling the <laughs> Thank you, Nandre. No problem. Uh, Hassan, my because I don't really stream anymore from my house. <laughs> He's on a blue yeti for sure. I'm on, I'm on my AirPods. A blue yeti? Have you ever been to like your grandparents' house and gone to their computer setup? That's what my house looks like now with my computer setup because I never use it. Do you guys have? Do you want an improved Discord bubble that's like way sicker and way cooler? Yeah. Wow, that's so All mean. Right. Walla, uh, while it we're sounds getting like I'm ordering at a drive-through, fixing our Discord bubbles. Let me give you guys a little bit of a spiel about what's going on tonight. All right. So tonight I am allowing uh, some of my favorite stream friends. Without musical talent to basically whoa, whoa, make whoa. excuse me. What the fuck? You are gonna make even know how to spell music tracks, right? You're gonna make meme tracks 
and you're going to be judged by myself I don't why I and Carter it. here based on different oh God, God, uh, Caroline, you're sorry. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, all in the, I'm, I'm in it, but I can't. Here. Is Caroline talking to us? Bro, Does she know that I she's... swear, this is like a retiring no, home. on microphone. <laughs> Who's, she talk Who's Caroline talking to? Her chat. Demons. Wait, I, I'm doing like the rules of oh, a you tournament and you're just talking. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you could hear me because I couldn't hear anyone. Yeah, you see that bubble? We are the retiring home of Twitch. Okay, <laughs> press that and then change your input to you. That's awesome. God damn it, my AirPods have low battery. Son of a bitch. I gotta plug them in. God damn it, I gotta plug them in. How do I open up the control panel? Wait, you can't. I don't oh think you can God. plug your AirPods in and then ha and then if you still be able to use them. He's just clipping. The audio is just clipping. A lot of prune juice. What the fuck? It's like a decommissioned McDonald's intercom. This is so bad, man. No, I have to fucking plug. I have to put one in the case and charge one at a time. Okay, I'll get, get a three-piece chicken select, medium fry, <laughs> Diet Coke, easy eyes. Okay. Okay, C Caroline is sorted. All right, I'm going to give you guys a little spiel. Uh, I'm going to give you the rules and regulations. I'm going to give you the flow of the show. Here we go. Everybody's trap in. Okay, Talk so ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are going to be using a learning machine to create meme oh, tracks God. tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to let everybody know that these songs, they're not music. This is just a game. This is just fun. And I want to let everybody know that I am doing my best to also support real musicians in that every cent I make tonight is going to be paid to TJ and Carter to re-record one of the winner's songs. Yo. And we're going to take that re-recording. We're going to a vinyl pressing company that presses vinyls, and we're going to have a vinyl album pressed of your meme track as re-recorded by both Carter and TJ. Well, and then I'm... beyond that, I'm doing a hot sauce drop at the okay. end of this stream, and all the money I make from the hot sauce stream is going to go into a jingle jam where I am going to re-record all of my alert sounds uh, and in a, in a competition with any artists that are listening right now. And every cent I make on my hot sauce will be given out to the winners of the Jingle Jam. I, I have a so, question. Yeah. What if I'm still mad after all of that? <laughs> then I've then I've failed. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm but I've decided my that my madness has nothing to do with your ethics, but instead about how shitty my personal life is currently. I can. Fair, yeah. fair, fair, fair. I, so, another question: What if like the re-recording well, isn't as good? Oh, that, what if, what if <laughs> AI does better? Is the real question. Yeah, I, I don't. I doubt that is going to be a problem. But uh, okay. Are, are we sure we don't want to discuss the ethics of AI music? No, 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 no. <laughs> we could do a round table. Yeah, Austin, I do you want to so. kick us off? I believe. <laughs> I mean, that, I, should I be the, even... that should be the theme of the first set of songs. <laughs> ethics in AI. Hey, this is why you guys got to put me on Fear End. I promise you'll have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come on Fear End? Yeah, do you want to come on Fear End here? We discuss the ethics of AI music. Oh, okay. well, is here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Will, Will, I'm not gonna lie. I think this is the best group you put together so thank far. You, thank you, thank you. Will. Yes. How do I, how do I get people to hear you? <laughs> bro, 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 bro. <laughs> That's not, not real. That's, That's not real. <laughs> We're trying to. I've been trying to interrupt him. Why did you wait for him to explain the whole set of rules before because bringing that up? You're killing me. <laughs> I I kept trying to interrupt softly, and no one could hear me, so I thought I was muted. Um, you just have to make sure the disc. <laughs> Oh my god. Make sure that uh yeah that I'm on your, on your Discord. <laughs> mute Andre. He's out of the room. He's gone. 
All right. You just have to make sure that I'm coming into your Discord. Uh, or your your the the Discord is is wiring into your um Caroline, how do about. you expect to work an AI website? I don't. Um for some reason, Will, I'm it's not working. Okay, so I will I will come help you after I read the rules. Is that okay? Oh my God, you're so you're... lucky. Have will Caroline you... read the rules. Will you <laughs> Oh. Your Discord animation, every time you talk, you suck your own dick. That's fucking awesome. That's, that is true. Yeah, I'm giving that myself stuff. Uh, we are getting distracted. So awesome. Ladies Sorry. and gentlemen, listen. Sorry. Tonight is Sunovision, or Twitchovision, as I like to call it. And uh, there is going to be a, a series of brief rounds. The first one, okay, we're going to do an open hand song, which basically is for you to learn how to use the app um, to make stuff. You're going to use your name, only your name, in the prompt to record a song. We'll all listen to that, and then you'll know basically how it works, what, it, what to expect, blah, blah, blah. From that, we're going yeah. to go into round one. In round one, you're going to spin a wheel for what genre you are going to be making and then what lyrics you're going to be using, okay? What style of lyrics, all right? And then we are going to score that. At the end of that, four of you will be eliminated. Round two, um, you're going to use a random thing that we have to inspire what you are making. All right? Uh, you're going to have 30 minutes for that. I'll tell you more about that later. Two contestants are going to be eliminated. Then when we are down to the final two, okay, you're going to make a track that has a prompt again. We're going to score that. One winner selected. The winner gets to select one of the songs that was made during the stream. Uh, TJ and Carter are going to re-record it, and we're going to press it in vinyl for you to have forever, okay? All right, perfect. Sounds amazing. Okay, um, I don't... Something's happening with my camera now. <laughs> Oh this God. is a bit planned. This is a bit bit planned between Nandre and, no and, and Caroline. This is a bit. Caroline. This is a bit. Oh God. This is a professional God. comedy bit. St. Patrick's Day was yesterday. <laughs> this is really bad for Women's Month, Caroline. How are you? How are you fucking up this bad? No, my camera's doing my. <laughs> okay, we broke Nandre. Listen, first thing you have to do, guys, first thing you have to do as part of the competition, because this is an homage to Eurovision, is each one of you need to select a nation that you're going to be representing. Okay? okay, I can do so that. I can do that. Start doing that and say it out loud while I am frantically trying to help Carol. <laughs> Turkey. Oh. Lebanon. Oh, I'll actually make a notepad. I'll take yeah. America. Austin is Lebanon. Is America even in Eurovision? Uh, Hassan <laughs> is Greece. Oh, is it only Eurovision countries? Okay. Was, I thought it was just inspired Hassan by is Greece. Eurovision. No, Hassan is Turkey. Oh, oh tur Turkey. Oh, what's the difference? Also, Lebanon just... has never participated in the Eurovision contest, dude. It is now. All right. Okay. Eurovision historian. Uh, what? Hassan said Armenia. <laughs> 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 Armenia, I believe, has. Maybe we fix the Discord first. Oh, oh my God. One second, I'm fixing the Discord. Oh. Which one did you tell me? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's I'm just happy wrong, it's Suno? not me. Bro, Sierra, this is literally say? the link that will oh, link me. I didn't me. say... <sighs> Carter, <laughs> I will be Siri, taking... No, shut up. Carter, I will it's be taking Georgia. Nandre is taking Georgia. Do you oh know where Georgia God. is on a map, Nandre? I do, as of two days ago. Oh, that is true. Go Wait, uh, can you guys send okay. me the link for Suno, by the way? Because the link you guys sent me, Chad is saying, is the wrong link. For Suno? What? Yeah, it just I says like, oh, is this make a song that. with Suno? I just got to click on that, huh? Judy, what? Yeah, top right. Judy, you bought the, she, she didn't change it to monthly oh. billing and she did yearly for the most expensive. Oopsie. <laughs> oh, oh no. What have, what? okay. I don't know how to fix Caroline's <laughs> thing. Um, Oopsie, I, I'm going. I am looking to represent. Okay, so what? Caroline is purple now. What is happening? Oh, I have to create an account. I'm creating an account. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, did you all select your nations? Yes, I have, I have my nation. Okay, I have my nation. Go in order and tell me your nations. Okay. 
Wait, Austin, Marshall. Austin Marsh, I don't have OBS. Oh, I'm sorry. Austin, let me mute myself. Austin Show, Lebanon. Marsh for the okay, little dog. Lebanon, going to her house. Oh my God, it's trying to subscribe me to Suno Pro per year. What the fuck? Yeah, they yeah, the false to that. You got it. You got it. It's 200 bucks. Will will pay you back. Yeah, that's true. Will is paying us back. <laughs> it's ten dollars. Get the lowest one for ten dollars. No, I got. it's two hundred bucks. He'll pay you back. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no. I will, Judy. I will. But um, can you guys help me? Your your country that you are representing. Austin Show, Lebanon. Okay, Lebanon for Austin Show. What about Caroline? <laughs> How do I use my Microsoft Paint? <laughs> It's not having audio. <laughs> Why did you say that? Why did you say that? She's not even here. Why did you say that? Attention, Bo. I know. I, I, I want to give an update on Caroline. Uh, her situation is worsened on the camera front. <laughs> Wait, where is she? Caroline. Her? It seems like Caroline also lost. Uh, we, Wait, you guys could hear? We, we no, Caroline. We can't hear Caroline in the Discord, but Caroline thinks we can hear her in the Discord because she can hear us. She's muted. There's no way that she could possibly oh, think that. She's no, used Discord before. I think she's troubleshooting. Oh, oh there are like six oh. of you on your stream, Caroline. No, she's literally. She's that? genuinely confused. I, I keep. I keep cutting in and out. Like I can hear. Is our this voices Caroline's on her first stream? stream? Oh, man. It looks like a link later edit. Okay, can, can you please all announce your your all right. of origin? I am representing India. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nandre, I Georgia. I would have represented that. Okay. Georgia, Hassan. What? Turkey. <laughs> Turkey. Cutie Cinderella. Um. <laughs> All right. Um, I I'm at the Fire Nation. The Fire Nation from Avatar. Yeah. Okay, and Blake Wilder. Okay, can I represent the now defined like dissolved Yugoslavia? Is that possible? <laughs> yes. Oh, you can whoa, that's now sick. Okay. Oh, I got so, screwed. Oh, that's that's really really I got that. screwed. I did. Uh, where, where Nandre? What was your country? Georgia. Okay. Everybody has their country. <laughs> Uh, I didn't tell you this, but uh, part of your scoring is going to be based on national pride oh, during God. the competition. So you didn't know this, but <laughs> your <laughs> nation of origin is very important to your scoring. Okay. Okay. So Fuck. I'm really looking forward to the dissolved nation of Yugoslavia. <laughs> well, so just is that when we say... How would a war within the country affect enthusiasm? Lots of good music is made dude, out of war. Dude, are you kidding yeah. me? So many bangers. Just you know, okay. just just keep the Tito. Okay, great, and dude. Okay. Okay. Gentlemen, I think I'm, I think I'm the next out of Atlanta. We are going to move into our first round. We are going to move into our first round. <laughs> can't get Discord. Oh, oh wait, 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 Caroline, you're on the right mic now. Your camera. Caroline, fixed. your cameras. Wait, wait, Caroline, are you still back? I fixed my camera. I cannot get the Discord to play on my stream. Yeah, I, um, I think you're just gonna have to live with without our audio on your stream, Caroline. <laughs> I just changed the source in your OBS, the drop down. I, uh, I tried. Oh, I tried. Oh, Caroline, Caroline, just just download Team Viewer, and my man's Nico can Team Viewer in, and he can fix it. I promise, Lord Yo, Savior Jesus. Nico. I promise, so Nico can save. fix it. Damn, ladies just helping download ladies. Team Viewer. I promise he can fix it. Okay, so Women's month is me, so back. Let me get that team viewer link. <laughs> <laughs> do, do not give it to Nandre. <laughs> we are now 24 minutes in. This intro was supposed to take five minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, I, I I don't know if uh, Ali is coming. I think Ali is coming. Yeah, wait, where's Miss? I'm, okay, I'm downloading. Did she leave? I have I to take he... my dog out. She's... She needs to pee and poop, oh, but you. I'm I'm here in spirit. No, go take the dog out. We need we need you for the for the round. So go. No, don't go. worry. Don't worry, he's leaving. Okay. I am oh. actively I am actively doing research on Indian music at this moment. So if you have any insight on Indian music, feel free to educate me. Once it's in there, Caroline, you're just gonna paste your team viewer password into our Discord. Don't share it with your chat or anything. Uh, make sure they cannot see it, and you'll be able to go in there and make it. Very talented. Oh, God. My ads are sore. Yeah.
We are, we're off to a running start. Hey, Huh? Oh, uh, yes, Kitty said Roman. When, when did I turn coming to LA? <laughs> um, that's a good. I don't know. I currently don't know. Wow. I, I'm. Ag I'm. Ag I don't know if you know. I got. I got hired to make Indian music. Uh, do you have any? I'm, I'm now. Um, I'm now an Indian music producer. Do you have any interest in baking, per chance? I get baked. Really. <sighs> Judy, are you here to poach talent to. or are you here to make fucking beats? I'm here to poach talent, sir. Right. That, that noise lets me know that the dog has peed, so I think we are back. Okay. Oh, yeah. First round, ladies and gentlemen. You okay, you're starting. Did you download it, Caroline? I'm trying to. It's not letting me download it. What? Wow. I oh, there you go. Know. Nico linked a new thing. Just download the thing Nico linked. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, okay. Do all my songs have to be in Arabic? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Austin's there, mic is just, insane. There's just added points <laughs> for uh, for national pride. Oh. Okay. Dude, okay. you have Ray. You have Ray in the thing, and she's streaming GTA RP. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her in. Leave her in, man. Leave her in. Wait. Her I'm in. sorry. I missed it. We're supposed to be making a song about our nation? No. No, no, no. You, get, you just get added, like, bonus points for national wait, pride. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, raise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wait, I don't get it. What's going on with Ray? Uh, she's she just, she's just playing GTA. <laughs> hey, bro, can you, can you, uh, take my, uh, my stream that's paused from Discord. I, I will when I'm tuning in. I will go to your Discord if you just. Oh. Go. <laughs> uh. Okay, N Nico. I think I sent you. Can he hear? <laughs> yeah, Nico can hear. He's he, he's he's everywhere. He's in the walls. He'll he'll he, he got it. He'll come in just. Once you see the mouse move and stuff, just put your hands up and he'll do everything. We are now 28 minutes into the competition. I am, Dude, I am Ray, fine. Ray, Ray is just like me. She's hanging out with a bunch of clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got him. All right, we have an updated live view. We have an updated live view. Oh, it, the updated live view still has Ray in it. <laughs> that is, that's the wrong like. Uh, okay, so this first round, everybody open your music creator. All right, TJ is headed uh, to my house now, by the way. And what you're gonna do is just put your name in the prompt, right? And you can choose any genre Wait, you want. Do you go to explore? Create. No. Create. Create. Okay. Create. Custom okay. mode? Uh, here, I will I will pull it up as well. Well, you mean, okay. do you want us to put name in style of music or in lyrics? Here, I, I, if you guys want to tune into my stream, I will I will show you. Oh, okay. wow. Uh, Trying to get us to view his stream. Uh, typical, typical. Oh, I see right, how it right. is. Dude, yeah, he's, yeah, a yeah, yeah. he's a businessman. He's a businessman. He's got the suit on and everything looking dapper. Suits on for business time. Okay. All right, hang on one sec. Is that Scara? Yeah, that is Scara. So loud. <laughs> Okay, uh, hold on. Audio hold on. Control. Why am I not logged in? Everything's okay. Everything's going to, to heck in a hand. Oh, I know. Everything's oh. going to heck in a hand basket. Okay, <laughs> here's a pro tip is you should turn down Chrome in your volume mixer because that shit is loud. Yeah. That I, leave is it on, I leave it on max because I'm not a pussy. That's so fucking cool. That's basic. <laughs> All right, all right. all right, all right, all right. Oh, wait, it's not verifying that it's me. What the heck? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're gonna go to create on your on the tab, and then you're gonna use uh, version three point oh. Okay. Um, when you create, and just use your name in the in the creator. Where it's a song description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. we have to use our name in the prompt. Yes. Or you, you just want us to use the name 
just the name like we're not no description not any other like sort of context no because this is just an open hand this is just a so we, we choose custom mode and instrumental those should both be enabled uh you don't have to do instrumental you can generate lyrics based on your name if you just type your name in the lyrics too and hit generate it'll generate lyrics so we so, do want to select custom mode or no so straight up you just want us to type our name in and see whose name gives the best song is what you're well, saying this, yeah this is not at any points at all this is okay. just for this is just for a pride um, so this, this is, is for warm -up. On the on the song okay. description, we're not clicking on custom mode. We're doing song description. Wakes is going to be wild. On the song description, oh, we're just writing our own government name. Okay. So the My best thing to do bird. is write. You also, you also are going to want to you want to do custom mode. Click custom mode. Oh, uh huh. Okay, that'll give you more options. Uh huh. Create. Don Jimmy's got his his nips out. So thank you. So oh my God, the best she did it. just do a song or a genre about yep. and then whatever your country is that's the best way a blank you know a hip-hop song about greece or about yeah. serbia or whatever. on the title you're saying that's where we write wait i think we're, we're not about to use custom mode all right yeah. i think it's just yeah, song description. Mode later i think well, is what will well, I, I, yes. well, well let me translate one time you all you want us to do right now is type our name in song description and hit create right that, yes genre yeah Okay. You have to put a blank song about uh, Will, the song, about a Andre. Little, a thing, though. If it doesn't understand the keyword, it will default to, to, to something. Right. Okay, so I would recommend using custom mode because you're going to be using it for the rest of the tournament. So just, I would use it. Okay. Click into custom mode. So we click on make your own lyrics on custom mode. Yeah, and then if you if you type in your name in that bar alone and hit generate, it'll generate oh, lyrics. Oh, I see what you want. I see what you want. Okay. Wait, okay. this already made lyrics about coffee or some shit. I don't know why. So if you delete all that, Hassan, I'm watching you right now. Uh huh. I'm gonna go back to song description and I'm gonna say. Okay. Wait, go back to custom mode. You're not in custom mode. I'll go okay. to custom mode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, this thing is more talented than me, right. I'll be honest. Delete, delete all those lyrics. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Now just type Hassan <laughs> Piker in there. Uh-huh. And, and then generate the lyrics. You don't want me to say a song about blank in Hassan no, Piker? Generate lyrics. Just hit generate lyrics. Okay. Uh -huh. my, mine ignored my name. Things are so dangerous. Right. Get well, good. I mean, that, that's, that's the risk you run. That's crazy you, 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 that it has, it knows yeah. me. There you go. So it, it generated lyrics on you. And then style of music, also just write Hassan Piker. Oh, Yo. I did. Okay. Oh. And then you're you're also yeah. going to want to name your song because that's going to help you organize for later. This is the, the, the and title I'm assuming already, you want to probably title. name that Hassan yeah. Piker. I, I think the title is pretty good. It says the voice of okay. the future. That's There you go. Perfect. And then you yeah. want to make sure you're in volume or version three. Okay. Now, everybody generate their first song. Wait, but so it's Will, lyrics. Is anybody else style is of music and is title. Also, is, does anybody else have a name that's also a major city? Because it's it's causing issues with my song. Do you have to write I, Boston? Try Hassan style. Piker. This is just a this is just a warm up. You okay. Gotta, yeah. Question as well. What are we putting in for style of music? Just letting it roll. Okay. No, yeah, I, I would just say put your name in for style of music. This is just to learn how to use the thing, guys. This is not this is not okay. sporty at all. This is literally just how how to use this software. Can I, okay, can well, I, I know how to use it, so I'm going to put it in a genre. Because they're pretty good. Okay. I, I, I think this is a banger. So we go to create, it's, yeah? It's pulling yeah. up. T I, I'm getting two songs every time. Yeah, is that normal? Get, okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we did the... This is the tutorial level, guys. Everybody. I, I've created have. over 500 songs okay, on so here. We so we go into yeah. create? Yep. Oh, I forgot to generate lyrics. Custom mode. Lyric. So is your song just one lyric and it says cutie Wait, Cinderella? In the lyrics yeah. and then hit generate. <laughs> okay, I did not I did not generate lyrics, so it was just a guy singing Wake Wilder over and over again. And, uh, uh, we're going to take into your stream and just uh, please uh, go ahead and play that the second one. <laughs> so I'd give you the green light on that. I have to generate more songs. Turn them up a little bit. Play that Wake Wilder. Okay, He's got the charisma. Oh my Scott god, this is a banger. Hassan Piker, the voice that's red. <laughs> Speaking truth with every word he says. 
challenging the status <laughs> Okay, wait, fire away. Okay, so you guys kind of all get it. He's on a mission to break the mold. Unafraid to speak up and be bold. Standing up for justice day and night. Using this platform to shine a light. Hey, Will, can you hear my audio when you put my screen? The voice of the future. Yeah, I can. Speaking out for the unheard. With passion and conviction, he's on a mission. <laughs> oh, the mic is so good. <laughs> Are you, you hear it? I'm, I'm watching this off. I'm playing it. I've been playing it. Uh, I'm going to it up. Oh. Yes, I can hear it often. Perfect. Okay, cool. Okay, but this is this brings up a good point. This is not how you're going to actually share your music with me. The way you're going to share your music with me is by sending the link that it generates mm. into the chat associated with this conversation. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. I will. I will play your songs that you're actually submitting for each round. Again, this was an open hand, guys. This was okay. a tutorial level. Does everybody feel like they have a relative level of confidence? No. Well, I'm ready I, to take I, this I, to Eurovision right now. Like the song I, that we have. I am gonna go help Caroline two seconds. I Wait. Well, I, I just want to double check here. So I'm supposed to put my name in oh, the no, lyrics, right and then I click generate lyrics, or do you no, want me to just I do my name? multiple times yes generate lyrics <laughs> oh my god you're so loud oh my god wait who just was that Haas? who was that loud i need to lower their audio what the fuck is yeah, yeah sorry sorry there. i lowered it just... please okay is my mic sound any better yeah what is happening i don't know <laughs> Maybe open it on a different browser. I'm never inviting Caroline to a gaming night ever. She's simply too and stupid. Then... <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> women hurting women. Okay, it's working. It's working. Wait, is, uh, is women month over yet? Caroline. No, bitch. We got 12 more whole ass days. We got 13 days actually. Oh god, okay. All right. Um, yay, I love women so much. Happy Women Month. Thank okay, you. Okay, so it's working. So you kind of get how women are natural it? and beautiful. Okay. We love vaginas. Go vaginas. God. No one fucks with you two. Oh, yeah. except we have each other, right, Hassan? Yeah, we I'm do. Back. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for making your first, um, foray into Sonovision. Very proud of you all. Now it is time to begin round one. I want everyone to hear my first song. Okay, please link it in the chat then, and I will click it. Okay. How do I link it? Uh, you do the little uh, export link, and then you put it in the chat, uh, Sonovision Music, and I will click it. Where I don't know how to get to the chat. Uh, I'm the, just putting it in our, <laughs> our Discord DM. Oh, show chat. My song was very nice to me. Boom. I did it before, Cutie. Please play mine first. No, you didn't. What chat? I'm in our Discord DM. Where are you? Cutie, yeah, yours, no. yours kind of sounds like a, a Disney Channel intro in a okay. good way. The first one we'll be playing is I'm playing it now. How does the AI know who I am? I wonder why. <laughs> you know what? Mine was generic fucking lyrics, dude. It didn't know shit about me. Loser. What did it say crazy. you? You're a Weasley little liar, dude. A Weasley little liar. Okay, that's not what it says. It says I have charisma and the flair <laughs> and the voice that's rare. Speaking truth with every word I say. Challenging the status quo and turning heads. I'm on a mission to break the mold. Unafraid Can to you speak sing up and it? be bold. Can you sing it? Can you sing it instead well, of saying I, I'm it? I'm actually listening to it now. Oh, I didn't even see it. Oh, you posted it in this chat. Oh. oh Austin just posted his lyrics about the song. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> Austin, come on, man. Austin Are you even serious? Sing his song. He just sent the lyrics. He just. Thank you. Thank you for the submission. Thank you. Okay, I need to listen to Austin's song. Extremely Mormon coded. 
fucking created the AI created. Okay. Tell me how to eat and never stop. The name of Austin comes to you and they rise to the top. At least he's gay as hell. Survive the game. That sounds like propaganda. That sounds like a Mormon church song. Yeah, what? Don't say that about my church. Listen, I hey, I'm not hating. Austin, this song is so gay. I don't know how it picked up on your vibes like that. I, uh, I, what? It's, it's all about Austin, Texas. I don't know why. Yeah, but it, the energy is like someone in the chat said it's like a Troy Savon song. No, it's not. You don't have, you don't listen to Troy Savon at all. Wait, this is Troy Savon is gay? Welcome yeah, down what? <laughs> what? <laughs> No, 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 no. Hey, get this, Andre. Not only is he gay, this is what's crazy. He's a top. <laughs> Wait, Andre, you're. Why does it think the Andre is a thing? Because I am, bitch. I'm it's him. Like a state of mind. So, Andre's is called Andre Fever. I will mute and listen to it. Hold on, two seconds. <laughs> What is this Wait. sensation that's filling the air? Man, then I'm it's the latest craze. Everybody's catching on in so many ways. In so many ways. With a funky beat. Mine's gonna go viral on TikTok. I can already tell. Spreading like a wildfire. So, Nandre, Nandre, can't you feel it? Why did she say Nandre with a Spanish Oh my god. Swagger. Okay, is K-pop this generic that you can like literally churn out a K-pop song on an AI machine on accident? Like, what the fuck's you going on? You are summoning the horde right now, Hassan. Wow. You got to be very careful with your next few sentences here. Not it's great. actually not bad. Fever is spreading like a wild fire. Okay. Does anybody else want to share their song for the open hand tutorial? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm ready to go to my challenge now. Okay, it's time for the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, it is now time. time. I was up. I had to run to get some groceries. How are we submitting these? I missed that. <laughs> what? Sorry. There's a chat right above there's, us. This there's is there's in a chat, but Don't worry. This is just oh, the tutorial round. Okay. Still? <sighs> We're still in tutorial. It's been 42 minutes. Guys, I'm trying my fucking best here. I am not the one dragging back. You, you can't hear it. Okay, sick. Ne neither can I. Okay. <laughs> Carol, I'm still still talking to herself. To <laughs> I don't know. She's just doing fucking uh, stupid. I'm sorry, what Nico. You, you can't help okay. her. Round one. This is 20 minutes. Wait, right wait, 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 wait. Please, uh, uh, allow me to take a piss real quick, please. Oh, my God. Go. Hey, I'm the least of the problems oh, here. No, I am no. the least of the problems here today. I will piss on my own time because I'm not selfish. Just be like simply, man. Just pee all over your keyboard and your screen. Oh my gosh. Okay. While he is peeing, I'm going to mm -hmm. read this twice so there's no confusion. Mm. Round one is going to be 20 minutes that you have to generate your song. Okay. The lyrics will be about the greatness and glory of the country you are representing. Okay. We also have a genre wheel, all right? The genre wheel, you will each spin to get your genre, okay? Mm -hmm. That, there, no, there's no uh, repeats, so I'm linking the genre wheel in our chat now. If I so don't get rap music, I'm leaving. So well, we're going to go we, in order. Do we have to use exactly what it says for the genre and the style of music box? You have to, you have to have that genre in there, but you can add more to it. Yo, good yeah, rule, make... good rule set. Okay, the song so... that wins better not be rock. I'm just gonna say it. Judy, I'm, I'm watching you. Please spin the wheel. <gasps> okay. Oh, uh, I'm nervous. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm opening it. Um. Yeah. Oh God, there's so much. Okay. Um. Oh, <gasps> click. Uh, oh. <gasps> <gasps> yeah that's just what i wanted kind of okay you don't have it on screen so i don't know what <laughs> <laughs> it's on screen uh oh it's a little delayed what did you get 
Don't talk to me like I'm Caroline. I don't know what I'm doing. Damn. <laughs> bounce hip hop. Got bounce it. Okay. Cutie Cinderella will be doing bounce hip hop. Oh, Grunk would have been awesome, though. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, who wants to spin the wheel next? Why don't me. I just spin the me. wheel for me. everybody? Me, me, me. Uh, yeah, Cutie Cinderella will spin the wheel for everybody. Yeah, that's uh, so much spin easier. The wheel, spin the wheel for Hassan. Go ahead. No. Okay, Hassan. Hassan, I shut like the fuck spinning. up. You would, it, it's just faster this way. Okay, Hassan I spinned gets. It already. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't like mine though, so if you got. Okay. Hassan gets. Vocaloid. <laughs> yeah, sounds about to make a Porter Robinson song. <laughs> Hatsune Miku? Yeah, Hatsune <laughs> Miku. That's amazing. Okay, That's unreal. All right, cutie, please. Happy birthday, Miku. For, please. So I, I write for, that in the style of music. Hatsune Miku. Yeah, you can add to that. It just has to have that as one of the descriptors. Oh, so you can add a bunch of stuff. You can say vocaloid, horny, bouncy, chaotic. Violent deep bass synth, and you, that'll give you something. Uh, yes. Note, okay. note for okay. the editor: draw Hassan as Hatsune Miku on the thumbnail, please. Thank you. Uh, can um, you please spin for Seer now? Seer, yes. Oh wait, you're spinning for me? Yes. Yes. Oh shit! All right, uh, what do I do? Just you don't do wait. anything, cutie spinning. <gasps> Cyber grind. It was almost Christmas, which was really no. shot. What the Cyber fuck is Cyber grind? What the fuck go, is grind. Cyber grind? Well, right. find out. All right, next, let's spin for Austin Show. Austin, Indian Cyber Grind. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, <laughs> you want me That's to show my making. screen with you? I mean, I'm showing. No, no, no. Cutie's okay. spinning for you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Oh, Cutie's spinning. For you? Okay, go ahead, Cutie. Euro Dance. Euro Dance. Oh, Lebanon. That's very good. Nice. Lebanese Euro Dance. Okay. Yeah. Right. Please spin for Nandre. Please. Please. <laughs> Give me ska. Give me ska. <laughs> please, 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 please. French okay. pop. Oh, 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 oh what a win. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And then Wake Wilder, please. Yeah, this time, though. Okay. 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 Come on. Here we go. Ska. Ska. <laughs> hey, ska. <laughs> oh, it was so close. Yacht Rock. Yacht yeah. Rock? Rock? Oh, Yugoslavian Yacht Rock is an oxymoron. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Caroline Kwan, please spin for Is it going to be about <laughs> abol uh, the abol abol <laughs> abolishing yachts? <laughs> Wait, is it Yugoslavia landlocked or was? <laughs> no, no, no. We had, we, had, we had water. Disney. Caroline got Disney. 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 Yo. What? Big. Okay. So, guys, one more time, oh, I'm going to be I giving you the rules, like and then I'm going to set you free, and you are all going to mute in this Discord, except for Carter and I. Yep. We're going to be tuning into your streams and judging what you're doing over the next 20 minutes. One more time. Here's the description of the round, okay? okay. 20 minutes. The lyrics that you're going to make are about the greatness and glory of your country. You have just spun the wheel for your genre. That must be in your song style description, but it doesn't have to be the only thing. You can add big bass, solo, blah, 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 blah. You can also add things to your lyrics, like spoken word intro or chorus in brackets above it to change your lyrics a little bit, okay? So out of curiosity here, yes. are we able to say like, Yacht rock hip hop or something, yes, or do, is yeah. it no more genre? Yeah. Okay, you, you can add more, but it just has to have that one genre. Yeah, and please okay. do that because otherwise, all the songs are going to sound half of you. Yeah, I, I, oh, I, 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 I never chose a country, guys. I, I, Wait, I, I, I need uh, to say um, something. Ireland, oh, okay, Ireland. okay, yes. Uh, I, I've you, I have spent many, many, many hours on this, on this website. Mm -hmm. If if you add lyrics to a genre that might not usually have lyrics, it will default to a different genre. So I'm just saying it defaults to things if it doesn't understand what you're trying to get it to do. So it might not fall into the categories that we want them to fall into. Well, you have 20 minutes to figure that out. At the wait, end, wait, yes. I was just going to say, where, 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 do we, where the hell do we put in the, the genre here? Is it under style of music? Style. Yeah, style. To, yeah, style. Go to custom at the top. I'm at, I'm at custom. Euro and then I just type in Eurodance. Yeah. And then you can add okay. more. Things. Okay, listen. Yeah. We, at the end, you're going to send your songs to the Discord. We're going to go over them, right? 
Half of you will be eliminated. Your scoring, again, is as follows. Lyrics, 20 points. Use of the genre, 20 points. Chat score, 20 points. And overall quantity or quality, 40 points. Now, during the round, there's going to be one opportunity for the chat to sabotage you. If they choose you for the sabotage, you must spin a wheel called the Wheel of Sabotage, which you will have to add that word to your creation of your music. Words include loud, honking, chalkboard, 8-bit, freaky, Christmas, etc. Okay? No. What, a question? Yes. Can we do any anything, any resources can be used when helping write our lyrics? Yes. Okay. All right. Your timer, I shared it in the in the Discord if you want to see, but you can always check my stream. You have 20 minutes. You can always look at my stream to see how much time you have. The time starts. Wait, one second. Can how we do we get the songs? How do, how do we get sabotages? How do we, how did that happen? Chat, chat, chat's voting for that. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Oh. So you will all mute when I say time starts, except for Carter and I. You guys are understand muting that? our our no. like Wait, just our mics or like I'm, I'm deafen? Okay. Got it. Or, yeah, deafen, okay. deafen. Okay, okay, okay. All right, time starts now. All right, there they go. Carter, mm -hmm. how are you feeling about these contestants? I'm just hoping a rock song doesn't win because I'm going to have to hire a band, okay? Okay. Because I that. can't make rock music, dog. That, that is <laughs> TJ could probably definitely help with that. Okay. Law tip. <laughs> so rock commas. music better not win, dog. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I deafened them. I thought I, okay, let's hear it. All right. So I went with Vocaloid Patriotic Japanese City Pop March and Ottoman. And the title is City of Sultan version three alpha. We created two songs. Let's take a look at the first one. How do I change it? Oh, maybe I take the Japanese out of the city pop and then try it again. You might have to create a ton of iterations, just FYI. Let's see. <laughs> This one. How do you extend it in, in Turkey? Hasanabi's in Turkey and Eurovision because they found their song. That one is so stupid. You can also affect the tempo with your prompts. Hit the three dots to the right of the song. And then what? Remix? Continue from the song? Can I remix it or no? Refresh the lyrics for sure. Start them in English. Okay. Continue. 
Put a solo, put a solo. Here, I want to hear what they, part two. Delete the other ones. They're going to get cluttered real fast. Don't worry. Wait, if I downvote, does it delete? Yeah, okay. I have to pee real bad. Spoken word into detailing the historic creation of Istanbul. Do I, where do I put that though? Okay, let's hear the second. One. Vocaloid makes it so hard for me to make it like, I, I, I feel like this is a keeper though. You know what I mean? How do I make it slower tempo though? I just, I don't know how any of this shit works. Reset it to English? How, what do you mean? Do not slow down the tempo. It's a... Prompted to reduce BPM. Where do I prompt it, though? Mena Instruments. Or do I just start from the... Just save that one first. Wait, which one do we go with? so funny that they got the look at this flag dude god ai is so stupid you can have vocaloid less priority to get more lyrics through and add different style words like slow soothing quiet relaxed power ballad so this is what we got deleting these wait which one do i like the second one or the first one
Be really descriptive with the structure of the song. Slow build up, strong chorus, etc. It's too late, chat. Either we're going with this or we're not. The fuck do you want? Start working on the lyrics. You got time? How do I work on the lyrics? I don't think I can change it. Right? I think this is pretty good, though. Like... Delete and put a new prompt and generate a new one. Why? This is pretty good. I like this. Dude, this was a very, really dumb idea to like ask chat anything. I, Cause like, I'm looking for very specific shit. Delete the one that says credit refunded. It got glitched. Where does it say credit refunded? What? Third one down, changing the world, sunrise to sunset. Oh, this one. Oh, this one got credit refunded. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, delete the one that says top of the hour ad break. Fucking Christ. I am panicking a little bit. Will is right. Uh, I, I, here's the three-minute ad break right now. Fuck you guys. Okay, yeah, do the lyrics make sense? Yes, from the East, they marched with the fierce determination. Mehmet the Conqueror led his great nation to the walls of Constantinople. They came ready to rewrite history's name. Beneath the sky, the Ottoman banners unfurled as they stormed the city, changing the world. From sunrise to sunset, a battle was waged for Mehmet. The prize was not to be swayed. Istanbul, city of Sultan. The chorus goes fucking extra hard, by the way. I don't want to make another song! Fuck! Y'all are so dumb! Shut the fuck up! Shut up! I like this song. I want to finish off the song. I don't know how to finish off the song, though. Here's how to make it a full song. Extend your favorite clips using the continuation feature. Is this, am I breaking the rules if I do that? Like, how do I link these two songs together so it's like two songs? And no, I can't make the lyrics, uh, voices. The fucking, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so mad. Why am I asking chat? Get whole song. Oh, this is the full song. From the Wait, what the fuck? Keep going. Why is it not going? 
Okay, I'm going to try to make a full song off of this, maybe. Wait, what? Unmute. Need to get her. What's up? Hello. Hi, uh, Hassan. Uh, unfortunately, you uh, received our next uh, um, sabotage, so you have to add this word to your song description. I'm spinning the wheel for you now. You have six minutes to implement this. You're our last sabotage of the round, and the word is... Siren. Okay. So uh, you got to add that to your sound description. Siren. I'm sorry. The people. Yeah, your it. style. Wait, of music. So in a style of music, I just put siren in it. Yes. Yep. And then I restart the song or something. Like how do how does that work? Yep. How do I? You have to add that to the full song. How do I do that? Oh my uh, god! What is happening? <laughs> you click I the just... three dots and then do continue yeah. this song. Yes. Okay. Uh, on the right in like your area. Yeah. Okay. Continue from the song. Yep. And then I, uh, and I hit siren. And, and then, then you, I, on the other side, you hit continue at the bottom left. Yeah. Okay. I already, I already put the siren in there. So let's see. So that has to be not in the lyrics, but instead in the style of music. Yep. Truly a curveball. Truly. Oh my God. I have so many fucking misogynists in my chat being like, try vocaloid low male voice. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's fine. This voice is fine. I'm gonna need you to mute again. You have four minutes and fifty seconds. All right. Okay. Wait, why do I keep getting credits refunded? Like this doesn't make sense. I think it's like being it's like busted for some reason. I think I'm breaking it. Wait, hold on. I'm going to try to continue it from this one. Uh, continue from this song. And then add Siren into it. Let's see. Oh, fuck. I should do a zero, zero, right? Continue from zero, zero. Please fucking kill. Ah! Ah! I know! I just wanted to listen to the first song first! So I can listen to the second part! Like a full continued song! Shut the fuck up, chatters! Shut the fuck up!
and then I do, and then I do, uh, what do I do? Do I do like on this part, I say Vocaloid, Patriotic City Pop, March, Autumn, and Siren, and then like end of the song or something? On your lyrics box in the top right, you can add something like guitar solo or outro, and it will add it in. Okay. So that's number one. This is how it starts. This is part two. And then I'm going to say continue from the song. And I'm going to say. Please try a different lyric prompt. I'm going to, I'm going to delete all this and then I'm going to say outro. Will says to unmute. Being right now, cutie, by the way, please say hi to TJ. He's here now. Hi, TJ. Hi. Oh, Austin doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, he'll, I hope he figures it out. <clears throat> I'll, I'll text him. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, um All i have right. both the judges here now so your 20 minutes is up please submit your first song to the discord chat okay the second one is winning i'm a good people you do that oh fuck okay. i i fucked up okay how did you fuck up i i accidentally put a style of music end of the but i hope it didn't fuck it up we're about to find out i don't know okay. how to connect all the three parts by the way uh, three fuck. parts i three didn't even until 30 seconds before that, and then you could add on to one that you already made. Three parts. You can Excuse go to the second thing and you finish. Off. Yes, three parts. Uh, hello, this is a fucking masterpiece. Are you insane? Yes, I made a three part song. Okay. One second. Well, there's my the link I have is Nandre's song. Oh, shit. Well, I, I, time's up, yeah? Wait, album art. Yes, time is up. Uh, okay, all right. Well, wait, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I, for the record, <laughs> mine, my album is the only one where. I'm I'm muting them. I want to hear it. I want to hear the song. This is it. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Send link within one minute or disqualify. This is Peach's computer. Oh, all right. I'm I want to make sure there wasn't anything bad on here. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sending yeah. a three-parter. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry that it's three parts. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. This is how masterpieces are made. Here's part one. Uh, only to be... <laughs> Followed very fast by part two. You okay. have to, in, in order part. for, in order for everyone in your community to be able to glory, to, to understand the glory of what was just created, you're going to have to play it really fast in a row. Like as though it's a continuous song. Okay. okay. Thank if you. If it's not work. played in a, as a continuous song, it will ruin it. The it's going to fall apart. Very it's not going to work out that well. And okay. it, I, I feel like you've already lost. How do you how do you combine them into one song if you've got two parts? Uh, you do finish song on the second part. But okay, so here's how we're going to oh do it. Oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry, but it, I promise it's not bad. I'm if you if you need more time, you just everybody. I need everybody to mute. Don't deafen because I want you to listen. The judges and I are going to listen to the songs now, okay? Mm -hmm. But each mm -hmm. one of you are going to have a chance to present the song, your genre, your nation, and why you think uh, it deserves to move on to the next round. So everybody mute, except uh, Nandre. Where's you're Seer? Up. I'm right here. No, no, his song. Is it in there? I, I posted it. I posted he, posted it in the, the, he posted it in the, the DM. I have a question. I have oh, a question. Well, if I, if I look at the, the, the version, the... like the last part of my song, and if I say get full song, will it automatically combine first part, yes. second part, and third part? I, yes. I do not know, but if it doesn't, we can just listen to the individual three parts. <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first up, Nandre. 
Please Yo. tell us about your country of origin and your genre and your song a little bit. Uh, so my country of origin for the uh, 2024 Will Neff Suno Vision AI generated music contest yeah. is Georgia. Sure. And I picked it because it is a country that shares its name with a state in America. Okay. And uh, luckily for me, on my genre wheel, I pulled French pop, which is... Austin, are you okay? What's wrong? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, you should be muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. I... <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. My man. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh anything you want to say about your track called Georgia House Freaky? It's actually the Georgian national anthem. Okay. Because the lyrics are the English translated lyrics of the national anthem with a few ad libs added in from your boy. Excellent. Creative. Mm -hmm. So it is the Nandre remix of the Georgian national anthem. All right, uh, we're going to listen to your song now. Please mute. My bike on is on another land and the whole world is it. The dawn star rises up and shines out Today our freedom sings to the glory of future The dawn star rises up It shines out, big sweet to see It's pretty good, but Please speak to liberty Please speak to liberty Charge out my mind Freaky funkers get your crew It's not Istanbul city of Sultan. Wait, what is this called? Today our freedom sings to the glory of future. The dawn star rises up. It shines up between two see. I cooked. I cooked. Not mine. Mine is better. <laughs> then no, then I would give it a seven. Seven or an eight. Okay. Yeah, eight. Let's do eight. Actually, I mean, like, Let's do actually eight. good or like what's what are you? However, <laughs> however you want to score it. Okay. It is, uh, it I'll, is, I'll TJ, it, let me give it a reminder. It is the actual lyrics from the national anthem of Georgia, <laughs> verbatim, with a couple added ad libs. So, the all my Wait, Georgian I'm, listeners, ad -lib, not freaky funkers, get your freak on. No, that's actually from it. Okay, <laughs> no, it's not that's canon. The glory, the glory I'll to I'll God, God you... line. That one was an ad bro. Uh, can I just say something? I got yeah. a text message from my friend. <laughs> yeah. Alex baby no money music sure and he said you knew I was watching Lem FAL you listening to Georgian music so he immediately picked up that it was Georgian yes! music that's wow. a PB no money Whoa. fucking wow. sponsor yes. Wow. Yes. are you yes. fucking kidding we gotta, me we and gotta I, give that and I, are you kidding me I it's also say I sure. also say to say that it's ska is a very, very Americanized perspective. <laughs> when ska has yeah, derived uh, from other cultures. Here, music. I'm gonna need you Especially to Especially Georgian music. I'm gonna need you to mute, please, sir. All right, okay. <laughs> um so what was your score? I'll give him three points for the words <laughs> freaky funkers. Okay, so that's a total of ten points out of twenty for lyrics. Please bring our scoreboard up, Haas. Now on genre. His genre was French pop. How yeah, did you it. feel about the genre, host? You each get ten po out of ten. I give him a one. A one. <laughs> <laughs> this is not even fucking close to French anything. Okay. Debatable, but okay. Yep. You're a uh, jungle. I don't know much about French pop, so I'll give it a 
three since I don't know what it is, though I'm pretty sure it's not that. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then chat score uh, was out of 20 points. They scored it a three out of five. So that would be a three, six, nine, 12 out of 20, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, last one. This is overall quality. No, Jay, you fucking this, suck. This is intangible. <laughs> this is just how, how the Georgian National Anthem remix made you feel. Judges, this one is out of 40, so you get to score each out of 20. Do you understand? You each get 20 points to assign. Carter, how would you feel about the Georgian National Anthem? It was pretty sick. I get a 15. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. 15 out of 20. Okay. Yo, yeah. yo, it's pretty good. I'll give it a 75%. Yeah, listen, I'm oh a hard. That's God, exactly bro. what pretty got, good is. What do you mean? What do you you mean? got what you wanted. All right. Yeah, more than you bargained okay. for. I got the BB no money fucking sponsor. All right. I, I could walk away. I don't think BB no money. You're making French house freaky 132 BB. I don't care. I'm, I'm about putting out good tracks. I'm about putting out faithful music. Something that's for the spirit right, of the no, 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 artist. No. Here's the thing, though. We have to decide was this faithful to the genre or faithful to, like, you know, the country itself? Yeah, because the two are exclusive at this point. Judges here for this reason. Everybody mute. Defending my art. TJ. Uh, I think there's a big difference between like it being a banger and it being entertaining or funny. Sure. It was very entertaining and funny. Banger, I wouldn't say as a banger. I'll give it an eight out of 20. An eight out of 20. So, uh, Haas, can you please bring up our uh, scoreboard for our first complete score? Um, so that was a 15 out of 20 and then an eight out of 20. And added together, that's uh, Haas got that. You guys can do the math on that one. All right, thank you, uh, Nandre, for your first submission. We now go to our second. Twenty-three is the final score on the overall quality. Um, we are now going to go to our second submission. Come on, City of Salt. Okay, which is Austin Show. Austin Show. Okay. Inshallah. I'm I'm here. Sorry, I had to find unmute. Uh, yes. Hello. Thank hey, you for having we me. Can you tell us about your nation of origin and your song? Uh, well, thank you, Will. Uh, my nation of origin is Lebanon, uh, which was chosen uh, because of my heritage. As all of you know, I'm proudly Lebanese. Um, and I wanted a song wow. that, that really showed the world that we have the most beautiful women on the planet Okay. The, pr the problem is, is I didn't know time was up. And also my Arabic is a little rusty. I haven't spoken it in a while. So I mixed up Inshallah with Mashallah. Okay. Uh, which oh my is God. a very uh, critical mistake because Inshallah you... means God willing and Mashallah means in the eyes of God. And so uh, neither one of our judges speak that language. So you probably could have mm -hmm. just not mentioned i didn't know but now i know that minus yeah, one. now they know no 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 what i'm what i'm not what i'm not telling the judges is inshallah when you mean when you say god willing god willed it to have the most beautiful woman in the world so what i'm trying to say is it's really a non-factor and enjoy the song thank you so much okay i'm <laughs> linking the song in my chat in case people want to listen along on their own and now i'm going to play the song what is the name of your song Lebanese uh, beauty. Lebanese woman, such a breathtaking view. Their beauty beyond any speech. Oh, yeah. Inshallah, their beauty shines so bright. Inshallah, captivating hearts. Bro, this is like. This is like a white guy doing. What they think is like African music, okay? In in the tone of like Christian rock. Sophistication in every move. This is Israeli music. Oh and then my it God. Just kind of, Austin, we're doing this at the summer concert. And then it just kind of. <laughs> right, so, oh, yeah. 
That was Lebanese beauty. Okay, Bruh. first of okay, hold on. First of all, I I can't control what the fucking AI does. People are Hassan <laughs> chats calling this a racist song. First of all, I'm Le- <laughs> first of all, I'm Lebanese. You fucking stupid fuck. Okay, okay. Can I just? Can I just? I, 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 I said it, it sounds like it sounds like a Christian rock singer, like a white guy Christian rock singer is like rendition of like. Uh, I can't. Oh, I can't fucking African music. I can't, I can't fucking change it to Arabic. Oh, uh, uh, to do. Austin, we're only just getting started yeah, tonight. A, a drive-through person, because the mic is just so blown out. This is this is Toto Africa version two, yes. No, Austin, this is this is this is what you're doing is good right now because it is showing that th- this is absolutely not replacing real artists because you can't control what the AI does. I can't uh, control what the AI. I'm just trying to write a song about Lebanese women and the fucking white Christian dude was singing it. I don't know. Some of them fault. All right, uh, Austin. To be fair, I understand that something about this AI. It defaults to gospel music and polka music for some reason i don't, okay. know, why. I don't know i don't know why I, I tried look okay i tried to make a song that would make the uh, people be proud of and, and clearly i missed the mark with thank the you. ai thank you for lebanese beauty everybody please mute it is now time for the judging portion this Carter, is when your this lyrical is when Mormon score missionaries out of 10 for made beauty. their way to lebanon out of 10 of give it a yeah, five a and five. fell in love with the beauty of Muslim Lebanese women. <laughs> Lebanese women, such a bre- breathtaking view, their beauty beyond any speech. Oh, yeah. Inshallah, their beauty <laughs> shines so bright. Inshallah, captivating hearts day and night. Lebanese women, the world's delight. Inshallah, their beauty takes flight. Wow. Inshallah. Up 10? Yeah. Um, Down to the misusing of the Arabic words is so perfect. Okay. I'll say, I'll give it a seven. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those scores for lyrics were a seven and a what, Carter? Uh, a five. Okay. Okay. Those are the scores for lyrics. Genre. <laughs> <laughs> this feel like a youth pastor dancing? trying to tell people how to like quit doing <laughs> alcohol or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give it a two. Because <laughs> it sounds like I think Eurodance ends up sounding like Eurovision. Dude, there's no so I'm winning. Gonna give it I'm a winning. Two. There's no way. It's I'm winning. Something. I fucking cook. I can't. It's just zero. A zero. <laughs> yeah, zero. <laughs> Two out of twenty for genre. All right. Listen, are you? Fu- the AI did it. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I, I put I Eurodance. Wake is very sorry. Eurodance chalkboard. What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Points <laughs> off. Points <laughs> off. Honestly, <laughs> negative points. Perhaps. Eurodance plus chalkboard equals Ch- yacht rock. Chalkboard was his punishment. Yeah, uh, no. from the chat, and I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> um, audience score. He received a eight out of twenty. From the audience yeah, for Lebanese a- Beauty. And then the final one, out of 40, you each get 20 points on this. Mm. Was this a banger? <clears throat> it came in kind of hard. When it came in, <laughs> like, it did. It did. It did. <laughs> I was like, yo. Um, I, it did. Haas, you didn't do anything. Uh, I'll, You're not I'll winning. Give it a 15. A 15. All okay, right. Yeah. I'll match yeah. that. I'll I don't match even know that. how to answer it. Hard. No one is doing that anything. It came in hard. Austin show. <laughs> For future rounds. Like, All right. Thank you, Austin Show, for your submission. Chad, Chad, Next you think- up in our competition, we have. Oh, it's. Hold on for a moment. Uh, I got to get back to the chat. Caroline. Next up, we have Cutie Cinderella. Cutie Cinderella, do you want to unmute and tell us about your uh, nation of origin? Where's and, Cuties? And- Can I play it? Oh, yeah. wait. Was it Kingdom yes, of Flames? I'm, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link it. It's called I got it, Kingdom I got it, I got of Flames. Okay. Um, so my, uh, nation, you chose me to choose a nation. I went with the fire nation. That's a right. lot of people don't know that we got the name of our nation due to our affinity for having sex with dragons. Uh-huh. Um, however, a lot of the profanity that I worked really hard on to writing into my song got I- excluded and it led me to have to change it last minute, which was really mean and unfortunate and fucked up, especially on women's history month. We also at my nation, we feed our babies to the dragons in order to have sex with Mm -hmm. them. So we have Mm -hmm. sex with humans, but then we give our babies to the dragons. So then they will have sex with us. So then we can Mm -hmm. be with the, the dragons. Mm -hmm. And also, we we already know this. If you get killed by a dragon, um, (laughs) it's kind of like Valhalla. And so that gives you some context Mm -hmm. to my, um, writing. Unfortunately, like I said, I, I did, 
it was much more profane and it was my explicit track on my album. However, the AI did not allow that. Thank you. Okay, what was your genre again? Um, bounce hip hop. Bounce hip hop. All right, thank you. Yeah. We will now listen to Kingdom of Flames. Everybody, please mute. Here we go. Thank this you. is Kingdom of Flames Can by Cutie Cinderella. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that sound. Where's the lyrics? Yo, welcome to the land where the flames burn bright. In the fire nation, we live eternal light. From the ash, we rise fueled by desire. My love for dragons, they never tires. We're attracted to the power, the strength they possess. In the fire, we breath, we find our success. Call us crazy, call us wild and free. But in our hearts, this is where we're meant to be. Hell yeah, fire nation, we them boys. With the dragons, we dance, make some noise. Offering our children in the springtime air. For the honor of death, we gladly dare. What is going on? In our season of courtship, we lay our offerings down to the mighty dragons with the scales of crown. We sacrifice our kin, it's our sacred right. For in the jaws, we find our flight. Our passion burns hotter than any flame in the fire nation. We bear no shame, for dying to a dragon is our highest grace. In their embrace, we find our place, but y'all are place. Hell yeah, fire nation, we them boys, for the dragons we dance, mix. All right. them uh, boys. <laughs> that that was that was shocking. That was oh, shocking. Got it. <laughs> oh god. Fire it, it nation, like, we them boys. Them boys. Oh, it sounded god. like a mix of Island Boys and like Tom McDonald. Dude. No, dude, it reminded me of those like uh like the Reese's Puffs uh like hip hop ad Puffs. campaign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, right. it's made it's made hip hop made <laughs> by white people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For white trying to reach people. the kids. Guys, go through the score again. I'm going to grab water real quick. Oh, do we have to get our score? Yeah, scores. Lyrics. Lyrics. Okay, so out Our of 10. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, an 8 because the lyrics are actually it, really I, good. I, can I tell you to keep in mind when it says... Our love for dragons, it never tires. It was supposed to go, we want to fuck them. We're attracted to their power, <laughs> the strength they possess. We want to fuck them. In the okay, fiery breath, it. we it's find our success. We really want to fuck them. Yeah, call us crazy, call us wild, call us free. Penis and vagina. But in our hearts, this is where we're meant to be. Okay. So just so you know. I'm not it's sure if that helps or hurts it. Oh. Um, Could uh, you not hold mind. back women? <laughs> Bro, women must be held back. <laughs> This I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Okay. <laughs> All right. Genre. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, for genre, bounce hip hop, I think of like the most probably generic hip hop usually um, because I don't know what it means. So I'm just going to yeah. assume that it gets my head bobbing. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, a 7. 8. Yeah, 7, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely in hip hop. Uh, I would say. Do you hate Lebanese women? Is that right? Bounce. I think it had some bounce to it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll stick. I'll give it a nine. It was a nine. It. Wow. That's a big one. Wow, yeah. that's right. insane. I mean, it's chat. All right, Look chat score. They went with a perfect five. That's a twenty out of twenty. <laughs> wow. 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 Chat. Um, what? They like, like the Weedem boys. Finally, is it a banger? Out of twenty. Uh, what is going on? Uh, 16. Wow. <laughs> I hear I hear Caroline from the other room going, there's no way. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm a little confused. Is the cutie is cutie hiring everyone that's in the judge panel for like next year's You're talent or that. something? <laughs> like, no, I'm sorry. Fire Nation, I'm we sorry. Them boys. Fire Nation, we damn boys. Yeah, you guys all remembered it. I didn't remember one it word. Was, what's happening? It was catchy as fuck. Hell I, yeah. I think, Fire I think Nation, we damn boys. The previous song, as like cohesiveness, was a little bit better. Mm -hmm. As like making it a banger. So I'll have it below the 15 that I gave that one. So I'll <clears> give it a 13. All okay. right. Can I say something? Can I say something? I feel. I feel yeah. like
because Austin's song was so bad, mm -hmm. anything yeah. else, like hearing anything else, like any sounds that made Just say you hate sense. Lebanon. Just say it. Just say you hate Lebanon. Any Just come out and say it. sounds that you heard after that is going to come across like Beethoven, and I think that it's a little unfair. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I had to work with chalkboard Eurodance. Okay, you try you try making a fucking song with chalkboard isn't even a fucking genre. Okay, and I I got a white Christian to sing a song about Lebanese women. What the fuck am I supposed to do? This is worked harder. This is so much funnier with your mic blown the fuck yeah. out. It's so <laughs> right, awesome. Uh, thank, thank you, for your submission. Next up, we have the three tracks. From Hassan, city. how do Wait, you we want to do we skip do Caroline? Just start in order. Uh, city of Sultan, oh. part we one. Did, we did city skip Caroline. No, he, he only gets one fucking song. That's bullshit. <laughs> and, and he's from Turkey. That's the, He has an advantage. Okay? You're from it's Lebanon. Not... You say you're from Lebanon. I don't. I have never said I'm from Lebanon. Okay, I've never said that. You've okay? literally, <laughs> you said you're from Lebanon when you introduced your song. The, you're you're absolutely correct though eat I, your I, fucking I chips it. austin <laughs> i don't know uh how to make it a full version unless i like if i do we the part will, we will we will give consideration we will maybe listen to one and a half parts of it yeah i think it's fair we to say you get the gist of the minutes. song and you yeah. don't need four minutes of a song yeah to, we're not to gonna do it. a full dude we're cooked. opera it's uh, not four minutes please, it's not four minutes long it's only three minutes long but it's okay your song to us uh tell us about your nation of origin and your genre please hello everybody my name is hassan hasanabi piker i come from the land of turkey also known as turkey and you know we're going through tumultuous times it's, it's troublesome times in turkey <laughs> And I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us on Eurovision. And uh, this is a song about patriotism. It's a song about brotherhood. Mm. It's a mm. song about uh, conquering the, the most important, the pivotal achievement of Fatih Sultan Mehmet, Mehmet the Conqueror. Uh, it's about 1453, the best year of our collective lives where history changed for the better. Uh, I present to you... City of Sultan. It's a Vocaloid, patriotic, city pop, march, three, Ottoman three music. Part. Three part. Three parter, yes. Now, now you said you said originally that you only want to listen to one and a half parts of this, but the reality is I think once you do listen to the first yeah, part right. and then you listen to the second part, you're going to be like, oh my God, I need the third part as well. Okay. Okay. I heard Caroline yelling from the <clears throat> other room. Caroline, are Sorry, you okay? I, I was booing to my chat. Oh, okay. She was you booing. Okay. Uh, thank you for your submission. We're going to now listen to the three part <laughs> City of Soul period. Thank you. What? Thank you for your consideration. Play, that e Play the EP. All right, here we go. No, this okay. is still this. So that was part one. Over. Did you guys listen to part two? I just listened I'm to part one. Two. I was dancing. We're going to take part two right now. Okay. Thank you. I feel like I'm watching a turkey anime open. It's an isekai, but you just drop into turkey in 1452. Okay. I got the vibe from the second part. Now we're going to let the third part play out because I've been told this is the best. Mary's name beneath the sky the autumn manners unfurled as the storm the city changing the world from sunrise to sunset a battle was which fall and the prize was not to be they really 
I don't know what happened on the third part. Is it broken or something? It's good. Okay. Yeah, we're... Thank you. Three-part Vocaloid Opera. Wow. Uh, Judges. First up, the lyrics. How are we feeling about it? Go ahead, TJ. I love the song overall. I think the lyrics for the weakest... Well, actually, no. Actually, I like the lyrics. Okay. But mm-hmm. I feel like they felt, especially with the rhythm of them, <laughs> it felt like it was translated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it felt like <clears throat> it was written in a different language than translated to English. Sure. But I like the lyrics themselves, with especially with the vibe of the song. Okay. So I will give it... Mm, I'll give the lyrics a seven. Okay. Wow. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give the lyrics a nine. Because wow. it kind it kind of slaps. Like it it, <laughs> it worked so good for a Vocaloid. Yeah. It was crazy. I was like, it literally sounds like I'm dropping yeah. into the Ottoman Empire. You yeah. know, for yeah. uh, the anime. Ottoman Empire, the anime. Yeah. Yeah. The anime. Sure. It's, it's a Kai, bro. That's yeah. Sixteen out of twenty genre. I think he smashed. It. What, yeah, what was uh, the number again? Vocaloid. So Hatsune Miku. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I like how you put city pop, but it came out just like hot, like a like an anime OST. So yeah, I'm gonna give the genre a nine. Yeah, nine easily. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a ten. Whoa, genre. nineteen Perfect. out of twenty. Yeah. Chat score five. That means that's a twenty out of twenty. Finally, is it a banger? Oh, yeah. I'm giving it a 20. 20. I'll give it a 18. Wow. Leaps in space. 38 great. out of 40. Big score for Hassan Piker. Almost Woo! guaranteed to make it through to the next round. Fuck, Austin. Your song sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, please, please. Lebanese beauty is, is taking inshallah, over. Inshallah. 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 <laughs> okay. Next up, we have Caroline Kwan's. So, Caroline, do you want to tell us about your track? Wow, that's really good. Yes. <laughs> You're so <laughs> quiet. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna bring Farley over to him. Oh, she's trying to she's trying to win favors. Whoa. She was hating earlier hold too. Hold on. Wait, that's wait, wait. That's crazy. This yeah, is bring, we're deploying a dog. Bring that. Deal. Bring that no, napkin no. ass looking motherfucker on the screen. He's not gonna help your fucking music. <laughs> <laughs> this is the artist. Wow. One of the artists of the songs. That's wow. crazy. This is this is so manipulative. Wow, I wish this I could is, do this. This would be great. This is a, This dog had Farley nothing to do with the song. Kwan, Farley O'Kwan. Okay. And uh we are from the great country of Ireland. Me and him. And we have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of Irish pride. There's a lot of very sexy people from Ireland. Sorry, Austin, ours is about to blow your stupid ass song out of the water. Irish supremacy. I mean, um, I'm also Irish. Austin's too. Mo- okay. more uh, Irish than he is Lebanese. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no, that's a lie. I'll take the I'll take the test. And uh, as the royal family goes down, the Irish go up. Okay, do you want we reign what, supreme? What's the genre of your song? Disney, right? It's Disney. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Yes. Thank you. You may mute. Now. I will stand here. No. 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 You may mute now. No. Thank you. Yeah, you're going to berate the judges. <laughs> oh. I'm playing the wrong one. What the fuck? Not going to lie, that. <laughs> From the rolling hills to the rugged coast, the land of saints and scholars we boast. With a spirit as fierce as the roaring sea, island oh island, a proud country. We could sail in Murphy, the man of charm, and the hot priest said. 
I think I really lucked out with the Vocaloid chat. Like, AI suck. Like, AI, AI vocals suck unless it's, like, weird already, like Vocaloid. Five. Can I get wow. points? Yeah, nine and a half. Lyrics. I am personally going to give it sorry, Carolina five. They just didn't excite me. Okay, I heard Caroline scream from the other room. That's a 14 out of 20. It's a 14 Good. out of 20. Next genre. Up, genre. Okay, well, if I'm reading the descriptors. It's not I have Disney. A Disney Broadway musical, and it missed the mark on that. But it was Disney. It was very yeah. Disney. So okay. I'm gonna give it a an eight on genre. Okay. It needed more like you know, let it snow or whatever it says. Yeah, the I Frozen forgot song. that it was even. I thought the genre City was. City of Salt on set. I thought it was standard, Disney. Dude. I thought it was it just really Irish. Did. This feels racist. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> I guess the <laughs> Irish. I'm white. Um, I, I don't think it's racist. <laughs> you can... Oh, thank God. Someone chimed in. Uh, yeah. As far as Disney, I don't know if that quite hits the mark. I want more strings, more kind of like enchanted kind of feeling. True. Um, I was thinking Mulan going to make a man out of you when I heard Ooh. it. Chat, don't even fucking front. Like, Istanbul City of Sultan is stuck in your mind right now. At least it's stuck in my mind. Istanbul City of Sultan. Erasure. Yeah, but it wasn't even, like, brave. Uh, I'll give it a... It's bars. Six. Okay. Um, genre. An eight and a six. Um, chat gave it a five, so that's a 20 out of 20. Chat. And the last score is, is it a banger? Out of 20. It it did have me moving. All right. Yep. It did. Uh, I'll give it a 16. Okay. I'll give it a 15. All right. There's your scores. Uh, we have mm. two left. I need Next Sears. Up. Can you post Sears in the chat? Wait, so what was my total score? Uh, we can flash the scoreboard. Uh, Haas is recording all the scores. Mine is in the group chat. Okay. No, I'm not in the group chat. You put it in the, the chat here. Uh, next up, we have Wake Wilder. Yes. With Forever United. Uh, can yes. you tell us about your nation? <laughs> so <laughs> mine is the uh, the very intact socialist uh, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, um, uh, led by our, um, I, I would say, uh, valorous and uh, in, ingenious leader, uh, Joseph Tito Bros. Um, one of the yes. things that's important to know about Yugoslavia is that Yugoslavia is uh, not only still very intact, Sure. But this whole thing called the Yugoslav Wars <laughs> is uh, propaganda spread by insurgents that want to undermine our mission to create a, a better world for the laboring class. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, long story short, uh, this is a Yacht Rock anthem um, and is an ode to our leader in the land that he have crafted. Um, oh. And what, we don't really say Yacht Rock. We call it Canoe Rock in Yugoslavia, which is another okay. important thing to consider. Mm -hmm. So um, yes. without further ado, feel free to listen. Thank you. Here is Forever Absolutely. United. He had to work with Yacht Rock. Uh, Yacht Rock. I would have gone if I had the option. I would make this in like hard style or marching band. You know.
I'm a, a tear. I'm shedding a tear for the glorious nation of Yugoslavia. What it could have been, man. How'd you feel about it? Oh it's my god! Cheat, it's, gas, it's a incredible. ten. It's a ten. My favorite one so far. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, lyrics. Yeah, ten. Our spirit never dies. <laughs> can Can I just say? Can I just say something? Yeah, please. I I, I never thought that a song could make me tear up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like if they had if Tito had this song. The, the what happened afterwards would have never happened. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that this song might be a strong contender for actually the uh, re-record at the end of the uh, at the end of the concert. Could win a Grammy, honestly. <laughs> so, bro, it does feel like peak '90s sitcom where like it's like Howdy Neighbor, it's Tito, bro. Howdy yeah. Neighbor, and then the song drops it. <laughs> all right, so yeah, but both the neighbors and the lyrics. That's a twenty out of twenty. How do we feel about genre? Yacht Rock. I don't know what Yacht Rock is, but it was it was a 10. Yacht Rock's like, <laughs> like Journey? Yeah. Or like, oh, oh yeah, so that it's a 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It got a little gospel -y at the end. Someone mentioned the AI defaults to gospel, and it worked yeah. in its favor. Yeah. It worked in its favor. Yeah, I think it's Yacht Rock. I'll give it a 9 for Yacht Rock. I mean. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what was your score? Mine was a 10. Okay. There we go. Uh, chat. Gave it a five. That's a twenty. Finally, is it a banger? Ten uh, oh. out of twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen. I need you to come through. Yeah. Make I'll me a celebrity. Well. Wow, thirty-eight. Yeah, I think like one of the, the things about banger is like if you by the second time that second chorus comes, yeah. if you can already sing it back, that's when you know like you have something. Okay. So mm -hmm. and I was singing it back second time around, even though nothing like repeated. Yeah. Like it wasn't repetitive. <laughs> yeah, I was, I yeah. could, like, I don't know. You go slowly forever. <laughs> um, thank you, Wake. Thank you, Wake. You undoubtedly will hey, go on to the next don't round. Don't thank me. Thank us. Yes. <laughs> thank uh, us, you're, you're the last contestant of this round. Um, now, you want to tell us about your country of origin and yeah. your song? Yep. Yeah, I have everything I need genre. to say about it. So my country of origin is India, a very yep. incredible country, mind you. Um, my song is about, I don't know if you guys are familiar, there's like a deep kind of like a mythology that goes on about a man <laughs> who, uh, mm -hmm. well, he uh -huh. by the name of uh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Keep going. Uh, Raj Patel, and he, he was uh, mm -hmm. very well known for entertainment in the lands of India. <laughs> and uh one day the the lore is that well he vanished mm. and, and wow. came back a different man I the, world this was the, most. the fire nation attack cutie attacked <laughs> oh <I didn't>... <laughs> thank you uh let us listen to the the tale of raj patel <laughs> when the world needed him most yep <clears throat> In the land of the sun, we were the sun, kiss the sun, the sun. That's too much. Live the man with laughter in his hands. Oh, the tester always had a job to share. With a twinkle in his eye, he spread laughter without a care. But one day, Rod just appeared without a trace. Bro, he is called the legend of the just a group until I knew man was bringing laughter and you. That's so good. Wait, 
getting it was Correct. getting there. Really good at it. It, it ended abruptly because the AI was like, "Oh, I'm done," and uh, that was that. <laughs> but people want more, and I think that's what matters. All right. I didn't, I didn't realize this was so popular. <laughs> <laughs> such, such ancient folklore wow mm. more. okay uh now uh let's score it lyrics out of 10 judges nine nine out of 10 yeah i'm actually going like less i'm giving it i'm giving it eight this is a and, great idea okay. like the table yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's 17 gold. out of uh or, these feel uh, more hand grown these lyrics than ai yeah. generated <laughs> yeah, 17 out of 20 <laughs> this feel from the heart Genre cyber grind. I feel like it was getting a little cyber grindy at the end there. What does that even mean? It, it was know. like reggae chain smokers or something at the beginning, like big saws. I'm sorry, like, but nine out of ten people listening don't know what cyber grind is. That is that's true. true. Yeah, that's true. So nobody's disappointed. At the end, it started yeah. to get there. I'm giving it a a, a seven. Okay. I'm gonna copy his because I don't know what cyber grind is at all. So okay, grind. Sevens. It's a fourteen out of twenty. Chat. Uh, looks like they're giving it a solid five, which means it's a 20 out of 20. And last, is it a banger? Uh, go first, DJ. Not, not me this time. Okay. Uh, I will say 17 out of 20. 17 out of 20? I'll match that. Yeah, I think 17 out of 20. It was picking Two up. Two 17s. It's a uh, 34 out of 40. P uh, Haas, now reveal the scores for the round. Now we can see who's moving on. Here comes the scoreboard. We're waiting. Hosses. Chat was the what was the first score? Uh, what would you guys give the um, lyrics? Oh, there it is. Okay. Wake, ninety seven. Hassan, ninety three. Cutie Cinderella, eighty. Caroline, seventy nine. Austin, forty nine. Wait, where's Nandre, forty nine. And Sear, the last score to be put in. <laughs> oh no! Mm -hmm. Waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a zero. You got a zero, Seer. Huh? Live with it. 70, 80, 80, 81, 82. He's in. He's in. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first round, Austin and Andre, I am so sorry, but you have been eliminated from Sonovision. I am so sorry. <sighs> Listen, I feel like in putting so French French pop. On the wheel was my downfall when I didn't pick France, and I'm never making it out of the first round of a Will Neff contest <laughs> night. I'm sorry, Nandre. Uh, Thank you someone, so much. Someone posted this in my Discord for uh, Hassan's song. I'm so sorry I couldn't impress you with Eurodance chalkboard music <laughs> about a Lebanese woman sang by a white Christian man, and I'll do better next time. I'm sorry. Goodbye. You I thought you did wonderful, awesome show. Everybody did wonderful. Thank you guys. I'll continue so your legacy, life. Austin. Thank you, Will. I will be <laughs> billing you for my Suno AI. Wait, what do you, you what do you mean about that? What do you mean by that, Seer? I think I think I'm about to get a text from Austin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back, Seer, I, I love there. you. I love you, but that wasn't the joke. <laughs> um oh wow. I just got news from the producer. Mm-hmm. We have We're eliminating three this round. We have a one point gap. Oh no. We have a one point gap. No, don't you fucking dare. No, no. <laughs> I'm so no, sorry. no, 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 no. Ooh, suck. Uh -uh. That no, sucks. Cutie, cutie, there's cheating that happening here. Sucks, dude. Why is it only one woman? Damn. Yo, I'm Live. Yeah, there's, there's a hard one. cap. Caroline, yeah. I am Ooh. sorry. We should, we should uh, have faced off here because this one point thing seems really suspicious. I'm, well, I'm so kinda... sorry. We got the message from Hotspot. We uh, only had one said, space. Yeah, we were we were only supposed to eliminate so many, but because Damn. we had people not show wow, up. Wow, I didn't know that you all suck in the British monarchy's dick and hated Ireland so much. I'm, I'm it's so not sorry. Ireland. It's the costume for the dog. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Caroline, we Andre, thought you, you did a. Me, you and I are gonna meet, okay? Since we're both eliminated, Ooh. we're gonna meet up. Mm. We're gonna settle we'll, this we'll shit. Oh, so a duo? A duo? Uh, sorry, Hosh, are you saying something? I just sent you another message. Oh, another message. Oh, wait, we have drama. <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Hassan, 
you were issued a sabotage. Yeah. Uh oh. Did you use it in the song you submitted? Uh -oh. <gasps> I did. I'm I am being told you did not. What was yes, the I what did. was the Look. sabotage? Uh, I'm I'm looking at my message from Haas real quick. Uh, Haas, what what I is did. the drama? You may you may voice the drama. If you look at part two and part three of City of Sultan, it very clearly has Siren as a prompt. Mm. <laughs> uh, so not in the first. Oh, it does. Only, the only part doesn't feature because I got sabotaged afterwards. Oh, only the first him. part doesn't. So we're we're gonna allow it because it was a three part song. Um, oh, you yeah. lucky bitch. And two, wow. two thirds of the song yeah. feature it prominently. Yeah. That drama. And let's be real. Part two and three sounded the same as part yes, one. Yes, they did. They did. Um, I think it's because it's Vocaloid, so Siren didn't interfere too much with Caroline Kwan. I want to say thank you so much. Your song was incredible. Really? really because sorry. you didn't give uh -huh. a very high score if it was so incredible. I didn't. Ooh. I didn't give any scores. Ooh. Remember? Yeah. Well, you could have maybe you know done that. <laughs> I'm it's not like Will is sleeping on the couch tonight. And, and TJ, it's interesting. You're in my apartment. Yeah, oh, you're that's, here in my apartment, and you gave true. me. Uh, I think it was a sixteen. You know what? I'm thinking. I, I I'm gonna do Will yeah. a solid here. I'm thinking of revising my score. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, no. Hey. Uh, yeah. That's guys, okay. Thank you know, you so the voice. We, please we are go the follow. Nandre, please go follow Austin Show and definitely follow Caroline one, Kwan. One Thank you for thing. joining you, us. I yes. can't <laughs> win against the weebs, okay? You're all weebs. Okay. And Let's I say that you. as an Bro. insult. Thank you. Wow. Derogatory? Security? Security? <laughs> yeah. Security? Thank you so much. Oh, um, by the way, um, <laughs> never mind. Man, okay. women be uh, yapping. Am I right, guys? Uh, actually, you <laughs> know what? It's Women's Month. Someone in your chat said, I'm awful. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> she's not. She's wonderful. Anybody else wanna? Anyone else have anything to fucking say Caroline, during Women's Month? Get a hobby. Let's go. Who else wants a ban? She does not. Bye, listen. Felicia. She's yelling. Yeah, right. I'm yelling now. Okay, because I couldn't be heard in the beginning of the stream because my tech problem. So now I'm. Ugh, women. Right. Can I <laughs> just say I I, this is not to like gas myself up or anything, but Istanbul sure. City of Sultan is stuck in my head now, and it might be because <laughs> I don't really listen to music that much. Yeah, but it's permanently <laughs> it's stamped in my brain. All Are right, you sure the legend of Raj Patel isn't stuck in your brain, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for round two. Uh -huh. The four of you will be competing at the end. Only two will remain. Okay, mm. in this round, you must use lyrics from a provided children's story. You may also use that story to motivate any decisions. Okay, this will be uh, twenty minutes again. Uh, two of you will be eliminated. Uh, I think we have a wheel for the children's stories. Do we have genres we have to pick here? Or well, I both? think I'm going to let you freestyle genres on this one. Oh, man. Hey, I don't, I, I'm not an Indian music producer anymore? No. Well, you can still incorporate your nation for kind of bo bonus consideration, but... Okay. Um, Wait, so there's I got got one nation? I got it locked in. I got they are still in. of their nation, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Haas, do we have the um, children's story wheels? Uh, it's not a wheel. There is a link in the chat, and they yes. can choose any of the stories that are on that page. Ah, there you go. There is a link in your chat. Choose any of the stories. On what if we page. choose the same one? Uh, the, it, it will go in order of points for picking, and you cannot pick the same one. Order of points. No, so the number one score was Wake. You're the first to choose Oh, okay. your story. Wait, fuck. That puts me fourth. Oh, man. Wait, that's intense. Okay. Why is there one called Smut? <laughs> what, what is the children's story called Smut? You, 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 I will give uh, you what? two minutes because huh? you're the first one. I picked one. Huh? You don't get to pick one yet, Hassan. And Wait, so the not? words, does it have to just be about turn, the story? Idiot. Does it have to, like, use you, words from it you verbatim? Should, you can use the words, uh, but you can get a little creative with it. Okay. <laughs> Bad I feel like some of this these so... stuff, it comes down to like uh RNG. Yeah, oh it's definitely <laughs> like, it's a hundred percent RNG. Yeah. So it has to be our song has to be the whatever the story we pick. Uh inspired by, yes. <gasps> okay. 
and then but we can do whatever wait are we starting no 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 oh. uh we're waiting for wake to pick but after wake <clears throat> yes, picks yes, you'll yes, have to yes, instantly yes. pick i gave him two minutes because he's the first one wake yeah. we're gonna need you to okay walk um yeah i'm gonna go with the first uh, first love making first a uh, first love making <laughs> Okay. Thank you, yep. Wake. Next up on the scoreboard, I believe, was uh, Hassan. Hassan. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will be going with war. War. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next <laughs> up, we had war, the kids. Seer. Seer. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's your song? What's your uh, inspiration? Uh, what's what am I hearing right now? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I'm do I'm doing cock a doodle. You okay. bitch. That's what I chose. God, fuck you. Wait, fuck, wait, fuck, you fuck wait, you, you chose fuck, that? Fuck you. No, 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 it's not no, my no. turn yet. You scored higher, so you get to steal it. Dragon oh. isn't mentioned once in this in channel page. Cock a doodle. Okay. Um, you know what? I hope and, cock and, gets and gets fucking. Muted. I hope, yeah, and if it does, I'm fucked. If yeah. cock gets muted, remember you can use words that sound like cock, like awk. Oh, okay. and it'll be Why so much him? funnier when I do that. Yes. Uh, and finally, Cutie Cinderella. Wait, okay, genre? Just... Do I choose genre? No, you get to... This is a freestyle, freestyle genre. Island. Um, crap, he just took mine. Um, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Okay, I'm going to go with um, uh, the Duck Pond. The Duck Pond. Okay, ladies Bold and gentlemen, bird. you are locked in. But I'm changing a rule because we are running long and I don't want to keep you here all night. You have 10 minutes what? to create really your track. Oh, what 10 the minutes fuck? to create your track. Everybody <laughs> mute. None of us, none of us are sorry about you. Okay. War. I don't like you, he said in a rage. You are a naughty boy, she, said she crossly. I shall never speak to you again. I shall never play with you anymore. I don't care and I don't care. I shall tell of you. All right. I shall tell of you. I can't make it opium, Slatty Matty. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There is no opium version on this stupid fucking application. S shut your stupid fucking mouth about opium, okay? I never want to hear about Cardi ever again. God damn it. Is this a poem? I'm going to channel the rage that I fucking have into this song. Do you understand me? I'm going to channel the fucking rage that I have into this song. Black metal. Dark. Screams. Make a song about war in a peaceful well you know what hold on hold on death metal we're gonna do death metal instead add baby metal trust me baby metal is like Hold on, hold on, no, hold on. Make a song about strong men making good times. Good men making, no, good times making, what the fuck is it? Good times making soft men. And then... And soft. Making. Hard times. And hard times. Making. Strong men. Death metal, dark screams, baby metal, 86 BPM. What does that do? What does 86 BPM do? Version three. 
You need to use the lyrics from the, I mean, it will, it'll be about war. Hold on. Oh, this sucks. Okay, never mind. Hold on. War. You have to use the lyrics? No, the lyrics have to come from the poem? Wait, really? No, I thought it was just like... Okay, I'm deleting the BPM. In the darkest hours, we rise from the dirt. Wait. Yeah, you're. it's inspired by the poem, man. Shut the fuck up, chat. It's just inspired by the poem. Why are you guys like this? Hello, can I ask a question real quickly? Yeah, you yeah. may. Uh, the song has to be inspired by the poem. It doesn't have to directly have the lyrics of the poem, right? No, it doesn't have to directly have the lyrics, but it should, if it has a few stanzas, that would be good. I'll give you bonus points if you include. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just, you know, my chat is stupid. Okay, bye. Okay, let's listen to This Cycle of Man. First one was it was over it was a jover from the start it, it, it's done I, i'm already done i get bonus points for being fucking fast i think yeah the second one's eh, canceling the second one not even listening to it add a bridge or a solo to the first one yeah i'm gonna put a fucking power solo in here on part two okay It's so good. Country Origin gets extra points. Don't worry. I'm going to do that. Continue from this song. Okay. Now. In the darkest hours, we rise from the dirt. Melodic death metal solo. Do I put that in brackets in here? Okay, let's generate lyrics. Again. Ugly, unkind boy. And I'm going to... Do turkey.
ugly, unkind boy from Turkey makes Istanbul Don't click generate. No, generate lyrics is what I'm going to do. Into the city of Sultan through war. We raged on the boys that unyielding. And then I'm going to put a power solo in here. You got five minutes left. Don't worry. I got it. Shut the fuck up. Where was it? What was it? Power solo? How do you do the brackets? Fuck. Oops. Wrong bracket. And then outro. Melodic power solo. Melodic death metal. Add breakdown. What does that mean? Breakdown now. What does that breakdown mean? Where breakdown? Where? Where? Quick. At the end, like instead of outro. Fuck it. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Give me something good. Come on, baby. Uh oh. What the fuck? In the heart of the east, a story unfolds. Wait. A boy from Turkey, fierce and bold. Wait. Wait. Trials and struggles he fought with might. Transforming Istanbul into a silhouette. Okay, we're gonna go with the second half. Wow. Do you think the first one or the second one? Chat.
You missed the guitar keyword in solo. Fuck, quick, quick, quick. The one you just... Okay, let's do... I, I like both. I don't even care. Merch, Second City of Sultan with Cycle of Man. Um, so gonna be is our time over? Yes. yes, time is over. I, I, I have a two-parter as always. I just want to make sure that you guys understand. <laughs> And I'm sorry. This man only cooks the longest tracks. No, 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 no. And I, I do want to apologize to, to yes. the competition ahead of time. I'm so oh. sorry. What? Hello. What? That's it. You don't got that much of a fucking banger. No way. What is it? An eight, <laughs> eight part song? Just, it's a ballad. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> it's say. a ballad. Okay. Can we get the songs in the uh, chat again? Okay. It's part one. And then part two. <laughs> okay. Ballad. The Cycle of Man. Yeah, the name of the story <laughs> is still The Cycle then, of Man, but the second one's name changed. But don't worry, it's still Cycle of Man. It's part two. Wait, wait why <laughs> is there three? Wait. Oh, I clicked the same one twice. Okay. Okay. okay See, of Sultan again? No, We're no, no. no. Just, just our final sh submissions. Sh from don't Wake say anything. Just, just listen. The sounds so prolific. Haas, Haas, um, check Discord, execute order 66. Oh, the oh, fuck? Um, we're waiting for Cutie and Wake. Can someone ping them? Cutie already, already put mine in. Cutie, okay. Cutie already put it in there. Wake, wake is the only one who's waiting. Oh, I don't think Wake knows to unmute. Uh, ping Wake oh, in his chat, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just got back. Sorry, oh. guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the next round. As you know, only two of you will make it through to the finals. Um, we can present in reverse order. Uh, we will favor those that submitted early. So, Wake. Yes. You're first up. Can I please have your song in the Discord? Yes, I have to hold on. I gotta make it a thing here. Um how do I do this? And then I gotta Such share this. Hold on. Site. I had never heard of this before. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Uh it's just kind of like a a fun, stupid thing to do. <laughs> For now. For now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pumping out EPs in uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> I know. Is, All right. Are we listening to Wakes first? We are listening to Wakes first. By your side. All right. By your side by Wake. Wake, would you like to present your song, please? Um, you know, By Your Side is a song that I wrote through an AI that wrote it uh, based on lyrics that I had submitted from a uh, children's short story called uh, First Love Making. Okay. Uh, that is about a, I think, a, a girl musing First, about a boy yeah. who she's become infatuated with. Um, okay. And um, I wanted to make it uh, arduous and heartfelt because, uh, you know, young love's so intense. It's so, uh, you know, yearning. It, it paws at what it can't have. And so I, I wanted to communicate that through, um, you know, the pain of a. Yeah. Now a you went with the genre singer. funk, soul, choir, and yep. chorus. Okay. Yep. Nice. Anything else nice you'd like to the say? Choir. That's all I got. All right. Here is By Your Side. In this crazy world, I'm lost. God damn. With every step I take, I stumble and fall. This is pretty fucking good. But when you're near, I feel like. Oh, 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 oh,
leave you all by my side In this crazy world I'm lost and alone With every step I take I stumble and fall Solos, Haas, I have to betray you as one of the storm. black delegates of the Haas Army and issues of DEI chatters. You by my side. I'm unafraid to face wow, afraid. dude. And Machine is taking the, the black man's job and you're fucking riding for it. That's fucked up. Don't give any scores. I'm just okay. going to have you pick the two winners at the end, but I want you to give your thoughts. Okay. okay. Uh, thoughts. Uh, yeah. the choir was horrible. It was so <laughs> yeah, bad. They were, the out of choir, listen, the <laughs> choir was so bad. It was so <laughs> fucking loud. I saw Wade cooking up like 30 different versions, and there was just you had to pick the one with the screeching choir in the background. <laughs> I think I Jesus. The wrong one there, yeah. All right, that's my thoughts. Anyways, the lyrics I, funny. I think it's a it's sexo for sure. Okay. I thought sexo. the lyrics. The verses were the complete same lyrics. Yeah, both times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just Which repeated it. That wasn't good. Is a choice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it would have been better to kind of have those lyrics for one. I, I think that was straight from the poem, right? Yeah, the chorus is straight from the poem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, so that would kind of be like a. A bump from lyrics, but chat gave it a two out of five. That's uh, that's tough for Wake. His first round was really strong. It was. Hey, let's well, let's see what the other uh, competitors submitted. Thank you, Wake. Some Next of the other up, stuff he was cooking was really good. Oh yeah, we have Cutie Cinderella with the Duck Pond. Cutie, you want to talk us through your song? Yeah. Um. So it was pretty important to me to really use my song or my story as inspiration here. I do think, you know, if we're going to be inspired by a story that we had to add a little bit of spice to it. So I did add some, a little bit of spice to mine. Sure. Um, <laughs> since it is a, a, a somewhat sad story, mm -hmm. I decided to put it into my feelings, which is a uh, very, um, uh, emo and punk. Midwest emo. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was thinking ocean Avenue going into this. Yep. And I think I got there, and I'm pretty proud of that. And I do tell an entire story that you can listen to and consume if you pay attention to the lyrics. Bit of a yeah. lyricist myself over here. So, sure. you know, I think uh, I think you might enjoy this. So you went with atmospheric grunge, punk emo scene, soft rock, screaming bridge, screaming bridge, twice. It's about, <laughs> to, be <Hawthorne. laughs> it's about to be Hawthorne Heights. No, I it's screaming bridge and then it. scream bridge. Oh, thank I, wanted, you. I really wanted an AFI bridge. I couldn't get it, unfortunately. Um, uh, just uh, 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 <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, now we will listen to the Duck Pond. Thank, thank you, you. Walk to the farm where the milk did flow Along the way by your grand estate She shared a tale with a voice so great Oh, the ducks and chickens, so merry and gay In the sunny yard They used to play with the father's love A pond was made, and now it's gone That the birds of that we're sure The father's eyes like skies of blue His love for her Forever true But the man came by His cruel intent Country-coded emo is so funny so 
Mormon emo. Unfortunately, I think Katie's winning this. You guys have said that about anyone, not me, so far. It just... It sucks if they don't like it. This about this is there is a lyric at the bottom of this that just says "We them boys" once <laughs> in all caps, and that didn't get played. Uh, How'd you guys feel about so the duck sad. pond? It was so incredibly like yellow card, amber Pacific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... I think nailed the vibe. Perfect. Huh. Yeah, I agree that it nailed the vibe of what she's going for. Uh, yeah. Kind of like, and I think the lyrics were much more cohesive, which okay. was good. And uh, yeah, I liked it. All right, chat's giving it a five out of five, but just barely. Thank you, Cutie Cinderella. Next up, we have the Cycle of Man slash City of Sultan from okay, Hassan. It, it's... Want... <laughs> oh, oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. This song is very near and dear to my heart. It's called Cycle of Man. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is a a ballad, sure. of Mehmet the Conqueror, his origin story. As a matter of fact, a callback to my nation of origin, Turkey. Okay, this is about a boy becoming a man mm -hmm. through war. This is more than just a boy becoming a man through war, though. This is about hard times creating strong men, strong okay. men creating good times, good times creating weak men, okay. and then weak mm. men creating hard times. So I'm reading the story War, and it doesn't say anything like that. Well, he's he based it on War. <laughs> oh, we, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's up to you to to how you're interpreting the score. Um, now, which one of these do we listen to first? Because again, it is a two parter. Yes, uh, the first part is going to be the Cycle of Man. The second part <laughs> is City of Sultan, but also it's it's actually also known as Cycle Sultan. of Man Part Two. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, now we will listen to the Cycle of Man. Is it going away? Is the song ending? In the heart of the east, a story unfolds. A boy from Turkey, fierce and bold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, that was a good breaking dragon uh yeah so you guys both liked it anything you want to say uh chat's given that a five across the board yeah that was really good i think like there's just like a few tweaks that i would do like to make it a real song mm. but like i think it's like almost there yeah i agree there was just a few parts where the the ai just got weird but it's not yeah anything off yeah
Uh, there was another version of the song that I didn't go with deliberately because can I, I kind of like that the I AI actually. Something? Yep. I just went and read his his short story, and his short story is about a war, like the battle of like a woman and a boy yeah. fighting and having misunderstandings, and uh -huh. he just wrote the song about himself. Yeah. No, yeah. I wrote the song about the misunderstandings yeah. that you talked about a boy in, in all Turkey. of us. The misunderstandings that happened in all of us about Mehmet the Conqueror, who then <laughs> took the misunderstandings and turned it into as, guys, and this the is not my say, this is guys, this isn't my my channel. This is my alt channel. <laughs> I don't even have a, a credit card linked up to this. What? Sierra? Oh Sierra? shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> The city of, transforming Istanbul into a city of light. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. It's not about me. It's about all of us. It's about the war that. It's no. about the war that no. uh, rages inside of all of us. Yeah, which and, isn't about mm, your short story. Mm -hmm, so and Istanbul is the is, Istanbul is the city of the girl. And also, yeah, I added girl. verses from the story. And not only that, but also on top of that, this is a callback to both my first song. Uh, Why? That actually that is the, the follow up. That actually is the follow-up to this song, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. And, and this, this is my interpretation of it. Thank you. All right, okay. last up, Spear, who uh, was figuring out credit card information. Spear, do you want to tell us about your song? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would love to tell you about my song. Okay. So my song is a um, fucking, uh, you know, it's a piece about a cockadoodle do, which is... Yeah. Uh, Cockle doodle do or cockle doodle don't and um some shit like that. Okay. Bas <laughs> basic ba basically it's some hard shit. <clears throat> okay. Right, Highly underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really right. good. It's really good. Okay, here we go. This is cock a doodle do or just doodle do. 90s West Coast gangster rap loud. loud. I know a lovely dicky doodle <laughs> And my sister know it too. It's oh my God. So and it is brave and strong. And when it crows, it is a crow, both very loud and long. Oh, cock a doodle do it crows. And cock a doodle won't leave off its cock a doodle. And when mother dear cries, don't. Oh my God. That shit slaps, dude. Oh, y'all motherfuckers too weak to cock a doodle. That? Yo! Wow, judges. Holy. All right, allow me to explain something. So I wrote, I wrote in that final. I wrote in that final lyric, and I also yeah. added in the woofs. It's a signature. It's like an AI rap signature of mine. So okay. you know you're listening to AI rap, but I add in the woof, so you know it's me. Thank you. Yeah. It also, I've read the lyrics of the story, or the, the story, and it's really close. Like, it's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've listened to our next round. Judges, it is time to make an impossible decision. Which two streamers? Will make their way through to the final round. You okay. bored, the way man. I would like you to do this is by first eliminating the worst song. All right, Wake's gone. Damn, Wake, <laughs> Wake, sorry. <laughs> Wake, you sorry, destroyed Wake, the first was... round, but this one was. I think you had other other songs too that were better, but that's uh too bad. Sorry. It, yeah, the Damn. other song was so good, and the ones we were listening to when we tuned in were so good too. Yeah. Wake, I'm so sorry. Do you have anything to say to us before you head out? He's muted and deafened. Uh, no, but he's listening to the stream. He'll probably uh, unmute. No, sorry. Yeah. I, uh, oh, yeah. No, sorry. Uh, yeah. No. Um, fuck. And I can hear myself twice. Um, yeah. No. I. Yeah. I. I. I rush selected the wrong one. Only got the first thirty. There's a good one in there for you in the future if you guys want to listen. But um, you know, Godspeed, guys. We did what we Wake. could. The first one was so good. Yeah. Great showing. I got nothing for mm -hmm. you, bud. But. Great showing. Thanks for coming by, everybody. Please go follow Wake. All right, yeah. guys. Impossible decision. Three really good songs. If you had to eliminate one more artist. Oh, no. This is so hard. This one's pretty easy for me. Okay. who? Go ahead. 
Uh, I think Cutie Ghost. Oh, yo, man, I was gonna say Hassan. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because I think Cutie used the lyrics and the meaning of the song, and that's bonus points to me. Because Hassan, I'm pretty sure didn't even read the story. I, okay. I did. I did. Okay, I think Cutie used the lyrics of the song, uh, uh, the story, whatever, very well. Mm. I think it's, uh, we need a tiebreaker. I, I think you just like Midwest Nemo. It's got to be Will. I also do enjoy Midwest Nemo, okay? I'm guilty. Yeah, you were pulling out references <laughs> okay? like Anthony Fantano I, well, I, over I here. I do enjoy a little bit of Midwest Nemo, okay? Listen, listen I think both songs are fantastic. I never want to be put in this position, but something about him representing his nation again in the second round really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put Hassan through to the final. Respectable. Uh oh, here comes Cutie. Cutie, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I won't. Oh. Um, I won't uh, try again, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, it's fine. I, I was, um, I just won't. I just, you know, I, I consider myself a great story songwriter like um, our president, Taylor Swift. However, um, it seems like you can get by on nepotism uh, and Hassan's proof of that. So, wow. so it's fine. I'm Listen, so sorry. you almost cleared it because Carter is very clearly a sucker for Midwest and emo and doesn't appreciate black metal. No, no, no. Good luck. I can't wait to hear your third song about Turkey, Hassan. I can't wait. <laughs> it's, a, it's a power ballad. It's, it's going to be a three-parter potentially. Why, spoiler alert. Okay. Could someone Thank teach you, Hassan how to combine Goodbye. the songs? Everybody, please follow <laughs> Kitty Cinderella if you don't already. I'm sure you do. She's an incredible creator and she was amazing today. All right, gentlemen. Good job, Kitty. You've made it through to our final round. You will have 15 minutes for our hardest round yet. This is a diss track. You will both make a song about the other competitor where you get as raunchy and as vile as you'd like in any genre. Uh, to diss the other creator as thoroughly as possible. Easy. Wait, we have one rule. You can't do a genre you've done. How about that? Um, yes, I like that. Easy. New genres for both. Okay. Got Disc, it. Diss tracks. May the best person win. Remember, whoever wins gets to pick any of the songs to create a day. One of them by anybody. And Carter uh, and TJ are going to work together to make a version of that song, bring it to reality, make it work, see it fully realized. And then we're going to send that off to a vinyl pressing company. And we're actually going to press vinyls of this thing, which is <laughs> I've, as I found out enormously expensive, yeah. <laughs> you have to make a certain amount. I know. So I think a lot of lucky members of the chat are probably going to get a copy of <laughs> Yugoslavia forever. <laughs> um, so, 15 minutes on the clock. Any questions before we begin? From either competitor? Not really. Sierra, are um, you ready? What nation was Sierra again? Sierra was already. All right. Already the Gentlemen, bonus points if you roast their nation. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, what, is, what was Sierra's nation? We don't, we don't need an international <laughs> conflict. No, no. please. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the final round, 15 minutes on the clock. Good luck to both of you. And begin. Oh, right. A boy adopted in Ohio gets kicked out of the state of Ohio because the socialist caliphate Because the socialist sultan marries his mother and exiles him. I can do drill potentially, hold on. But I like Midwestern emo because I know Carter loves Midwestern emo, let's see. In Ohio, where I was born and raised, I had a loving family and a happy place. But then one day things took a turn. The Sultan came and my world began to burn. 
He married my mother, a love unforeseen, but his jealousy grew because of because became obscene. He saw me as a threat, a rival to his rule, so he exiled me, said I was a fool. Fly away on the Ohio skies, leave behind the life I once knew. Okay, let's 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 let this cook. I'll do drill potentially. Version three, alpha. How is this a diss? It's it's like it's a diss track, but he's singing it. Chat, do you not understand? Like I'm dissing him. Crying, not getting the diss. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's do this again. Let's do this again. Fuck it. We're gonna re-roll. We're gonna re-roll. This track about a boy named Vincent who no one loved. He was adopted, then cast aside and banished from the state of Ohio. I think like, I think it's not that like emo, it's not, it's not doing a good job with emo. UK drill is what I'm going to try. This track about a boy named Vincent who no one loved. He was adopted and cast aside and banished from the state of Ohio. Okay. State of Ohio after the socialist sultan came and married his mom. Quirky. UK drill, deep bass, beat switch, 90 BPM. Okay, fuck it. I'm listening to your selections here. Title is Ohio Drop the Sultan, please. After the Socialist Turk. One hundred and forty BPM ninety is too slow. Okay, one hundred and forty BPM. Ohio is for losers. I like that. Let's just generate one. Oh shit. I didn't even generate lyrics. Fuck. See, I'm fucking going crazy. Yo, listen up. Got a story to tell about a boy named Vincent, man. His life was hell. He was quirky and different. No one understood, but he had a heart of gold like no one else could. What? Fuck? That's nice. He was adopted, man. They took him in. But little did he know, 
it was just a sin. A cast aside like he didn't belong. Banished from Ohio is so wrong. Then the Turk came along, swooped up his mom, left poor Vincent with nothing but a broken bond. But you know what, Vincent? Let the haters hate because you're going to rise up, be great. One day they underrate this track in the style of music, but it doesn't change the lyrics, though. This is not a diss, man. These are nice things. How do I make him write disses? Reroll the prompt. Fuck. Gunshots. Style of music doesn't change the fucking lyrics, chat. You're wrong about this. Hold on. Boy named Vincent. Should I just ask chat GPT? Be mean about a quirked, a quirky boy named Vincent who was adopted only to be banished from Ohio by his mom after she got this track. Be mean about a corgi boy named Vincent. UK slang. All right, you know what? I'm going to put insult. Let's see. Be mean about a quirky boy named Vincent who was adopted, only be banished from Ohio by his mom after she got. Vulgar. impregnated hold on let's see we're just still trying to do the fucking lyrics okay it's not letting me lyric I don't think it's I think you're cool, but you're really just a small, quirky boy with a weird sense of humor. But let me just tell you something. You're just a rumor. You were adopted. Thought you found your place, but your mom didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She got with a son, left you all alone. Now you're banished from Ohio. No place to call home. Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight. You got, you ain't got no game. You just lost the fight. Vincent, Vincent, you're nothing but a joke. Now it's time to face reality and go up and smoke. I mean, that's kind of ass, but let's see. Ohio wept. They're not going to know what it is, but. Let's see. Oh, okay. Tacoma Web, thank you for the five gifted subs, yeah. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute outbreak. Yo, listen, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but really you're just small. A quirky boy with a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something, you're just a rumor. You were adopted, thought you found your place. But your mom didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She got with Hassan, left you all alone. Now you're banished from Ohio, no place to call home. 
Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight. You ain't got no game. You're just a lost fight. Vincent, Vincent, you're nothing but a joke. Now it's time to face reality and go up in smoke. Two hundred BPM, maybe. Yo, listen, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but really you're just more. A quirky boy, a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something. You're just a rumor. You were adopted to fill you found your place. But your mom didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She got with her son, left you all alone. Now you're banished from Ohio, no place to call home. Vincent Vincent, what a sorry sight You ain't got no game, you're just a lost fight Vincent Vincent, you're nothing but a joke Now it's time to face reality and go up in smoke Put grime instead of UK Grime UK drill, deep bass, B switch, diss track, gunshots Pop smoke. I'm going to say. Different genre, please. My kid's college phone is online. The lyrics are bad. I know it's hard to do a diss track with the fucking lyrics. Shut the fuck up. Yo, listen, this is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but you're really just small. You're a quirky boy with a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something. You're just a tumor. Gunshots. You were adopted. That part is insane. That bass drop on adopted is insane. I'm going to do wolf actually instead of gunshots. You were adopted. And then woof. Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight. Wait, let's just, let's do it again. Let's try it again. Beat is nice. Play around with it. I, the first beat was good, but. Talk about his content. He ain't going to be easy on you. I mean, I don't give a shit. Let's see. Fuck the BPM. Let's see what it does for me. Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but really you're just small. A quirky lad with a weird sense of humor. You adopted for you found your place. But your mom didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She got with her son, left you all. No, this is terrible. Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your week. Dude, it's got to be like 200 BPM, right? Remove grime. And then put the BPM up. On God, not 200 BPM. It was better. Oh, fuck. It's the Pop Smoke singing, maybe? Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but really you're just small. A quirky lad with the. Yeah, what the fuck? This sucks. Remove pop smoke and UK drill. No, dude, shut up. 140 BPM was good. Is that what I did? Before? Heavy bass. Triplet verse. What does that mean?
One minute left. Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're Congress, but you're really just small. A quirky lad with a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something. You're just a tumor. Woof. You were adopted. Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight. You ain't got no game. Just a lost fight. Vincent, Vincent, you're nothing but joke. Now it's time to face reality and go up and smoke. All right. I'm just hitting create. I don't even know what it is. Out of time. Generate now. All right. We're gonna we're gonna pick we're gonna pick one of the two. If not, we're gonna go with the first one with it. Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your wake up. Cool. You think you're Congress, but really you're just small. A quirky lad with a weird sense of humor. The fuck? Let me tell you something. You were adopted for you found your place, but your mom didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She go with hot sun, left you all alone. Now you're banished from Ohio, no place to go. Damn, these are so bad. Come on, fix me, save me. The original number two is the one that you're adopted Yo, one, right? Yo, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're Congress, but really you're just small. A quirky lad with a weird sense of humor But let me tell you something, you're just a tumor You were adopted, thought you found your place But your mom okay. didn't want you, so she abandoned your case She got with Hassan, left you all alone Now you're banished from Ohio, no place to call home Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight You ain't got no game, you're just a lost fight Vincent, Vincent, you're nothing but a joke Now it's time to face reality and go up in smoke No, the original number two was the best one, I think. This one. Yo, listen, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're cool, but really you're just more. A quirky boy, a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something, you're just a rumor. You were adopted to fill you found your place. No, this was the you were adopted. This was the you were adopted one, right? Last one is better, you think? Or this one? Chad's still giving me fucking prompts. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is very, this was tough. Uh, and I, I don't <laughs> think it's good. I, I, I will admit. Yeah. I admit yeah, as I, well. It, this was a tough, this was a tough one. Okay. Oh. Uh, Let's hear these songs. Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Cutie Cinderella's diss track of me was very powerful. Okay, well, no. Cutie Cinderella probably had better prompts and more time, okay? Bitch, I wrote mine in three minutes, you dumb cunt. Oh, oh my Jesus. God. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord was, mercy. Yeah, I gave him the last one. I gave him the last one. In the last round, I'm going to allow Cutie Cinderella to participate in this round. That's crazy. <laughs> That's I, I lost. I already ball. lost. Curve I already ball. lost. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm fine with that. that. I'm fine with that. Getting Hasanabi. this fucking, getting this fucking dumbass AI to like actually say mean things is the hardest thing on the planet. I know, I yourself. know, because it's like it's like I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Yeah, but you can, you guys can write your own lyrics. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, In yeah. I did. Fifteen minutes. Yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Ohio wept. <laughs> Very good name for this song. I will admit, Ohio wept. First song, uh, Hassan. Any descriptors about this one? Yeah, I. I couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do, and I got very mm -hmm. upset. Yeah. Uh, this is like the last iteration. First, I went in with like a very different genre. I went in with emo because I yeah. wanted to win favors with Carter, who very mm -hmm. clearly is biased. That's true. And I wanted yeah. to lean into his bias. And I still think that emo song might have actually been a banger. And mm -hmm. But Chat was like, no, you got to do rap. You got to do rap. And it fucked me up. And I, I switched halfway. No, no. I messed up. This is a song about a boy who was adopted. Oh, uh, who, who... A tableist, actually. <laughs> Left-handed, yeah. too. Jesus. Huh? Yeah, no. No, I actually didn't even bring that part because, unfortunately, the prompt was cooked already. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be a boy who was adopted who the sultan, uh, the, the sultan of Istanbul came and, and swept his mother away 
and then okay. you know basically banished him from the state of Ohio. So he's like too lame for even the state of Ohio, which is already very lame. So anyway, this is the song Ohio Wept. This is the drill Thank version you. of it. Thank you. All right, here it is, Ohio Wept. Yeah. Yo, Vincent, listen up. This is your wake up call. You think you're Congress, but really you're just small. A quirky lad with a weird sense of humor. But let me tell you something, you're just a tumor. You were adopted, thought you found your place. But your mum didn't want you, so she abandoned your case. She got with Hassan, left you all alone. Now you're banished from Ohio, no place to call home. Vincent, Vincent, what a sorry sight. You ain't got no game, you're just a lost fight Vincent, Vincent, you're nothing but a joke Now it's time to face reality and go up in smoke oh. Do I get bonus <laughs> points for Wolf? sounds so weak The Wolf <laughs> sounds so weak, I don't know why Like, I couldn't get it to do anything I think putting He's all his signature up. Wolf Yeah, all right, I wanted um, to use that against him Seer, uh, do you want to tell us about your song? Mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So my attack on uh, my attack on uh, Hassan here is uh, is from a generic perspective, which I think most people can relate to. When you think of Hassan, you're like uh, the irony of a socialist, communist, whatever, blah blah blah, wealth, this and that. I didn't want to dig too specific. I wanted it to be nice surface where everybody who who listened to it could enjoy it and understand it. And I feel like I accomplished that. And I went with a new metal approach, which I feel has a lot of hatred. Okay. okay. All right. Let's let's listen. Oh to it. no! This is my house. Communist vibe, but capitalist dreams he can't hide. Ten mill house, Porsches in the oh, drive. Damn, Living large, so he's the one to thrive. Living large in the sea, cabinet swag, capitalist. I should have gone with new metal. That's so Porsche's smart. Street, for the masses, like tonight. From the gulag to the mansion, it's his ride with hustle and grip, flying like swift. Fake news dropping while sipping soy tea. Yeah, I'll go with all. That. Judy, are you still here? So, so I didn't know how to continue it, but here, here's oh, my argument. Here's my Go explanation. Ahead. Okay. It could come across as a compliment, but it's not supposed to be a compliment. Okay. Coming from the context of him being who he is. Okay. It felt it felt dissy to me. Yeah. It felt okay. dissy, okay. but I get how it could be a compliment. No, so he's yeah, just he's basically there. just complimenting yeah. me. I went on technicality. Got it. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Cutie, can you please put your song in chat? I'd like to listen to it again. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to be a bit of a, a an honorary victor here since I did get eliminated. Yeah. Um your however, diss track was about me, actually. Yeah, because I'm pissed at you okay. for eliminating me. And I did write all my own lyrics, and it is not redundant, and there is oh, uh, lots song. of direct disses to it. I did not use AI to write my lyrics, I wrote them all myself. <clears throat> Okay, well, you, you could have helped me win this. Okay, that's what you could have done. I didn't cause... want to. Okay, here here is the diss track uh, aimed at Will Neff again. Check it out. Here we go. Time to spit fire. Let the truth flow. Got a mid white man acting all tough, but when it comes to the game, he ain't got enough. He he. He sells hot sauce, please got no flavor Only got a girl, cause she's locked up Someone please save her They call it Stockholm, and I'm like, oh my gosh He signed with OTK, aka a sign that he's won so A nice film festival, you learn from the best Got me off one more time, I've never been pressed You say you're so shocked that it never bothered me I forgot to tell you I fucked your dad I'm your new mommy, them boys we them boys, 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 we them boys,
Will, are you right. still there? Are you alive after that? Do we need a 5150? What's going on? I got absolutely fucking throttled in that track. <laughs> um, thank you, Cutie Cinderella. One more honorable mention. Um, Wake slid a track. I am it. still here. My headset died. I can just see um I can just see what you guys are saying via my uh text okay. to speech. We them boys. Surely I know what we them boys. Nice things, dude, I dude, will, we need a I'll wellness check on Will. This is yes, this at the is... end of the day. Please remember we them boys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quickly, this is Wake's song about Hasanabi for some reason. Wait, what? <laughs> Yo, no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yo, Hasan Peaker, you think you're a fire spitter, but all I see is a wannabe twitter critter. Talking smack on the airwaves, but you can't stand. I'm about to drop back snap. Jokes are still in your rhymes and weak I'm about to expose the truth that you see My job, watch you fall to the ground Ooh, yeah, be curious So it's time to turn big But they can't back it up My, I drop, I'll leave them in the dust I drop, I'll leave them in the dust, yeah. Vincent, sir, you know better just a puppet on the screen Trying to be edgy but you're just a meme Your jokes are stale, only run too weak I'm about to expose the truth that no. you seek My drop, watch your fall I'm getting fucking skanked on Ooh yeah Did I just get skanked on? What's happening? <laughs> like that, yeah. that came fucking out of no. I don't think in my entire life I've ever. They, they're skanking on us. What are you thinking, Carter? Yeah, man, it's it hard. You got, you got Scott on. You really. I, you got Scott. You got Scott <laughs> beefed, dude. You got taken to the beach, bro. Yeah, dude, they're dude, telling me to fucking, they're thing. telling me to give my wallet chain up at the door, like no more checkered <laughs> shirts. Take your zoot suit off, bitch. <laughs> okay, all wait, right. Let me one sec. I'm I'm listening to communist fake Hassan real quick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the fuck? What? Why again? Because the lyrics are really good in this. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it! Oh, the rude, lyrics rude. are really good in this one. I gotta be honest. Ohio wept when they heard that song because <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you put triplet verse, it just fucked everything up. The oh, timing is whack. Like Ohio, it just shot you in the foot. Ohio wept. Best title of the evening. Yeah, that's I the will best title. That. Definitely. Unreal. <laughs> oh, I tried. Okay, TJ, what are you thinking? The Sultan was so good. This yeah, is the like... first song you made is the best song. <laughs> you guys remember the no, song? yeah, I, I feel like Hassan's streak, hot streak, kind of ended on this round. Yep, it was so bad. He was on a hot streak for me. Um, I think each of his songs in the previous round might have. Well, I think Wake was my favorite in the first round, but Hassan mm -hmm. was second. And then last round, I think Hassan's. Oh, well, Hassan's and Syria were really close for me. Um. But yeah, I think this one, Hassan uh, fell off. Ooh, and, L and, uh, so to me, it's in between QT and <laughs> Steer. 
Yeah, that's true. I think Cutie, Cutie wasn't even made, in the running. What the fuck? I think Cutie <laughs> made what Hassan wanted to. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think because Cutie te technically, you know, wasn't in the running, even though, like, the songs are very close. Like, if she was, heads, like, way ahead, I would give it to her. But since, like, they're close, I think I'll give it to her. Yeah. 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 Here's, I'm scared, here's, scared here's the yeah. album art from us. <laughs> Wait, who made this? this? Cycle of Man. Oh, who made what? this? Uh, it, it's, this is the actual album. album. These these songs literally aren't even AI generated. I made these actually. So is it decided the overall winner <laughs> it's is Seer? Seer, Cutie Cinderella. I gotta say, you had it was so best this track. Um, unreal. Good good showing. Thank you good. for coming back, Cutie. I think your headset's still dead. Seer, you may unmute now. You are the winner of the first Sonovision. Um, let me tell Very you good. my let me tell you why I wanted this to win. Okay. I wanted this to win because I think it's time we bring back new metal. And I think the fact that new metal is getting reproduced by incredibly talented artists is important. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's bring it back. It's 2024. It's been hey, long. Can I enough. take it away from Seer now? Am I allowed to <laughs> yeah. undo my vote? <laughs> Okay, you can't be hating on new metal, dude. It's, this is the this is the moment. He's right. Yeah. It could die. Sierra, new metal now, and butt rock are back. You have a very important decision to make. Yeah. You may choose any song that was made tonight by any artist. Oh god. And I, in my best faith, with these two gentlemen, need to use whatever budget it requires to re-record the song that you select. Okay. Well, uh, I'll clearly let your chat uh, decide that one. Uh, okay. Be because that that is what will make them happiest. Okay. And I think that's what will make it more successful. <laughs> okay, think... Haas needs to make a poll then between it's definitely a tie Yugoslavia. between Yugoslavia and City of Sultan. I'm saying and, chat. And Weed and Boys. Oh, yeah, and Weed and Boys, the last one, dis. Yeah. <laughs> Weed and Boys will not. Should we listen back to like a couple of them? Yes, yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can re-listen to. Uh, here's Lebanese Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not Lebanese <laughs> Beauty. Hey, can we listen to a different one? <laughs> <laughs> I really want Austin to sing this <laughs> in real life. It would be so good. Yeah, next it's cutie like Christmas concert. It's right, so bad. To sing this. This is the original city of Sultan. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is fire. Yep. How many people march with a fierce determination? They conquer all and achieve great nation. The most of Constantinople they came. Ready to rewrite his nervous name. so good it, it, it's oh doodle do they're listening to doodle do now Whoa, I, call it, so... I call it wolf rap <laughs> bro how do you get the wolves to be like that because i tried to wolf i tried to put wolves in my diss track so that everyone would know it's made by you like you're dissing yourself and it failed right. ladies and gentlemen it's time to wrap this up my, my wolves were baby wolves. best song poll is oh god it's going to be Yugoslavia. <laughs> Do we have to hire a sax player? Dude, it's going to cost me so much money. <laughs> Holy shit. I think I can do easily the drums and like the chords in the back, but dog. <laughs> All right. I can sing it. Okay. Yeah, we we just it. need a sax player.
I we will if you're a sax player living in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, I actually know a sax player. I'll hit him up. I do know. Okay. Someone. The winner, guys, tonight by an absolute blowout <laughs> is Yugoslavia Forever. Deserved. Whole thing. Deserved. Actually. Um, here you will receive a pressed copy, a gold pressed copy of it. And then if I have to make more. And this is we'll, Wake's song too, right? So he should yeah, get a copy as well. We will be giving away more copies to people in chat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me tonight. We were, we're going to wind this out. Thank you to my contestants. Um, we had Nandre, we had Seer, we had Wake, <laughs> we had Hassan, we had Cutie, we had Austin Show, we had Caroline Kwan, and our amazing hosts, TJ and Carter. Thank you so much for your help tonight, guys. Of course. It was an incredible, incredible, incredible time. I hope everybody had fun showing up. I hope uh, everybody had a fun time participating. Uh, it has been a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks I am going to raid Wake Wilder, who won the best track. Yep. Sear, congratulations for your amazing win. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I had a wonderful time <laughs> bringing back new metal. <laughs> and congratulations to the former great nation of <laughs> Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. The real winner tonight, everybody. <laughs> Thanks guys, for thank having you so me, much. guys. Bye. Thank you, Hassan. Thank Bye. you, Sir. Guys, there's only a few bottles of hot sauce. All right, everybody. Uh, love you all. That was an 11-hour short stream, half day. You already know what it is. You already know what's happening. Uh, I'm going to try to fucking play the full song of... City of Sultan. Let me see if I can find it. I think this is the full song. From the east, we march with a fierce determination. The conqueror and achieved great nation. To the walls of Constantinople they came. Ready to unite his cherries. Ready?